Good morning and welcome to our first stream of the Indie Arena Gamescom mix-up that will happen completely digitally this time. So you will see a lot of us streaming today and tomorrow. So welcome. Today we will have an exclusive look at El Ijo, a Wild West Tale. Um, joining us today will be our developers, which we will introduce well, pretty much, I would say, right now. Right now. So let's switch over to our Discord. One moment. Hello, guys. Can Hello. you hear us? Hey. I'm from Berlin. Ah, okay. So it is working. You should see those lovely people from Berlin. Yeah, so. Introduce yourselves, maybe. Let's start. Let's start simple. Ladies first. Hi. <laughs> 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 hey, come on. Um, so, uh, good morning. Um, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we, before introducing, we say thank you for Handy Game or two Handy Games to do this with us. And also, no thank problem. you very much for the collaboration. Uh, it has been a wild ride, <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's all coming together and we're really happy. Um, yeah, my name is Maria Grau-Stenzel. I'm part of the Honey team. I'm uh, dealing with the team. I'm the creative producer and we, yeah, uh, yeah, now you go ahead. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was a good start so yeah. far. Hello, yeah, uh, I'm Stefan. I'm the lead programmer on the game. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I, I deal with all the technical questions issues, ideas, and all the uh, creative input into a computer. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, definitely. Good morning also from my side, I'm Yanis. I'm, uh, I started Honey Studios together with Fede a few years ago. And uh, I work also obviously on a depot, being like the technical producer, like the connection between Stefan and the team and the technical side of stuff. Nice. So we got that ahead, but you know what we forgot? We forgot to introduce ourselves. To introduce ourselves. <laughs> so quick answer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jan. This is Felix. And yeah, we are the hosts, obviously, for this stream. Yep. Cool. Off to a great start. Nice. Okay, so Honig Studios. You're located in Berlin. How big is the studio in total? How many guys are you over there? Uh, we are uh, 12 people. All. Uh on the LIFO uh, the last three, four years, I would say. Um, yeah, so we're all based here. Um, actually, one is in London. Ali is in London. One is in London. The rest of us are all here um, uh, in Berlin. I didn't even know that. That's interesting insight. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> well, the, we could also learn something from yeah, this. I, I guess, it's yeah. okay. Cool. But uh, this is we have been all in different places within Berlin, so it doesn't really matter if you're in London or if you're in Neukölln in Karlshorst, it, it doesn't well, matter. Well, last month, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, sure, speaking about the last months, um, you were also definitely impacted by that, I would say. So um, you guys are probably also working from home, most of them, or have been working from home. I mean, right now we are kind of sliding into a back to normal kind of approach. But um, I guess it was also difficult for you, right? Yes. Yeah, it, I think it was a new way of um, uh, dealing with each other, with the project, how to communicate it was a special new thing for, I don't know, it sounds really bad. We never communicate, but now we did. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a big thing to uh, talk to someone in person and explain the things then over the phone, over emails, and it sometimes can come to misunderstandings. And it is really good if you're there and you are talk in person, in flesh. Yes. And uh, I think that was the, or is the nicest thing now to come back to the office and see each other and uh, yeah, working together again. Yes, 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 definitely. This is also something that we can uh, definitely agree on. I yep. mean, um, of course, we also um, needed, had to, you know, restructure everything pretty quickly. But um, in the end, I must say, it's, it's easier to just stand together behind one screen and talk about stuff than, you know, everyone is sitting on their screen and you're doing some screen sharing or whatever. And we have some 
fans from uh, Brazil. No, speak English. Oh, well. <laughs> Good morning, John Mello. There will be some videos and pictures of, of Honix development process of the game soon. So, oh, you know what? We could also, since we were talking about the team, we can. So these are the twelve people you talked about, probably in your in your um, studio in Berlin, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much the same background that we see uh, right now. So we uh, definitely can say where it's located. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so a question that comes to mind for me is, are you actually using, it looks like a chalkboard there. Are you using it for like game development, like discussing design ideas and approaches? Totally. Uh, the, we had the idea that at the end of a process or a workshop, it will look beautiful with wonderful concept art and art and we take pictures. But at the end of the day, it always looks ugly. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, this is actually, yeah, uh, discussing uh, deeper stuff, but no one can understand it about us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the quick, no, scr it's it's quick scratches. It's, like it's an entire wall and we have another wall as well. So it is really good to quickly come together and maybe have a little drawing and you would say, hey, this was the idea, the setup yeah. and so forth. It's also something that's good to come back to from, from the home office time, right? So you can just gather yeah. some people and stand to the wall, draw some things, explore, explore some ideas. It's actually a pretty fun concept, I think. It's pretty good to get that out there real quick, have it have it sketched, and then Definitely. put it in the game. The thing is, so funny is yep. we have all kids, uh, for most of us, uh, quite a few have kids, and then they come and use the chalk and then start <laughs> drawing within it, and then I was like, oh, what a marvelous idea! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Nice, okay, so before we had over too much into deep development and production. Maybe let's talk about the game. I think that would also be a great idea. So, what exactly is El Hijo? What is the story about the game? Okay, El Hijo <laughs> is a non-violent <laughs> <It's a non -violent laughs> stealth game. Um, it is set in the Wild West and it deals about a little boy called El Hijo that was left behind in a monastery by his mother after um, their farm got burned down by really evil bandits. They have another choice but leave him there to protect him. But as you can imagine, uh, a little boy of six, uh, that is six years old, he has no, uh, he doesn't want to stay in a, in a monastery and be ed educated. He wants to leave, he wants to get out and he wants to get back to his mother. And Elijo is um, 30 levels of gameplay. You have the first 10 levels within the monastery, then afterwards he goes through the desert because he wants to go back to his mother, and then you have another 10 levels within the villain town. Yeah. I've seen the background, background with some, some Im images from in-game already. Mm -hmm. Kids could see him sneaking through a kitchen and through a big uh, labyrinth, pretty much, where he has to find his way through, solving a few puzzles, so looking pretty good this far, I think. Yeah, um, I mean, besides puzzles, there's also um, a lot of other features, I, I would suppose, uh, for Elijo. I mean, you know, talking about as I wouldn't know the game, but of course I know the game, so, but, you know, it's just... So what other features are there besides puzzling and stealth gameplay? What is really nice, we are trying to um, make a lot of connection between uh, like the story between the gameplay and the artwork and it is like a coming of age story um, that Elijo develops. So mm -hmm. it develops the game, it develops the music, everything is connected and um, thought of that you as a player want to evolve as well as this little boy at the beginning, you're more timid, you're hiding more than later on you start to throw things, you find your slingshot and you find different toys that you can use to manipulate your opponents and sneak through the different levels. I think this is also important that you said manipulate the opponents because um, as mentioned earlier, it's a non-violent stealth game. So the emphasis is really on to, you know, get through all the levels without, you know, killing basically everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, was that something that was in your mind like from the get-go that they were like, okay, no, we want to do a non-violent game, 
screw all the killing and shooting and whatever there is already in the games or is this something that evolved? It, no, it was not. It was a clear thing that was straight from the beginning. And I think that's also one of the parts why we said it's a little boy because, um, I mean, yeah, imagine you're in a usual stealth game, you are um, an, a secret agent or you have some uh, <laughs> yes. shoot people and you um, have a knife and you um, kill people. And we have like more this innocent character that is moving around through an environment that is really hostile. And that's um, what the idea was, that Rico needs to come out, uh, develop and find ways to sneak through through the environment. I think, Yanis, you watched originally the, the movie from Jodorowsky. And that's Topo. why it's called El Hijo, because the movie of Jodorowsky is called El Topo. Uh -huh. um, and El Topo starts with the father bringing his son into a monastery and saying, you're now a grown man, goodbye. And the whole movie is about the father. Um, oh. The idea was, okay, let's tell the story of the boy. Ah, yeah. okay. That's also cool. Didn't know that. It's great. And, and I think the, the movie itself is quite violent. It's extra it's, it's violent. It's really, really... <laughs> <laughs> <Buckets of> blood. <laughs> so, so for us, it was to try to, uh, yeah, no, we don't want this. We want to focus on the stale thing sneaking around and um, yeah and I think it, it came out very well. Yeah. It's also throughout the games I think uh, you start in a monastery with the monks and later on you also get weapons and I still like the approach that you don't default to to violence or at some point you just get violent as well because for mm -hmm. me at least in every stealth game at some point I'm like why don't just shoot <laughs> this guy to get past <laughs> and here you don't have the opportunity so you really have to think about how can I get around these guys without actually harming anybody? Like, where do I need to send them to? Or how do I need to influence them or manipulate them to get past? Which is it's a very nice concept, I have to say. Absolutely. So now, when we were talking about the monastery and you know how this game got together, I think this is also maybe a good point to talk about like the development. Because we mentioned, um, did we mention, I mean, yeah, that it was uh, starting uh, as a kid's game. So you started with supplements. Is this correct? Those are like yeah. Duplo Lego type uh, bricks, basically, yeah. where you would made your very first I concept with. <laughs> Highly elaborated, like the images behind. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, we need to uh, think two things as well. Uh, it, we have a character that is a kid, but the game is um, not for small children. Eh? This mm -hmm. is something that always put together, and this is not true. Like the um, fact it is nonviolent, but you need a certain um, maturance or a certain mindset to in, in order to be able to solve the game, the, the puzzles. So I'm thinking it's, um, yeah, it's a bit, um, yeah, it's not for small children, uh, the, the game. And now that we show Duplo, eh, this is us. <laughs> well. <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to uh, um, get our mind around um, the actual gameplay. Like this was the first time we actually met in order to try to find out how could the puzzle work. This was before we actually wrote the first um, um, application to the Median board. We were, Alejo was funded by, by the Median board. And we had to give them an idea of what the gameplay is. And that's why we came together and we sat down and we, we yeah, we played with Duplo. <laughs> <laughs> and from that, it also grew a bit more serious from the Duplo because here I can see that you, you know, gave the bricks, the real life bricks, uh, some, you know, virtual value basically they said okay this little triangle thingy here will be um, Elijo with one unity meter in um, distance what does that actually mean like one unity meter yeah. <laughs> 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 let's say i'm so, so so many years now into this it's pretty hard to explain this easy <laughs> well i'm sorry <laughs> you, you have a 3d world this 3D world, you have also some kind of measurement and 
in the real world we use meters, so in Unity we have also in this 3D world meters. So we're using these meters to estimate the, the distances and yeah. I think for <laughs> us it's really important to um, that we know with this or like what you see here seems really simple, but Elijo is a certain height, then the objects need to be a certain height so that you can hide behind. The monks yes. are a certain height that they mm -hmm. can see you from certain positions or not. The line of sight that the monk is having to see needs to be blocked out by certain objects. So you are constantly, this seems really simple, but for us, um, Elijo in the production chain, 20 centimeters, like it's not a big, he was like a meter, <laughs> but then it's a but then the act we had to adjust everything by like a little bit was in, insane. Like it, it was really something really important. That's why we That's put, right. it, put yeah. it in there. And yeah, yeah no, we had the, the size of the monastery, the doors, the monk, uh, the monks wouldn't be able to go through anymore because if you could change in size, the monks had to change in size. And it was just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the proportion was an interesting thing um, when we started with where can you crouch, where are you visible, what are completely blocking, also visually from the camera perspective. So when you see mm -hmm. these isometric view that we have, what is a height that also the player from the isometric view estimates as it's high enough to, to cover. Um, and this was, yeah, especially these, these scale that you see, oh, the monks are much bigger than Elijo in the world. In this scale and the other NPCs too was oh. pretty pretty interesting to figure out, especially physically. Yeah. I think the other thing that you would never think is something uh, think 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 is um, <laughs> something uh, um, weird is shadow. Shadow is not equal shadow, and I think we can tell stories about how dark a shadow can be that you can see, how dark that you will be seen, and shadow <laughs> inside. Yeah, we we only have an hour, but otherwise we... <laughs> it's also something we can we can see later on and maybe pick up because we're gonna play a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Then then it's also something we can like show show the the viewers in in the game then where the difficulty lies that you're just talking about because um, for us it's it's easy to see what, what you're talking about, but if you haven't seen the game before, um, yeah. it's not that easy to grasp this concept. I think so. Let's pick up later in the game then we can sort of come back to this this whole height and say sizing yeah i think that's it's a very interesting uh, topic yeah definitely so we also have some different concept art um, tell us about this little scene here is this one of the earlier concepts about like one of the bandit camps i i would suppose yeah ex exactly um do you want to I should, I yeah um, the, our process was basically um, the level designers together with the artists were sitting for every level and were sketching it uh, on, on paper, like just the architecture, so that it works in terms of gameplay, of course, and it also works in terms of visual. And once this architecture was done, then the artist one um, was doing not the whole level because some levels are very vast, some are small, they're in confined mm -hmm. spaces, very fast. So this one is, is a big level actually, but he was creating snapshots of some of the moods, of the moments of that level to give the mood. Which um, would uh, look like something like this. Correct? Exactly. Exactly. So that's um, <laughs> basically the level. So yeah, this is actually from drawing to from the first layer was a sketch he did with with the level designers and then he started drawing on top of that basically so what, yeah. you, what we can see here is actually um, a few levels right so it's just a the whole context of a of a set of a few levels where you play exactly. each segment after each other so you will make your way through the cathedral or the, the church the monastery to the garden and then from there try to escape further into the vastness and the wilderness, like you said, further down. All the levels are, um, we have actually a very vast map of all the levels starting from 
your room or your start level one going down the monastery so all of them are actually connected and then the desert um, and so on i think it's one of the last images that we will see it is it, it this was our guidance from the beginning pretty much mm -hmm. that we the map, yeah. the map that we wanted to make a, a connection yeah? that it's not that you're there and suddenly you're there it sh should make okay. sense that he's the making map. His... i don't know whether sure, I have it's a map I mean, we have something for the view cones, we have the mine cone. Yeah, this was also interesting technically. Eh? How much can they actually see the monks and how much do they rotate? <laughs> yeah, that's something, yeah, you can switch back to the field of yes. view. Yeah. This. It's probably, I imagine, like for now it's, they have this, this classic side radius that they, that they see. Did you ever think about having them like reach around them like how much thought went into where can they reach you because you said about the sizing and for example do they notice if you're pressed against the wall next to them for example because that's also something that you probably have to think about because if i sneak past them on the other side of wall maybe they can't see me but they can they could like they would maybe notice so is that something that went much thought into that how you want to approach that um let, let's say um uh, we started first to make it pretty realistic, so each noise and each scatter and everything was pretty uh, harsh on the player to, 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 to be uh, that he's judged on. Um, and then we started to simplify it and using this, the basic rules. So saying, okay, we have the vision cone, it's pretty easy to, for the player to understand. So this area is a thing where the NPCs get attention and um, chasing him. And then he has a near body radius, we call it. Um, this is basically the area that you definitely get catch. So if you're too near an NPC, you definitely get caught on the puzzles. And then there's also sound, right? So monks do notice if you sprint past them, if you move objects near to them. So that's also right, something yeah. to keep in mind during the puzzles, because you can not just move objects out of the way in front of them, they will, or behind them, they will notice. They will hear that you're there and try to catch you. Yeah, and Elijo, when he runs or walks fast, he makes noise. Mm -hmm. So you also need to be really careful how you plan if you run through the level. Yeah. Cool. I mean, should we maybe fire up the game now? I mean, we could. We can still talk about the game while we're playing the game, right? No, <laughs> this is out of the question. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I need to. I need to concentrate. But you guys can. You Definitely. Can. Okay, then uh, let me this scene over here yes well i said everything else. and you can set it up oh, now you wow. can just minimize that <laughs> this is the scene we just saw drawn that you know like for us it was really important as Yannis was saying to have this close connection between the artist and the gameplay because it's it's really Sometimes the functionality or the gameplay works, but it looks shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why um, it was really difficult to... One second, find. Maria, because now there is game sound over your lovely voice. We have to maybe tone down. Head into game right okay, then head over. <laughs> One second, sorry. I'm just gonna start here without the interface on top, but I have it at the top. It's done so. Well, um, can you switch down the music maybe a little bit? I need to go back there. <laughs> This probably? Yeah, I think this is okay. All right. Okay, now let's move on to the game. Um, Maria, Janis, and Stefan, you're still with us, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, 
Well, maybe one second. Maybe we uh, we also start. Um, yeah, we switch back. Sorry. <laughs> um, screen share not working. Screen share? Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Now we are back, so you should hear some lovely music in the background right now and we will have a look at the game now. So, um, first things first, what you're going to see here is still very, very and highly work in progress. So you will see bugs, this is, you know, this is gonna happen. You will also see maybe graphics or animations that are not final yet. Um, so just a quick heads up, nevertheless, um, we are very happy that we can show you, well, the recent build and yeah, we will start pretty simple um, with level 1 actually, although yep. there is a level 0, we will skip that and use level 1, right? Yes, I would say so. Level 0 is like a little prologue and something, but something you can explore yourselves then this is out. Exactly. Do you want to watch the intro? We could watch the intro. Yeah, let's watch the intro, come on. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful cutscene. Also something that we didn't talk about yet, it's the 2D drawn cutscenes, which are pretty beautiful, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, very well drawn. They tell the story in a very emotional way. They do. You know, we, we are really, really happy. This was a collaboration between um, Juan and Jade and they and Yaro, and they did a really beautiful job with the animation and it really sets the mood right. It was also quite hard to, to tell the story without using any uh, dialogue. dialogue. Dialogue and voice, yeah. It's definitely an interesting thing that, you, that we are not having any uh, uh, dialogue in the game, but communicating everything of visuals and animations um, to make it accessible for everyone so that we don't have a barrier of uh, speech. We have text and localization for sure, but also for many languages. How many languages we have? Fifteen? A lot. Uh, young. <laughs> we have a lot. Yeah. I think it's right. Yeah, we have yeah. localization for, for getting it uh, available, but yeah, it was, was, was also interesting to see, uh, to get everything uh, without using uh, hardly voice overs and stuff like that. Yeah, for us it was really important, the visual aspect, and it's a visual storytelling. And of course, quite often um, people say, but how can you make sure that everyone knows what is going on? And um, yes, it, it is possible. I think you don't need to get everything. Maybe if you play it a second time, you will find smaller details or different things like <laughs> in any game. Go and explore and you find out. And I think the key element that the boy wants to get out, he wants to find his mother, is really um, the, the basic thing you need to know and everything else is building up, making it more rich for you. It makes it more beautiful the more you um, stay in the level and explore. Yeah, yeah that's true and it's, it's really good that it's so accessible. So we, yeah, we don't have to do a lot of translations and on the other hand we basically are doing that but for a lot of languages then, so we can make this game accessible to pretty much everyone, this is great. Now, let's talk about light and shadow. This is because I think this is something that we can show now pretty well. <laughs> yep. So you can see the, 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 just to show you what we see here is um, the view cones that we talked about, the vision radius, and here you can see very well um, how you should use the shadows to hide from the monks. Yeah, initially the idea was to have um, dark shadows everywhere that you can hide in, but then we uh, we are in the desert. You can't have <laughs> shadows that, are that dark outside, and we tried it. Huh? We had it um, set up, oh, let's see how dark can we do the shadow outside. But to have a dark shadow like this is, was impossible, and that's why we then said, okay, when you're outside, it's rather more where you hide, but... Um, 
but about shadows. So it it had to change. Yeah. Due so, to so there's basically two different rules yeah. inside of rooms or in the darkness when you're at light, for example. Um, you can hide in the shadows. Um, if you're outside, you're using um, obstacles to crouch uh, and to hide inside. So the two different tactics, basically. And they're mixing up in later levels. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much a difference uh, to make it possible to uh, have a stealth level in light areas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, next time, no desert. <laughs> Although we do have desert levels, right? But there's also they are done pretty nicely with a with a twist. So yep. will we reach them? Uh, not today, I think. No, we will mainly sneak through the monastery that we um, discussed, like that you could see mm -hmm. pretty much in the. In, if you can see the uh, graphic concept that we saw with the um, labyrinth in front. Ah, and okay. the, 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 That's where yeah. we're starting at the moment. The time lapse. Yeah, and okay. we're making our way down from the top of. The monastery where his little room is down towards the garden and labyrinth area and what then we would go outside what are the, the blue things what are they doing these are checkpoints at the moment like this is a checkpoint for example where if i get caught um is where i would start over again ah okay and now i need to run because i need to make it in here been practicing or dealing with the game really. a little bit. I've played this enough to know <laughs> if I can make something or not. I can make the the time. One other interesting bit uh, with the bird view is uh, that you can also get hints of objects that you can interact with. So yes. you see hide, hiding spots, crouch spots, and so on. Yeah. For example, here you can see on the on the top screen you can see another checkpoint and left to it or right in front of me, pretty much. There is the curtain, which is um, mm -hmm. has this little blue V on top of it. This indicates hiding spots or interaction spots where you can move objects or something like that, or crouch oh. to or hide. And like, there's the vast majority of stuff you can do on these, on these sites. And That's coming back, the bird view, what Stefan was mentioned, is um, like a little companion that um, Elijo was given by his mother in the level zero that we didn't play, and he <laughs> is. A help him to find his way around as Stefan was describing with um, hideouts and enemies and so forth. Yep. It's something that just that can sh the player can just, if he doesn't know what to do, you can use the bird view to get an overview of the whole level. Because as you said, later on they get pretty huge. So mm -hmm. it's um, you can get on a, on a high point and kind of use the bird view to find your way around, find checkpoints that are also a little bit of a guidance where you should head. Yeah, 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 <laughs> as, yeah. as always, if there's so a checkpoint, definitely it's helpful, probably good I would to get suppose, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this also helps to find children throughout your duration that you can talk with and inspire them to kind of follow what you do mm. and try to escape from the monastery, the monks. For example, yeah, this is our second storyline in in the game it is um, not the main key one the one to find the mother but Elijo evolves to a little hero of the ch children that are being used for work in in um, our game and um, yeah and he's inspiring them as Felix was saying to uh, hey get out don't accept what you are supposed to do uh, be your own boss and um, <laughs> I could have made it. <laughs> it's okay. Don't risk anything oh. and blame yourself. Oh, blame yourself? Make a fool out of yourself. Yeah. That's the right thing. And we have a first question out of chat. Hi, when can we see the demo? Unfortunately, we do not have a demo for El Ijo. I'm sorry. Um, we will see whether there might still come a demo or anything, but uh, for now, uh, we don't have any. Um, nevertheless, what you can still do is head over to Steam and wishlist the game. So you get the news of the game up front and the, at the very first. Be, yeah, at, yeah, and be, be the very first to get it, sorry. <laughs> also, while we're at it, you can ask questions in chat anytime now. While we're playing, the devs can answer your questions. They will also be in Discord later, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, to answer your questions. So if anything comes up, if you want to know anything, just hop over to Discord. Maybe you can, do we have the link here? Yes, we do have the link. 
ask the devs, ask while we're streaming if you have any questions, anything you want to know, anything, any insights you want to know, just fire away and we'll be happily just, answering just them. To here in level three, what you just saw was that you are now able to throw like this, you were not. So it's one of the next steps in Nelijo's um, development that at the beginning he was more sneaking and hiding inside. And now he is starting to throw. So he's actually yeah, getting more like, uh, um, yeah, he is trying out more, you know, like that you can now divert the attention of the different NPCs to uh, the, the monks, the enemies that um, yeah, you can lead them somehow, that you can pass to them. Yeah, right. use different tools to make your way through it. Manipulate, as we said before, the environment to, to find the best path to get past all of them. Indeed. Yeah, maybe we can, can have a small uh, moment in the aiming. So if sure. you're starting the aiming, that we can explain a bit the visual. Um, so you see these blue big radius, this is the impact radius of the stone. So we have different um, materials like stone, wood or whatever, sand for example. Uh, and this has different noise that it creates. So later levels, for example, sand is really taking the noise. So it's really small radius, it's really hard to distract people far away. But for example, in the first levels, the stone, you're, you're, it's, it's much easier to distract people. Um, the red circle around the... We'll come back to it. I just want to show yeah. how distracting works. <laughs> oh. Not even close. There you go. There's your red circle again. So, yeah, the, the red circles basically are the um, area where if you intersect with the noise, um, that they will hear you. Yeah. And, you can and also when you're to them in this red circle you also get caught yep you can like see yeah. you can see um, if once you you the radius intersect the noise radius and the fundament they're gonna start blinking so you will have a clear indication of that the monk is gonna hear what you're doing at the moment hmm. right Maria sorry you want to say something no I just wanted to talk a bit more about the kids that you can collect them like in every, um, starting from level two, there are some kits that you can find. And this will also unlock um, artwork in the gallery that you, um, that you yeah, can have a look at if you like. It's like a little treat for the players that are going and exploring the levels. It's not a need for the story. It's not a need to complete the game, but it um, will enrich your, your gameplay because also if you collect all the kids, you will get something different at the end, at the very end of the game. And it's like trying to, yeah, <laughs> go and explore. I have also some, something about mm -hmm. that. Um, the interesting thing is if you're freeing these kids uh, through the whole story, you're also getting small stories. So for example, this one here where, where uh, she puts potatoes in the sack and gets uh, <laughs> Uh, a bit, let's say, uh, informed by Lijo to do not the thing that she needs to do, so be more free willing, be more a kid, be more <laughs> against against the, 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 the things that the authority, she authority, yeah. Mix some stones in there. Um, yeah. So so it's it's pretty nice to, if you like. Uh, to Detail. watch these okay. detailed stories uh, and also find these kids later, like Maria said, um, and play with them again. Hmm. It also is, uh, isn't easy to get all the kids in like one playthrough, right? So especially in the later levels, um, you need to, uh, to basically know your way around the game already. So especially yeah. if you're maybe then playing for a second time, um, that might be a goal for you to achieve, to get all the kids and inspire them. Yeah, there's quite some detours you gotta take to, to free some of them, but it's pretty much Eliho's mission, kind of, like, he wants to escape, but he also wants to help others mm. do the same, so there's a few detours you need to take to free all of them, but it's pretty much worth it because you get stuff. We don't call end. it detour, we call it that you <laughs> explore. Exploration. More exploration. <laughs> Yeah, there's different paths to pretty much most of the levels that you can take. <laughs> like, there's no 
We need to go that way. Oh. No. I kind of want to go around. Felix, what's happening? Are you getting too confident? Huh? I <laughs> <laughs> nah. I just wanted to take <laughs> two different routes. Then. I'm sure you can play it already with your eyes closed. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's what that was what you talked about. I made it into too much noise while running past that guy. And he noticed. <laughs> and it was pretty close that he almost caught me. <laughs> I saw it, yes. This is a light, nice little detail with the chili, putting chili into the soup to make it too Extra hot. hot. <laughs> yep. There's a few a few quite fun stories right in there, I think. Little little interchanges between Elijo and the kids. There's a few fun things in there. So Elijo is also a little rascal, kind of. Yes. <laughs> Not only escaping, he's making the life harder. Ooh, we made it, and I also like it how like all the different gameplay elements get introduced level by level. So we know, so you were casually just hiding in the vase before. Now you can push some boxes, and all the different elements are coming together level by level. So I, it's uh, it's really good. I think there's a question. There is a question. Will there be an episode where you need to move through the shadows of moving people, not just through the shadows of standing objects? We, yeah, we, we have the bisons. Y yes, yeah. spoiler alert. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Not, not necessarily <laughs> people. <laughs> people oh, might be there. Right. Right. All good, all good. Yeah, not necessarily okay. people that you might be trailing or hide behind their shadows, but uh, there are a lot of different elements in the game besides like static shadows coming or getting created by the sun. So, yeah, definitely. The, and the, but the bison is uh, definitely one of that. We will not see that, but we saw, if I'm not mistaken, Maria, we saw the bison at Gamescom. Um, in sure. the, yeah, last yeah. year, right? I think I think I played through that level with you together, sitting on the couch in a live stream. <laughs> no, we were talking about it because it's um, like somehow related to I don't know. For me, it's like Ulysses, you know, the mm -hmm. guy that is in the, in the cave with the um, cyclops um, that he blinds, yeah, and then he's checking the tops of the sheep when Ulysses tries to get out of the cave, and yeah. so the idea was that um, Elijo is hiding inside the bison or behind it so you can actually below uh, below the bison you hang underneath the bison and the bison <laughs> from a yeah put, put the hideout in technical <laughs> field <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was pretty nice to to make but yeah so, so, so for, for every viewer that is like to see that uh, i would say watch the video from the games from last year huh mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we will also maybe show the the new bicep maybe maybe later that year definitely. Yeah. Hopefully. So there will be a lot more Alicia coming up, guys. So don't worry. <laughs> we will keep you covered. This part I struggle with always. There's there's still a part in the game that you struggle with. Yes. Oh, mm. I think I I'm disappointed. Yes. How so many hours? <laughs> Three hundred. Seems about right. Oh, I made it. Oh. Nice. <laughs> smooth. Uh, that's <laughs> very smooth. Cool. I lost Sorry. track. In which level are we now? Um, this should be. Six, level six, the library. Yeah, the library. Level six. six. One of the uh, six. most interesting concepts uh, that were made and it's, it's really interesting how all the ways that you can go through this level are ending up. So it's, there's not only one way to, to, to solve this level, there's uh, multiple ways. Yeah, to go there's a lot of freedom to it, right? So you can kind of choose your path and yeah, make your life easy or maybe take a harder route. But in any case, um, you can find your own ways through the game. Yeah, this level especially is like, there's a lot of ways through this level. Any any speedrun strats already that you guys worked out? Mm, 
so not the perfect really path. <laughs> I mean, I could try to take the perfect path through this level, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> okay, so then don't. <laughs> not, the, not the fastest thing to speak on. Okay. Especially for level six, it's pretty interesting. We, we thought about uh, a few achievements for the game, and mm -hmm. um, we, we, we thought about the puzzles and how how it could be interesting to add an, another challenge for players uh, with these achievements to play the game. So watch out for that. It's pretty pretty interesting. Um, let's say yeah, challenges to to play the game to achieve um, the achievements. What would be one? <laughs> uh, what would be one uh, achievement? Maybe you you can spoil that. We allowed. For example, can we spoil? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, for example, don't use stones in a specific level. Oh, okay. No, yeah, that's yeah, definitely or... challenging then, because the the stones are your main way of you know trying to um, distract the monks, right? Yeah. Or, or shoot out all lights or oh, something in one yeah. level. Lights, you know. It's... Oh, that was a little. Can you can you go back maybe? This oh, looks so great. Just. Sometimes we just have to stand there and enjoy the scenery. I mean, it's, so, it's so cool having this little... What's how would you call it? The solar oh, the, diorama the solar thingy? Solar system. solar system going around. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah, it's good. Cool. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's basically the, the, the fun fact is that the, all the rotations are based on the real thing. So it's, it's definitely fast and up, but the, the relation between the planet and the movement is on the... On the ah, the, okay, so the real thing, yeah. basically. But, but if we would use real time, it would be so boring, but... <laughs> it <was easy> enough, <laughs> but this was a detail, that we put it in, that, that we all have, have the same, or the right uh, oh. rotation. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the game is full of all those little details. details. Yeah. Um, I, played a, I played a lot and I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we <You> need <laughs> always more stuff for you to discover. Oh, oh. No, but I think that is one of the things that keeps us still going. You know, like uh, if you work with something like this for four years, it's like uh, sometimes you think, oh, this is you had enough. Huh? But here is so much variety, so much uh, love is well put in that. Hey, the music. Um, the character is reflected in the music, you hear the monks, you can see now, this was Stefan was saying, it is so much uh, like little detail in it that you, even now, we are still like full of passion uh, with it, mm -hmm. uh, like we have fun doing it and we feel sometimes sorry for Felix, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> love you! Oh, 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 oh. Oh. No, well, you, you, you got you got to showcase the chase somehow, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would still be able to make it. Yeah, if there was a little bit a bigger shadow in front of the base where they lost sight of me, I might have made it. But uh, not yeah. this time. Oh. Can you see me back here? No, thank God. Oh, oh ho ho! No. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but uh, don't feel sorry for Felix, though. So. It's no. his job. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fun. He can handle it. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have left? Like 10 minutes? Yeah, around 10 minutes. Any more, any more questions? So perhaps? far, there's, there's not a lot of uh, questions coming in, so I would say we can just uh, use it to uh, play. A little bit more. It's all good. Oh, it's ah. a shadow. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. With the bones. Ah, and there is now the. Oh yeah, the huge organ. And ah, the window. I like yes, that. with the colored glass. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. No. W w we can definitely see that um, there's a lot of um, artistic um, effort going into it. 
Yeah. But basically, this was one of the most complex ones to make because uh, you have this huge organ um, where the, the, the NPC is playing at the bottom, so it's now quite loud up there. And while you go down, um, the music changes and the perception of the player changes um, with the music. Mm -hmm. And there are NPCs that... We could, we could showcase that even. We could just have to tune up the volume a little bit, Felix. Yeah, but I need to... I cannot do it in game. Ah, okay. I need well, to fix the game. Then we don't do it. Maybe that's the environmental thing is also, I think, better, it's better experience when you're in the game is this way. Mm -hmm. It's because there are some NPCs that have notes above their head and they cannot hear. So this is also a part of the gameplay where okay. they want to make the, the piano at the bottom, the organ at the bottom. So you can't distract him or any other who are whistling maybe. Um, uh, you can't distract them by noise. So if you throw stones at them, they will not be distracted. Hmm. Yep, we need a different solution <laughs> for those guys. That's they will be to show you. This guy is not gonna. He doesn't care. He's playing the organ. He's going ahead in his element. He, he's in his element, definitely. But okay. there will be different tools. This is also an interesting bit that while you're evolving as a uh, in the story, as a as a lethal and also as a player itself, uh, with all the abilities, uh, you're getting new ways to distract or manipulate the people um, to solve the puzzles. So this is a pretty, pretty interesting. For example, for these uh, monks that cannot hear you, for example, uh, or other NPCs with different abilities. I think it will become clear in the next level. Once you get out, then you see the next toy you get. Oh, and yeah. This toy ah, yeah. Oh. You will be able to then distract the people that can't hear. So everyone, they are whistling, they are not paying attention. Eh? You're singing, you're not hearing. And how do you distract them? And then with the next toy, you will see how you do that. Will we make it? Yes. Okay. Of course, Felix is on fire. Maximum yeah. focus now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe a question in between. What was the hardest? What was the hardest thing to develop in the game? What was the biggest, the biggest difficulty you had? I, I think it is diff different for everyone working on the on the project. <laughs> like, for for me, it was um, quite difficult to um, find compromises, you know, between the as I said the artist, the game player, and the story, but mm -hmm. also from the individual. Like uh, imagine you your artist brings the most beautiful artwork or the most greatest music. And then you say, oh, this is fantastic, but it doesn't fit the game. <laughs> you know, that is, that is really difficult. Eh? It's really something you need to communicate a lot. And with this communication, it's really difficult um, or it's really important in our team to be flexible, to listen, because then we say, okay, why is this puzzle so fantastic, but it's looking not nice, you know, then mm -hmm. we need to discuss it. And this is really how we work, we work that we talk about the stuff and say, no, this is not good. This doesn't help us. It helps us to say it is not good because of this. And mm -hmm. then the people can fix it, you know, and it's their creative freedom to how they fix it is they are the experts. We can point out or I can point out, or Yanis points out, this is not good here. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And then the people will go back, the artists, musicians, everything to yeah, get the best result. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a uh, that's the thing, right? So especially the creative people, they they are so in their element. They're putting so much effort and so much detail onto everything. But um, sometimes you can't just use it. I mean, we also um, have that all the time, right? When you're like developing a new model and it has, uh, I don't know, hundred thousand vertices, and you're like, yeah, performance, <laughs> uh, please. And uh, then the artist has to, to rework the stuff or you have a lot of effects going on because you're, I don't know, you... Uh, oh no, Felix! Exited the wrong way. <laughs> well, 
so close, go through the maze again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you start the game, you're putting a lot of effort into effects, uh, particle effects or whatever, and at the end, when everything is coming to together, you realize, oh, wait, this, this is too much. We have particle effects everywhere. It's, everything is blinking. We, we cannot use that. So that's definitely a good point that you made. So finding a compromise in there between artistic detail or like whole passion and like real stuff that you can make. So that it, that it still runs well or um, doesn't cause any other issues. But also the level of quality, you know, like if a model is not looking good or a leaf or do you don't know how many times it was redone. He was, <laughs> I think, level one more than 50 times, you know, it was just not good enough, not good, not mm -hmm. being, we're not happy with it. And, and this is what we are really grateful then here that Honig allows us to have this freedom eh, to say, okay, we go back. And we, I think we had different um, tools we used to build the levels. I think we had up to level 15, everything built. But then we said, oh, we are not getting any further with these tools we've got. But there's a new tool that just came out. With this one, we can look into cracks in the floor. We can look into different things. And it's not killing the performance. It's actually working better. <laughs> and then they said, let's start all over again. You know, mm. and that was really... We that's that's the thing, yeah. Development Short, evolves. All right. The end, I think also, it's I, will, I want to make it to the guy on the right to showcase the how you can um, manipulate guys you can't hear with a toy. Basically. Ah, and yeah. why we're at it? Well, we, because we're talking about art. Did you actually experiment with different art styles? Like, as kind of a last question, or is it did you straight away knew you wanted to go with this art style for Elijo? And no, we knew straight away. It's actually one of the first things we did uh, was story and art. Um, uh, and then, I mean, apart from the Duplo, of course, actually that was the first thing we did. Um, but yeah, art was one of the very first things we did. Um, to just have, I mean, most of us are very visual thinkers so it uh, really helps to to know where where this is going um so yeah art didn't actually change okay um, i think the the, the top. Had a lot of challenges and that was a great thing for a programmer like uh, for me when working with people it's important to be flexible you know like not to okay this is one structure and this is how we stick um, Stefan did uh, amazing things to say, okay, um, this is how the gameplay is evolving, this is how we work, let's see how we can make this happen. Eh? And this is like something that is really important for us to see what works best for the project and not then saying, sorry, but this is not happening, no, it doesn't work like this. We say, if it's possible, we make it happen, you know, and that's really um, something that is uh, um, fantastic, I think, from the from the entire team that everyone is open to discuss and to and mm -hmm. to the And there's also one thing that I want to mention about difficulties in production. Um, from the technical side, it's definitely performance and shaders on the different platforms. So figuring <laughs> out which platform uh, has which variables, how do they interpret that and stuff like that. We, we have the, the luxury that we have a multi-platform engine, but there's mm -hmm. still adjustments that we have to do uh, specific to um, make it run as smooth and as nice as possible. Yeah, no, definitely. This is also one of the challenges. And in the background, uh, Felix and I were just quitting the game and switching up to you. Well, guys, again. Yeah, we could see how the toy soldier works. If you can direct them into a certain certain path because they want to investigate what is what's running around in front of them and that's one way to manipulate for example the guys who can't hear yeah. anything just something i wanted to show the use of a different toy and yeah. things definitely all right guys we made it that's like one hour that flew just like past us thank you for being there with us it was great talking to you and having in-depth insights about the development of El Ijo. 
a wild west tale. Um, so yeah, guys, for all the others that are still watching, you can wishlist this game right now on Steam. And you can also head over to the Indie Arena booth online and walk over through our booths and check out all the other different games that we still have in store for you. Up, up next, we will have Townsman VR. So yeah, stay tuned and um, have fun with the rest of the Steam. Uh, rest of the Steam, rest of the stream. Yeah, one uh, letter <laughs> makes a big difference. So thanks again, Janis, Stefan and Maria. So yeah, you guys will now be available in Discord and um, if there are any other questions that you have um, for the developers, head over to Discord and just, you know, shoot out your question. That's basically it. Now I will switch over here and yeah, I will say goodbye. Anything else to add? Thank you for watching. It was fun. It was also yeah. also learn stuff, so. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Hello and welcome back to our Indie Arena booth online Gamescom mix up stream. How you want to call it depends on you. Yes, um, if you haven't seen this stream before, my name is Jan and I'm now joined by Philip, who is Hello. the game designer for Townsman VR. And today we will have a simple let's play session with the most recent build of Townsman VR. So heads up first, this is still highly work in progress. So you will definitely see bugs. You will definitely see stuff that is not final yet. So please keep that in mind. Other than that, I would say enjoy. Have a look at the, at the new stuff that we did for all of you guys. And yeah, we will have a simple rundown, a simple introduction, starting with level one, explaining you the basic controls of the games, and then just going ahead, playing through some levels here and there. And yeah. As said, there is also, um, since we are using a debug development build, this is like live from development for, for you guys. There are functions and options in this build that you guys will probably never see, or hopefully you should never see. Um, so we will use some stuff that is, you know, a bit out of the ordinary. So don't be surprised if you see that. But yes, I would say, let's jump into the game, Philip. Yeah, let's go. Maybe <laughs> um. gear up first. <laughs> Let's see. Take off my glasses. Well, it works with, but it's uh, for me it's more comfortable without. So, uh, controllers. Taking the controllers. <laughs> so you can do this in a like in a full setup for VR, uh, but it's also you can do even more possible to just be yeah. One hand sitting in a chair or standing around. around. All right, so we are in game now. We uh, skip the main menu part and are in the very first level. That is the open ocean. Um, just like one quick technical question. Should we have sound already or have you disabled the voices? Um, there should be sound, I guess. One hand okay. forward and the other ah, one back turn right. around. Okay. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> this is the tutorial. So he's currently explaining, or I'm currently explaining because that's still my voice <laughs> for like uh, development. Um, I have uh, spoken all the dialogues so we can see that, but that will be of course replaced with professional voice recording soon. So the basic controls here. And the other yeah, that's already the second around. part. <laughs> 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 um, he wants uh, to show me how to rotate. I can show that first. Let's okay. look around. <laughs> Follow me. So weird hearing you double. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will deactivate that soon <laughs> because it can be a bit uh, strange when we are talking about the game and he's also talking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basic movement is I grab somewhere like here and then I pull myself towards Follow that me. point. Yeah, I'm ah, following. There you are. <laughs> There's not much to see here, it seems. Yeah. This giant wave could not be caused by a storm. 
Yeah, yeah. Follow me. <laughs> I'm following you. Like I can really crawl. This way to hit us at a bad time. We were just about to get back. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool about the controls, right? So a lot of thought was put into else. the controls. Um, for us, it was very important to not have like the classic teleportation movement that you see in a lot of um, VR games. We wanted to have something that is more natural. And with this with this crawling mechanic that you're really pulling yourself inside of the game, it, it feels very natural and it kind of tricks your brain to... Um, yeah, that, that this is all natural movement, so we don't, don't have any um, motion sickness with that. With that, and same time by accident. And yeah, Philip in, in game. Philip is also talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Can't it's control it. <laughs> so yeah, Philip, maybe tell us a little bit about the story because we are now here on the open ocean fishing um, for some logs, as it seems. Yeah, yeah. So our ship was destroyed. Uh, by giant wave, so uh, <laughs> has been some kind of earthquake or maybe some godlike. <laughs> no, um, yeah. So we have to repair the ship, and we are on like a secret mission to get back now to the king and report what we found. But yeah, that on our way back, we got stopped <laughs> here. By but I can. Storm. Yeah, I can pick up these resources and give it to the people, so they can now repair it. You take it. <laughs> Not sure. Do I need another one? I don't think so. No. Could we just uh, maybe quickly? Fixed, but we are still no quickly? Uh, maybe tap Only out. Thing we can do yep. is, um, one second. As as we'll switch first. Okay. Fixing some technical stuff because I think we just have to retap the game so it's also working for. Um, Philip then again a little bit better. So yeah, mm -hmm. live development. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then I will head back to the game. So yeah, maybe you can uh, really disable the voices. I think they are a bit, um, it's okay. a bit confusing. So oh. going to options, sound options, and yeah, let's put down the voices. I keep the subtitles. So yeah. So let, let's because there's no wind, like, like let's push, push the ship on. Oh, maybe not with people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you could also do that by, by blowing into the sail, but we have deactivated that from now, uh, for now, here, this event, uh, because I'm always already talking all the time, so I would have voice commands accidentally fire all the time. Exactly. So you really have voice recognition in the game. You can you can blow a sail. You can blow a windmill. And you can talk to your people, but um, as said, we disabled that right now because, you know, let's playing and talking with townies at the same time is a bit difficult. Okay, now. Yeah, now we are uh, yeah, <laughs> really out of luck. <laughs> uh, with all this fog going on, we just crashed into the first island. But that's great because now we can build a town on this first island because I think we didn't mention what the game is about actually. <laughs> it's not a, like about moving around, it's about building a medieval town. Exactly. So build up strategy meets god game. This is basically what Townsman is about. And he's now telling you um, how to scale. <laughs> how to scale. Yeah, because like if I'm really big I can like with two grabs of my hand I can go over the island. And if I'm really small, I can check everything in detail. Like this little mushroom, for example. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> can crawl on this destroyed tower here. Or you what can else? scale yourself to the size of a, um, yeah, to a, a giant god and have like gigantic paws, which you can then also grab and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> throw around your townie. So yeah, in towns where we are, basically everything is pretty much interactive. We really put a big emphasis on it. So like this seagull, for example, bye bye, <laughs> yeet. <laughs> <laughs> you can interact with pretty much everything. You can push around your townies. You can grab your dog on the hand. Careful there. Or the cat, kitty cat. Oh, she's even purring. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
And yeah, that's uh, very, very important for us that we have a lot of interactive elements in this game. Now, Philip, what do we have to do on this island? Yeah, so um, currently he's explaining the UI to me, so I can... Some of these objects have info boxes that I can look at. In this case, uh, here there's meat in this resource stock, and there is uh, different kinds of wood here, like already boards here, and we have some stones. And we can use those resources to build our first buildings. So yeah, also telling us to open the main menu here. Um, I think not that interesting right now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and the other thing we currently can access is uh, this overview where we see also which resources we currently have in all our resource stocks combined. And here we see the, our population, the jobs that our people currently have. So we only have two builders. But that's exactly what we want. We want to build uh, our first house, our first residence for our people so they can live somewhere. So I open the build menu and here I have different categories. They are currently locked in the tutorial. But yeah, you can go here and pick the residence. I can just grab it out of the menu and place it on the ground. So like here it's like it's blocked, but I can really freely place it if those are away, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> go away, dog. Go away, dog. So I hope that we will now start constructing the building. Yeah, because this is also another cool thing. I think I trapped this guy and that's why he's oh. not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, much better. <laughs> yeah, so no. your workers will take the resources that you harvest or select and build everything on their own. So you can just sit back and relax and watch your town grow and evolve. But you can also, you know, um, yeah, interfere there and also put the resources to the construction sites by yourself. You can help. And you can even yeah, take okay. the people <laughs> with the resources to the construction site. This is also something that works. And yeah, if you're wondering, ah, okay, so now we build the first residence and we will have more townies coming out of that. So more workers for mm -hmm. our first settlement. Oh yeah, and what we can also do is now, um, because we have only these builders, uh, we want more resources, so we um, try to get some wood. And that's easy. I just drag someone next to a tree and he becomes a woodcutter. <laughs> it takes a while. Like, I have to... Oh! <laughs> I got hit by the falling tree. <laughs> wow! Uh, that, bit... that guy was not cut out to be a woodcutter, <laughs> as it seems. So, yeah, maybe you want to be something else? No. Okay, and um, but we also see like he dropped the resource here, and that's not good. So uh, we need to store that somewhere. And to store resources, usually we have buildings. In this case, the woodcutter's cabin is also where the wood is stored. So we just place the first building here. And as I know, this building also needs wood. I can just take this resource we just found and put it in. Oh, and we have. Uh do you remember this guy working on Townsman VR called Ivan? Yeah, was. <laughs> <laughs> so he's back in the chat. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Shout Ivan. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but uh, they all do that by themselves here. Um, I don't need to help. I can help to speed things up, but it's not really required. Like, I have to work together with my small townies. They are, like, doing the small work, like, cu cutting down trees and uh, building buildings. But I can have uh, help in some small ways or even, like, give the big orders what to do, like, build something here. And it's important where I build that. Now I, I decided to uh, build this building close to the trees, so it's easier for them to work. But as that's also the storage, uh, I could also place it more like in the center of the island, like where he's right now. So it's mm -hmm. easier for the workers to get the resources and do something with it. So, yeah, or something in between. But yeah, now, 
these old buildings can also be repaired. So there's an, a broken bridge here on this island already. And now people are going there and repair it. We can start up our very first little settlement. It's so cool to just oh. hang around there. And the seagull, what is the seagull doing? I think it's just trying to land somewhere. Okay, but this is, this is not, not uh, the seagull is not just decoration. Because those <laughs> little birdies over here, um, later, if you're going for some, <laughs> for some food resources, they will steal that. They will steal your fish, they will steal your meat if they want to. And just fly away with it. So you kind of have to make sure to, to shoot them away. And yes, so this was also important for us that we do not just implement things that are interactive, but also serve a purpose. Um, of course, not everything serves a purpose. Sometimes uh, it's just for fun, like putting your cat and dog on a rock. So why not? <laughs> I mean, freedom there. So. This is also... A oh, it's a bit angry, I think. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. You can come back. So, ah, yeah. Okay. The bridge has been repaired. And now we have access to this quarry over here. So now we can get more stones for even more buildings. So, get the stone mason. And this time I could place it right in front. But I think I will need more stones for other buildings. So maybe I'll put it maybe closer here to the middle. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what exactly do we need here? Oh, okay, just three pieces of wood. So I can now speed it up. Go here. There's enough wood now already. I can just take There's it so from the storage, put it in here. And one more. And I think, Very yeah, quickly. you're already carrying something, so I put you there too. And now I've increased sped up that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more threes. Yeah. And yeah, the, as we mentioned before, we disabled um, the voiceovers right now because the voiceover, or, uh, blah, the voiceovers are just placeholders right now. We are actually right now in, um, yeah, in preparation for professional voice recordings. So, um, although we all love Philip's lovely voice, um, <laughs> It is a bit confusing because you would hear us double, so this is why we disabled it. But that character that you see flying around there is basically, first he's explaining you how the basic game is working and later on he gives you quests, he gives you missions and we have a lot more of these characters in the game that will also interact with each other, that have dialogue going on. So it is not just a sandbox experience, we have a fully fledged campaign behind, this, um, behind the game right now and I think, what, an over over 12 levels right now? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, 12 and to 14 maybe even? Oh, even 14, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, if, yeah. if you count something like the introduction that we had in the beginning, yeah. if that, you count that as a separate level. Sure, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and the so. thing is, this island right here and the other island that we will show um, is still pretty small, <laughs> so you don't have a lot of space to build stuff, but this will also change. There are a lot of different islands and they all vary in size. So don't worry, there's plenty of space for you to build your dream town and, you know, get things going and get things started. Yeah. So here he tries to tell me all the time that I should build uh, a saw. And a saw is an add-on for an existing building like this woodcutter. Like I can also have these uh, different build options here. Oh, waited too long. <laughs> I can also destroy buildings just by dropping the hammer, <laughs> but, I, but I need this uh, building. So <laughs> instead I will go to the build options and here we have this wood saw that will turn our uh, locks uh, into boards. So I just put it somewhere here or maybe even also a bit closer to the center. So do we still have someone here? Yeah, you can help work here. Sure, this, is this still needed? Four I wood. think we only need one wood in this. No, it's uh, two. And you can imagine oh. that having a build-up strategy game in VR is a challenge on its own. But doing a UI for a build-up strategy game in VR is even more difficult. 
The thing is, in VR, you want to be immersed. You want to, you know, just explore and have a feeling for the world. So this is why we chose this type of UI. Be very lighthearted and not so much in your face. So we try to convey <coughs> um, as much information that you guys need. <coughs> no, sorry. Um, to really keep track of your channel. So how many workers do you have? How much food resources and all of that. But uh, on the other hand, we also didn't want um, Thompson VR to be a game that is like a fully fledged simulation type of game where you can micromanage um, every little aspect. I mean, technically you <laughs> can micromanage you, you pretty can. much, but I think that's a, a different um, interpretation <laughs> of micromanaging. <laughs> what I think uh, maybe you were getting at is also like we have the UI there to show you all the information, but you can also see it directly in VR. Like I see how many stones I have in my storage right here. I can also look at the info UI, so, so that's like double the information. Um, if I'm further away, I maybe I don't see how many stones there are, so it's mm -hmm. easier to use the UI, but it's completely possible to do most things without any UI because that um, is much more immersive in the game. Oh, that's where it's coming back. in. <laughs> Can I hit someone with the seagull? Maybe if I try it several times. Oh, oh. No, that was so close. Was very close. No. Oh, oh the poor woodcutter. No, oh, oh. I think. <laughs> oh, where's it gone? I think you broke it. Yeah, maybe I killed it somehow. <laughs> maybe it's underwater. Well, the underwater effect won't work here. Um, Exactly. It, it, it was There's the seagull underwater. It just put it underwater. <laughs> oh, Hit so yeah. hard that it went f right through the island. Exactly. So as we mentioned earlier, <coughs> this is still very work in progress. So we can do a lot of this stuff already and uh, really still break the game. So, But in the end, it is a sandbox type of game. So, you know, we can try to polish and... Uh, refine everything as good as possible, but we cannot really control what you players out there will do. So you can do pretty crazy things in the game and we are really eager to see what uh, people will come up with and what they will doing and uh, all the different screenshots. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, and now he's uh, telling me that I don't uh, I just create the construction site here, but I don't have anyone to really work on that. So I have to change the job of someone so you now you're a worker again and that's also like uh, very easy to do that you could also have a ui menu for okay assign a job to there or there but just dragging someone onto uh, a workplace uh, makes that so much easier indeed it does maybe i also should have a bit more workers so maybe i should build another um, residence so. there's talking more playing huh yeah yeah I'm just listening what you have to say, it's so interesting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I try my very best, so if it's interesting for oh. you, then hopefully so it's interesting I for I think I have too many woodcutters right now, because I like I manually assigned someone to a tree in the beginning, then I finished this building that turned the builder automatically into a woodcutter, and then I built this building that's also shared by the same job, so uh, woodcutters can do more than just cutting down trees, they can also like saw the logs into boards. And uh, they do that automatically. But now we have too many woodcutters and not enough trees and space. <laughs> so maybe you build that. <laughs> so you can switch jobs um, completely dynamic. So you can yeah, could also switch up everyone. Look here, everything. now I have two builders and two woodcutters and no stone mason. I think I can get rid of one woodcutter more to get more stones. Mm -hmm. So let's see. <laughs> you are oh, <laughs> without any work. Hi, Nasreen. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, so this is a new woodcutter, a uh, stonecutter again. Ah, so your current objective is to... Uh, to build this building here, the Hunter's Lodge. Ah, so right. But you I can hunt the game on the, um, on the island, right? So there's yes, like yeah. deers <laughs> running around and all of this. Deer and rabbits. I'm not sure if the rabbits on this island, but I see like three deer. <laughs> and yeah, I could also like turn someone into a hunter right away. Like, hey, you're a hunter now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. That, uh, was, that was pretty quick. 
So it's not very very cool to to do that. Hey, they are okay. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't want to. No. No, no. He says no. But just just killing animals without doing anything with it uh, is not not great. So um, now we have a hunter and we have a storage. So we can have that here. And of course, we need also to cook our meat. So let's build a tavern. Let's see, maybe Oof. some space here. Ah, that's a big building. That's a big building. Oh, I could put it here, I guess. Hmm. Like some space. Let's see. <laughs> maybe I have to destroy something. You could make oh, that. there was uh, space. something here. Yeah, Did that's good. Cat. Ah, okay. So the island is getting crowded already. I think. Yeah, Settled I think it should be possible complete. to build here. Maybe there's something in the way, something invisible that we have to fix. Or I was just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, we're uh, or, uh, still fine-tuning these. So if we find a playtesting, oh, then maybe that is not plain enough, um, then mm -hmm. we can still uh, yeah, change it, terraform it a bit. Exactly. So, again, as mentioned before, not final, work in progress. So, thank you for your understanding there. Oh, my start resources um, are getting <laughs> a bit dried yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, uh -oh. I only have <laughs> one box left. With, I think there's wood in there and we have enough wood, so maybe that will not go away so soon. So, let's see. We have two hunters and maybe that's too much. Another builder. And I can help with resources so to speed up things up a bit do it oh i think i brought enough so <laughs> he noticed too and and stopped doing that oh man you interrupted his workflow his yeah, day yeah. is ruined <laughs> i think i want to show a bit more uh, different stuff so i think speeding up a bit is, is nice okay yeah. now we have uh, the first uh, cook and yeah she will take the meat here from the hunter storage and bring it to the <laughs> to the tavern. And, and she's even uh, pushing away yeah, the, hunter. the hunter. We have food, water and resources. For the near future our town can survive. But we have to get off this island eventually. Maybe we can get help if we repair this old lighthouse. Hey, maybe we should have gone with you instead <laughs> of hiring voice actors. Fun fact, <laughs> I also did some voice, uh, I wouldn't call it acting, but uh, we did some voices for the early access version. That yeah. is on Steam already, so you can check that out if you want to. Also, you can head over to Steam right now and you can wishlist the game. Look at that bird. That, oh, he's oh, already oh. circling. He's circling. He wants the to storage. get the meat. Let's see if he if he manages. Oh, he grabbed one. Bad bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, what you can see here will come as an update to the early access version um, for the full release. So, this will be. Um, uh, when we finished it, if we polished everything, we fixed exactly. all the bugs, we recorded all the voices, then we will have a full release of the game and that will be, of course, an update for the early access version. The early access version is much smaller, it only has one island, but you can also already see all these um, mechanics in action. Um, exactly. Yeah, but here you can right see, uh, see right now <laughs> that there's much more to the game. We are pretty much done with the, with the first island, right? Um, yeah, let's see. I think we should repair the lighthouse to see um, okay. if it attracts a ship. And All then right. maybe we can jump to another island um, or just play the next one. Let's see. Okay. So, how much resources do we, do we need for the lighthouse? Okay, it's one more stone and only two, two logs. That but we don't have stones anymore. That's so, I can <laughs> see that right now. So, maybe. I, we have enough wood. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Get us some stones. At least they don't steal stones. <laughs> Bye, birdie. So, 
Yeah, and the great thing also, like uh, with the early access version, like we already got a lot of feedback um, that we put in the game. Um, exactly, yeah. Yeah. And the game changed much like the plans we had for the game. We also got uh, funding from FFF Bayern. Mm -hmm. So we now have built a much bigger game than we initially um, planned. And also, um, currently we're playing on the HTC Vive, but of course the game will be available for all the other headsets like the Oculus Rift, Rift for example. So yeah. don't worry, we try to support as many headsets, headsets as possible. The Oculus headsets are currently all in use by the programmers, so I couldn't get one. <laughs> yep, and also the testing, sorry. <laughs> and the bird again wants to steal my meat. Go, Go away. No, 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 seagull. Oh. Go away. <laughs> So, I think it's almost finished, right? Let's see. Oh, and we also see the progress there. Oh, yep. nice! We did it! And there's fire in there too! There's fire. Can you climb it? <laughs> can climb. This ladder is not high enough let's, to climb let's it. Let's go for some Assassin's Creed here. <laughs> dim, 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 dim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we are in the tower. So, where's our hay sack? Or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. There's uh, nothing here. <laughs> But I think there might be a ship on oh, the horizon. Oh, we can see it yeah, on the horizon. There's a ship coming. I will take a, a bit. So let's see what else can we. Can I still? Yeah, I can. You can see the well. There's the well. Yeah. Oh, there's <laughs> so, even the bucket in there. Wow. Yeah, now he and was much easier. He just took it away from me. But oh, it's fine. I he, don't need he, water. He was, he was waiting for that. He yeah. was like, I'm so thirsty. And, and also, like, yeah, they are thirsty, they are hungry, so if I want to have a bigger population, I need to get more food. So, in the beginning I had, like, these boxes with some food left over, but if, if I wouldn't have them, they would be uh, already very hungry uh, <laughs> at the point where I built the tavern. But now I have a tavern, so, so it should be fine. Uh, there's already some grilled meat in there. Because if your townies are, uh, if, if they are hungry, they will not work. I will complain a lot and yes. like eventually they will get unconscious <laughs> from <laughs> being hungry or uh, even die. But like it, it takes a while. We have time to react. It's not that instant. So, oh, oh the, the ship, ship is, is coming. There. The ship might be still pretty loud or or did you disable that sound? Oh no, it's a, it's ah, fine. who's this guy? Hey. The merchant sitting on this ship. Hello. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. We were invading his private space there a little bit, but um, I think that's all right. Yeah, but I think we don't have a harbor here for normal mer uh, merchant ships to arrive to just do trading. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, here the, the lighthouse attracted someone. So, oh, <laughs> he's now landing. <laughs> and I think um, we can maybe still trade with him. Ah. Ahoy, I am Answick. Do you need anything? I am Sir Clunkalot. Now it's getting really weird if you are speaking <laughs> both. <laughs> Maybe I should activate my two voices again. Maybe I, I play Sir Clunkalot. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Well, but you can, you can um, they are now talking about uh, the story a little bit, so maybe you can sum it up a little bit what's happening in the dialogue between those two characters there. Yeah, so there's like uh, a bit of trouble in the kingdom. Um, the king's brother, um, I think he wants the power, so uh, he, he's gone missing and we were to find out where he went. And we did in the beginning. So now we have to bring that message back to the king and yeah, <laughs> this guy can us, uh, uh, take us on the way there, uh, but he wants something in return. So yeah, in this case I think he needs the one thing we have enough. Yeah, it's wood. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be easy. So now, now this trading was initiated automatically, but later you will, if a merchant ship arrives, you will be able to, um, like with a build menu, you can go through different options you want to trade and then drag them not somewhere on, on the ground here, but drag them on the ship and then there will be this, this pallet that tells you, hey, you, need, uh, you have to put wood here. And boards, then, yeah. 
then this, yeah, this boards, and then you get something in return. In this case, we don't get something uh, in return that's resources, but it's just like you can travel with them. So now they are already starting to bring the boards there, and to speed it up, I can help. The two boards on the pile. And this is, this is uh, as you mentioned before, it's, it's really cool that, that, that resources are not an, an abstract thing in the game. Yeah. They are like physical objects. The resources are just there. You can interact with them, you can throw them around, you can uh, even get rid of them by just throwing something into the water. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can no, just... finally I hit someone, I found that. <laughs> Getting better. <laughs> it, it never gets old. I just love the ragdoll effects. Sure, it's goofy sometimes, and sure, it, it might do weird things here and there, but it's just so much fun. So, the I think it's is four, four I'm missing. Let's see if the eye works for that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't update right now, well, but it will work. Well, Michael, you know <laughs> what to work on. <laughs> if you're watching. I hope you don't, or you do. Depends. <laughs> he's not watching because he's fixing exactly that bug. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, do we actually have enough wood? <laughs> well, Pretty you bad. very uh, confident. No, it's one missing. <laughs> that we have enough wood, and you okay, were starting okay, okay. to throw around resources. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, it's worth finishing one level incomplete because it's almost finished. Yeah. Okay. Hey. hey, we did it. Okay, everyone on board. So I can still, if I want, I can complete the level for Island successfully. I can't go to the next island now right away, but I, I'm still able to just continue playing here. Yes, yes with, if you want to. With orb, I can just uh, like touch it and it will open up here again. And yeah. Maybe let's uh, quickly switch over to the other view and then um, yeah, you can probably restart the game. So it seems a bit... Yeah, we also have like an extra camera active. Ah, so the performance okay. is half the performance we should have. It's, it's moved out a bit. So if I have rotating, uh, rotate my head a bit, Mm -hmm. uh, it smooths out that movement um, for the viewers. Because the funny thing is that um, in VR, all these small movements mm -hmm. make sure you don't get motion sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for people watching, making all my small movements um, yeah. could make them even motion sick from watching. Um, exactly. This is why so we have a smooth camera in there. But I think we probably just, just have to restart the game real quick. Maybe that, that works. Yeah, maybe. Oh, or try. Yeah, yeah. I'll try it. Go, go ahead. It's, uh, it's all good. So, life is life, guys. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm still impressed that we're even able to, you know, have live VR broadcasting. You cannot imagine how, how difficult it is to, to set everything up and get the sound right and the camera and, of course, the game running. And uh, as Philip mentioned, we also have to do some tricks because, um, yeah, when you are in VR... Um, it's all smooth, it's all nice, but um, what you see on the screen might be um, too too granular, too fine. So if you watch it uh, in a normal way um, or without a smoothed camera or a spectator camera, that was the thing yeah. you said, like the spectator camera on. Uh, oh. So uh, maybe I just jump into some action. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. Do we want to do Prison Island? Yeah, let's, um, I, I'll go there first and then you can. Okay, is it is it uh, is it working now for you? Is it is it better or basically the same? I think it's the same. I think maybe it's some other stuff running <laughs> on this PC. Okay, okay, I mean we can. But it, this island works fine. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. Just I mean we can use the time to quickly oh, yeah. see whether we can fix that for you. Um, I think it's fine. Just. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, then. Let's head over to the game. So now this is a completely different island. Um, it's also a small island in this case because that is like the combat introduction or like attacking. So in this case, I I have to save 
<laughs> the guy that was our tutorial guide. In the so beginning. Sir Clunkalot got captured. Yeah. And this is a fortress where he's held captive. And, and it is a gigantic fortress as well. And there are a lot of lot of people here guarding it. And I only have a small troop. So I could just like pick them up from, from down here and, and, and throw them into the castle. Uh, <laughs> I think they would be overwhelmed, so I have to be a bit more, yeah, strategic <laughs> about it. So maybe take them on in, in smaller uh, groups. Like I said, I could have this one. It's, like, uh, it's a crossbowman. Uh, so it is not only a build-up strategy game meets God game, but it's also a real-time strategy game, somewhat. Kind of. Because <laughs> you can use this little rally flag over there, yeah, and if I'm, the people are following it. Yeah, right? I already watched it. Uh, but if I now put it here, they will, everyone who's assigned to the flag will go there. So we will have our s first small fight here. Okay, that's that's good. Crossbow man in the back. <laughs> yeah, but they I think front. they shot our own man in the back. <laughs> like at least this one. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, we don't have any friendly fire. Okay. Oh no. Maybe not. This guy's in the front. I can still micromanage them a bit. No. Oh. Ah. Uh oh. You lost one. Uh oh. I lost oh, it's so close. a lot of them already. No. Oof. Okay. Mm. Let's see, uh, I think we, we can do better, but it should still work. Let's see, there's only one guy down there, here. Let's attack this one. <laughs> A bit of starting <laughs> help. Because <laughs> normally you can't, you can't directly interact with the... With the no, animals, like, right? that would be too easy if you're just, hey! Into the water. <laughs> exactly. No, I don't have any power over them. So for balancing reasons, uh, we changed that. Although it might uh, seem fun at first that you would just be able to throw around oh. your enemies, you know. Um, the sharpshooter here. <laughs> <laughs> Took out one. Ooh, we now oh, have we a catapult. We have the access to the catapult that was here. I'm not sure where you are going. Please stay here. Don't go fighting on your own. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, there's, we can try that catapult out with this tower here. See? I see exactly where it's supposed to shoot. And I think I have some ammunition like these stones. I can use them on the catapult. Yes. Oh, the stone that I dropped on the guy before. Let's use and that the too. funny thing is, you can use pretty much any resource as ammunition for uh, the catapult. But I'm not sure if I have any other resource here. Oh, what's down there? Is this a wolf? There's a Wolves on this island, yeah. Ooh. They're <laughs> guarding some... I don't think I can get these stones. No. Or they are, you know... No. <laughs> they're just, those are just the remains of the fallen soldiers that have been fallen prey to the wolves. But you could fight them if you wanted to, right? Yeah, I can fight them. Oh. Maybe they will come to fight me. I hope not. <laughs> Let's see. Right now Let's destroy this tower. Yes. Hey, and this is Ellie, mm -hmm. right? One of our other characters that will be introduced a little bit later in the game. Yeah. I think we have about we have six characters total, like in this this big size characters that are mm -hmm. can talk to me. And there are some resources that I can still use for the catapult. Let's see if I can. Oh, sorry. Good. That was my shoulder. <laughs> All good. I can't see you. So <laughs> sorry. Let's see if I can hit this. Oh no. I, ah. I saw it the moment I <laughs> put it down. Let's, let's try another one. Get more logs. Uh-oh. That should be... It. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> okay. He's already, he's already dead. So the, the catapult is quite powerful. And I have also have to be sure I don't accidentally hit my own people. So that's why yes, I'm so trying now to... Yeah, You have friendly <laughs> fire for the catapult, but there's no friendly fire for your archers, for example. So... If your troops on the front lines get some arrows uh, in their backs, that's no problem. But a catapult hitting you into the face, that's a different story. Oh, I think I have to make oh, sure the catapult is safe. Because they will destroy the catapult, right? Yeah. yeah. I think and there's also a ship coming. So much happening on this island. Yeah, because we destroyed that tower, now reinforcements arrive for us. Yay, go, Yay. go Team Blue! <laughs> 
So, yeah, and they fought off that one guy. So... Oh, okay. I think it also comes with some stones here, so I have more ammunition. Oh ho! Let's destroy the tower for good, so we are safe on this side. But there's also an archer standing above. Ooh. Ah! No, that's the brother of the king, Edgar. Oh, Edgar. And he is... Yeah, not amused that we destroy <laughs> <laughs> his property. <laughs> yeah, but I also don't want them to destroy my property, no. can I? Oh, something happened. Didn't work. <laughs> Don't try to cheat yourself out of combat. Okay, now we have these new people. I think I will also just assign them to the rally flag here. Then you can move the whole army, right? Yeah, so now we have, we have a pretty big army. So there are some people left <laughs> on top there. <laughs> it's <laughs> here. Fight here. Oh, it's a crow. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um, Edgar destroyed the bridge here, so we can't pass it. But there's still me here, so <laughs> I can, can help with that. I have to do something about my formation. I always put yes. <laughs> the archers in the front. <laughs> Should you take more care of that before putting really flex oh, there's on there. like there's also different uh, melee type of units. So we have a, a bigger knight in there. <coughs> yeah, maybe can I have a look? Yeah, this one is, is heavily armored. So I think we will, he will survive. So we more. have uh, crossbowmen, some uh, melee characters, and also a big knight. Let's see what they have here. Some normal swordsmen here. Uh, oh, they also have a knight. So, mm, I think I'm still a bit outnumbered, so I think it will... <laughs> oh, I forgot someone. Oh, no. I had, no. And you also forgot to, to bring your catapult. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Ooh, I still have a stone have here. A quick drink. Hmm? Oh, okay. <laughs> All good. <coughs> Just have to oil my voice a little bit. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Let's try to destroy someone with a catapult here before we <laughs> send them over. And by send them over, you mean just <laughs> toss them, them over. <laughs> okay. Ah, I think I hit him, but I didn't kill him. Ah, oh, hmm. but you, you aggroed the other guy. Yeah, let's see. Maybe so you can lure him over there and then. Oh, yeah, that's perfect, so mean. perfect, perfect. That's so mean. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Which we. Um, normally repair the bridge at this island as a mission, or no, is it really expensive for the player? No, because that's only like a um, that's a level where you don't have a, a town. I think it's okay. the only one, only level where you don't have a town, okay. um, except the very first one we saw in the beginning. So it is really expected oh. from us to um, mm. get our troops over there. Yes. Okay. It's also they tell you to do that. <laughs> okay, good. So nothing, nothing uh, stone, shady yeah. going on with that. Oh, stone. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another one. Oh, this is uh, this is so dirty, so dirty. Yeah, yeah the dirty tactics. <laughs> because I think I lost a bit too many people <laughs> oh, okay. fighting before, so I'm not sure if I can can still do it. But I can al always like save and load or restart it. Um, oh. Let's see. oh, we have even more stones there. I think because I destroyed the tower. Ah, goodbye. Oh. oh no, it missed! You have to be in the center of this. I think now it should work. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was a direct hit. Direct hit. So let's do. Let's at least destroy this one tower and then, then I'll send over my troops. Over? Okay. Whatever you say, Sun Tzu. Ah, goodbye. Okay, I also destroyed the <laughs> oh, gate the right away. Like, okay. So that's good. Perfect. So now we have let, let, let's try our luck. So maybe if I put the relief like here, <laughs> they will try, but they I think they will go down to a wolf. So that's not so a good cool. idea. I have to be fast too. <laughs> oh no. Go there. Wow. Oh. And they're already fighting, so. 
Well, not the best tactics I'm doing right now. Well, you you are shifting between like very <laughs> bad tactics and like really dirty tactics. So yeah, <laughs> maybe something in between here and there would be. Oh God, it's happening. Okay, did I think? Down? No, Ooh. it's not down. Is it not? They're still oh. dueling here. Big knights. Oh. No, no, my no, knight no. died. Oh no, and the archers too. Oh God, I only have one left, and uh -oh. he's he's focusing this building. That's not a good idea. I have not told you to do that. No, I've lost him. <laughs> I think. I think he was dying the moment <laughs> I grabbed him. And I think I might have lost the map. I could still try to to get my target here with a catapult, but I think it's it's time to move on and show another map. <laughs> All right, and also it's time to move on because we are running out of time a little bit. Oh, but we were not concerned. I mean, we were basically concerned the other way around, right? So that, uh, <laughs> but. All good. Okay. okay, then I will switch again over. And you can uh, jump into another map. Yeah. Do you want to um, try with restarting again or anything? or? No, no, let's just directly go to... Mm -hmm. Sh show a big island. Okay. Just won't play a, a lot on this island, but... Yeah. Okie dokie. So there's a lot more space this island yeah and now um, yeah we saved sir clunk a lot uh, we sure did yeah, yeah. that was do, uh, <laughs> the best uh, yeah <laughs> the best uh, strategy and tactics there so uh, all good there so what's happening on this island this island is more like a celebration <laughs> ah. we saved him and now um, we want to uh, have a great feast and we want to uh, bake a cake basically Ooh. so there's uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's introduced in this level, but some of these trees here, uh, they have uh, beehives on them. Oh, so we can get some honey. We can get honey, and that's an one of the ingredients for the cake. And so where, where, where there's honey, there are also... No, not on this island. <laughs> bees. bees. Bees was the word I was looking for, not another word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she's now collecting the honey. Without any protective gear. No. And as you see, we can't store the honey yet, so we need, I think, uh, another extra a building. Hunter. Yeah, yes. that's a honey hunter building. Let's put that here. How many different buildings do we have in the game? Oh, in I have not counted them. But I think we should have a, a better overview here. So we have the residence, the tavern, there's a harbor here, um, and a church. church. The church is interesting because um, the church, ha church has like different options. Like you have a, a basic building, you can recruit recruit monks <laughs> <laughs> and nuns. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can cre recruit uh, normal townies and these residences. And yeah, and they can do uh, stuff, different stuff. They can research, like can build an add-on for this church, a library. Um, where you can then research new buildings and upgrades for buildings because I think already possible here I can upgrade this building here mm. yeah. but okay. it requires a farm first so maybe so you should yeah there's a little bit more to it you have yeah. we even have a harbor where you can then start yeah. trading right as we mentioned before yeah, you can go fishing here with a fisherman the farm is one of the most important buildings I think in, in the game Mm -hmm. And I would love to, to build one. Uh, I'm not sure if we have still the time. We have four minutes left. I will speed it up. <laughs> find, find a place to build a farm. Because it's like farms like are one of the most important buildings in, in a me medieval town. Um, like um, they, they, we have access to, to yeah, crop fields, wheat fields and different animals like you can have chickens you have can have uh, cows or sheep and they are needed for all kind of stuff i think i can have another stone cutter here because currently everyone is a builder i think we can change mm. that yep um oh they didn't build this one because i don't have any boards so i need <laughs> need the saw needs first. to follow the production chains yep. yeah so Saw needs, I think, two stones and two pieces of wood. Uh huh. Yeah. 
and then I need a worker. What are they doing over? Th ah, they're starting to build up the farm, right? Yeah, they started with farm because yeah. they had didn't have the resources for the honey hunter. Yeah, and this is I would say that those are this island is like one of the mid-sized islands, right? I think we have uh, even bigger ones. Or we have a few that are even bigger, yeah. Yeah. Um, or there you have more space to build because there's still uh, a lot of different like yeah. slopes, or slopes yeah. and, and walls in between that like you can't put a really large building there. Mm -hmm. So the and places where you can have built big buildings, they are still limited here. Yeah. And this is also something that was <coughs> kind of difficult in the, um, in the development course because if you are in VR, if you are in the 3D game and you can look at everything from every, uh, a lot of different angles, you cannot just have a plane there where you can just build stuff. It just looks boring. That would fly if a typical top-down strategy game where you have, where you have a, um, a very you know, um, limited view. I mean, sure, you also have some mountains in there, but most of the stuff where you can build, is, it's just plain. And yeah, this was a, a bit difficult for us because we wanted to come up with interesting geometry of the islands, uh, but on the same time we needed to, you know, have some space to build on. So we needed to to compromise um, somewhere there to have like great geometry but still some space um, to build on. This is <coughs> why we tried to, you know, go with this archipelago type of approach where we have like different areas where you can build, but there are slopes in between. It's also easier to get lost in VR. So yes. <laughs> If it is like a plane reaching the horizon, you would get lost pretty easily. And now we have really like landmarks here, like this bridge here, uh, this big rock here, and the, you don't get lost on these islands. And You're even the clouds to guide you. We didn't even oh. talk about the clouds. Yeah, ah. I can grab these clouds <laughs> and oh, combine so them. Good. Hey, oh, big cloud. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, we have a little swamp. Of, oh, that eagle was grabbing the a eagle. Rabbit. Caught a rabbit. <laughs> well, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we also have a little bit of flora and fauna going on. Yeah. Um, and so now Philip is, yes, of course. Let's, let's, yeah. Clouds, lightning, lightning strikes. Uh, what, are you what are you gonna do with this? And that lightning you can even use against enemies, correct? Yes. So I didn't check. I think there were no clouds on Prison Island. <laughs> I think it would make the map way too easy. Yes. So, okay, now we have this. Oh, a lot of honey, but they didn't bring the honey back to oh, the storage. Yeah, we, have to, uh. we have to be careful so it's not getting despawned, right? Because this is also something that, that we did for balancing reas resor reasons. If you do not have a storage for your resources and they are lying around. What happened to this one? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> oh, poor guy. Uh, oh, I think oh, he's, he's super hungry or super thirsty, so I forgot to uh, build a well. <laughs> okay, he's getting now food from from Oof, okay. here. So oh, no, he's feeling a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, this is also that something that we did. So we wanted to, to display the state of the townies, like not with crazy UI again and showing hunger or whatever, but we tried to convey that message um, with animations. So they start to limp around, they will fall down unconscious. So you really notice it when your townies are hungry or thirsty. So let's check what else is needed for this building. Oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's three boards. And I think we yeah. have... The oh. thing is, we are kind of... Uh, out of time. Out yeah. of time. There, but yeah, but then I think tomorrow <laughs> we have another stream. Yes. And I will show all the animals. Yes. I promise. Yes. So let me switch up cast of you again yeah that was uh, a very deep insight into townsman vr a build-up strategy game meets god game type of game including some strategic combat or not so strategic combat depending, <laughs> depending uh, on who's, who's playing <laughs> what you are doing we will do the same stream tomorrow again with townsman vr and i think then we will also show a little bit more from the farm and the more advanced uh, buildings. You, you for, totally forget time when playing in VR. Yeah. Like I was thinking I have now played like 15 minutes or so. Yes, and I, and I was- An hour is gone, I don't know I what, was, what happened. I was glued to what you were doing. So I was also like, yeah, I try to keep time as good as possible. But yeah. on the other hand, yeah, it's just so interesting to see what but Yeah, we played do. the first island uh, completely. And I mm -hmm. think that's about 15 minutes to half an hour. Yeah. Um, 
but the later islands you can you can spend hours on them yes, like two three definitely. hours easily yeah so we have also a lot of playtime going into this game so yeah to ramp it up a little bit quickly thank you for watching guys so far we will be up next um, will be let me have a look Airhead, we will have, I think, the technical making of for Airhead. Joining you then will be <coughs> Konstantin and Reinhardt, the producer for the game. So, thank you again for watching and tuning in to Townsman VR. If you want to try it out yourself, you can do that already with um, a little twist in there. We have the game on Steam, so you can go over there and wishlist it. You can also buy it and play it, but this early access version that we have live is just a very little slice of the game. It shows you the basic mechanics of the game and the interactions. Um, the assets are a bit different of what they are right now. Yeah, we, we basically rebuilt all the assets here. Everything exactly. you see here um, was built from scratch. Um, all like the townies are new, all the animals yep. are new. All of that I think stuff. Only thing that's still the same are some of the resources, but still mm -hmm. most of them have been reworked a yeah. bit. But there you don't notice it that much. Exactly. Then also, if you have some more questions or anything going on, you can always join our Discord that was also posted in the chat right now. Feel free to interact with us to ask some questions. And also, most importantly, you can walk over the Indie Arena booth online right now. It's a digital expo where you can create your avatar and walk over to the booths and check out all the other games that we have in place for you. Yeah, that should be it. So thanks again. And yeah. like we have a whole schedule planned for more live streams today and tomorrow. Exactly. So you'll see the schedule right away when we are going off. Um, and yeah, see you in the next streams. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Welcome, people. We're live again. Uh, my name is Konsti. You've seen me yesterday evening, probably, and I am today with Reinhard from producing here at Handy Games Hi. and Hi, Andreas yeah. from, from um, 
the dev team at Octato, developers of Airhead, as you can see in his background. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a nice one. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourselves? Yeah. Andreas, would you like to start? Yeah, I'm the game director of Airhead, and um, we're here to uh, play the game and uh, talk a bit about uh, how we have worked on the game uh, along the way and what choices we had to make during the development. Um, I was actually looking at some of my old files to just before this event to see uh, where it all started, and I found an old Flash game from... Uh, I think maybe now that we've seen the trailer and you know how the game looks, that we can actually... Yeah, we're pulling it up right now. That. Yeah, it so, looks very different. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like uh, we... The beginning of the game, as you will see uh, when we start playing the actual game, uh, is also, it's still green and you have like the, mm -hmm. the darker rocks in the foreground and so on. But I think it was just, I did a lot of work for higher uh, flash games at that time. And then I had a couple of games that I've worked on as a hobby. And it was, this one was just, yeah, it just felt good to me, but it quickly be became too big mm -hmm. for me to work on alone. So I had to like, yeah, it ended up in a drawer waiting for me to get back to it. And then uh, at some point uh, we finally got some money, we got some funding for it. And here we are now getting closer and closer to release. <laughs> But yeah, so it's exciting. actually still looking very close to the, what we've got now. Like even there's one scene in the uh, one level where I thought, oh, I know that level. Yeah, yeah. yeah the feel, nice. the feel is the overall feel is yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah, you have like the head, and and you have to find ways to yeah get through the level. Uh, f and, uh, yeah. Before the head is empty, and it, yeah, so the whole the um, gameplay concept is the same. But of course, as We've evolved the whole world and the story behind it and stuff like that. Yeah. It just it came very quickly. All, I don't know, do you, can you show maybe the, the, the world overview yeah. concept piece? Uh, because then we, we started working on that and, uh, and then all the ideas just came running and uh, yeah. 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 The, the, the prototype that you pitched yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we had like uh, one more prototype, and then we made like the vertical yeah. slice and, mm -hmm. and uh, another vertical slice, and then. Uh, yeah. But on the on the on the prototype, when did you start working on the prototype? Oh, last oh, year. <laughs> or, the, 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 the flash one, yeah. No, not the flash one. The, the real one. <laughs> The one oh, the real one. Yeah, yeah, the one. Yeah, I think that was uh, three years ago where okay. I, I went back and we did the... We, we actually had a bit time in uh, Unity before that because okay. we got some funding from the Danish government. I can't, I don't know when that was, but yeah. but we were start working uh, for real on the thing uh, three years ago. Okay. The prototype was in 2006, I think. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a long time ago. That's pretty long time ago, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, should we start playing the game maybe? Yeah, we could definitely. Yeah, we'll uh, pull up the game real quick. Yeah, and uh, we'll share the screen so Andreas can actually see live what's happening over here. Uh, yeah, that way. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, that way you don't have to deal with the delay. Okay, that should hopefully work. Okay. Do you see it? Mm, no. No. Nope. I, maybe I have to press here. Uh, yeah, you click on the live uh, live section again, and then watch stream. Yeah, it's loading. It, it's gonna be. It's there. loading, but it's gonna be there. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. All right. I hope. Yeah. Can we maybe turn down the in-game volume a little bit? It's mm. quite loud. Yeah. All right. There's body. Uh, yes, we are. So this is where we are now, and it's yeah, we've come a far way, but uh, oh, we went yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The overall volume is quite loud, so I'll just turn yeah. that down a bit so we can hear you better. That's nice. Okay, here we are. Yeah, so we have these uh, these rocks that we also did in the. I mean, 
this we have a headless guy but obviously he's the lack of head uh, he's still uh, very strong yeah <laughs> extremely yeah. large rocks around yeah uh, it is. and we actually uh, the rocks are we uh, baked the physic, uh, physics on the rocks to have more control on the process uh, that was a decision we made because it was we have this uh, it's not completely flat to the uh, environment we have, so turning around and making the rocks follow the the paths uh, uh, our character is moving. Uh, we had to like find ways to do that, and mm -hmm. uh, one one of them was baking a lot of the physics. When you find the head later, it will be more uh, that will be uh, handled by uh, real time physics. But but most of the rocks are uh, are baked. Mm -hmm. Which means that we have run them through a mm -hmm. physics engine, but but it's become an animation. Or the the creatures are they coming from your head? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's been a lot of sketching and f figuring out what we wanted, and and the creatures are a very important part of of the whole story, uh, and uh, and what they do, and the AI around them is uh, something that we've worked a lot on. I mean, one of the sub themes for the whole game is is uh, about the complexity of the world, uh, and and of course we need people to interact with each other, and 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 you also have to interact with them to make that work. Mm -hmm. And I think complexity is maybe a keyword in this sense because it was uh, it was kind of. Uh, we, we, we spend a lot of time working on the AI to make them believable and do stuff uh, that was cool. But it turned out in the end that when we started testing that it, they were they became too complex for uh, for the puzzles. It, mm -hmm. They were simply too unpredictable for when you had to solve puzzles. So we had to sort of make them less complex and to make it yeah, easier to understand how they think. Right. To make the whole puzzle solving easier, and it's been it's been very co time consuming, uh, especially because in the beginning we only had one programmer uh, working on the yeah the whole uh, platforming uh, framework and and the shaders for the water. We also spent a lot of time up on that, mm -hmm. and also course I tried to help out but I still had to also think about sound and animation of and course level yeah. design and everything so yeah so but that's uh, how it is working on a small team and as you yeah we have more uh, creatures here uh, again and later on they will have a even larger role in the whole uh, yeah so how how world. how was it that you came up with this more reduced art style. Was it from the beginning, or did you start it with some more detailed, and then you said, "Okay, no, that's not working." It's yeah. To be honest, I've I've I just worked a lot in in also illustration, and and I think my style has always been a bit uh, simple and with with large uh, shapes, and uh, okay. but also I've also always played a lot with light and how to get like moods and stuff like that uh, so I guess it just felt natural for me to do it like this uh, mm -hmm. okay yeah because it it's perfect really. yeah. And I, yeah, I mean we did a lot of the concept art stuff uh, that was done in Photoshop and Illustrator and, and also in the beginning in flash actually because that was something I worked a lot on earlier mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so it just felt natural and we tried to try to make the whole thing fit that style when we started doing it. And then it was even, it, it, it also turned out to be a good thing to do because it, it's less time consuming to make like this clean style. So, mm -hmm. but still we wanted to be a, a complete world with it and feel uh, vibrant and uh, alive. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a balance. We have to, at all the time. Okay. Now we have this scene here. Yeah. I 
especially these uh, these scenes right here, they really capture the the feel of the Flash version that we saw earlier as well. Yeah. And you know, take them to the next level, obviously, visually. Yeah, 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 yeah but I, <laughs> I agree. This yeah. is actually, I mean, this is where the Flash game actually started. Mm -hmm. and, and the first prototypes we made, we, we actually had the same layout for the first level. And, uh, and the game was originally meant to start right here, with you getting the head from the beginning. From the beginning. But when you get the head, you can put it down and walk around. So we had to sort of, uh, you had to have, we felt that we needed some time being just the headless guy to learn him, how he works and, uh, and get the feeling that he is who you are playing, not the head. The head is actually just another creature he's helping mm -hmm. yeah. throughout the, the game. And from here on, uh, if you stand still, it's okay. You don't lose uh, air, but as soon as you're moving, you're losing air. Yeah. So from here on, take care of your head. Yeah, basically, you don't want the, the head to run out of air at any point. Yep. Okay. If it it's happens, uh, then uh, you're going to restart it to last. These are saving points, actually. Mm. Yeah. And there are, are different types of Ah, air. okay. I was going to ask, is there a difference between the different shapes of bottles? But okay. Yeah. okay I see. <laughs> there is. There I is. see. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we also, I mean, the, the whole water thing, we spend a lot of time making the water as well, but, but for us it was also important because now you have, I mean, an inflatable head, so there was just too many... I mean, like the creatures is important for the story. I think the water element is, is very important for the whole gameplay thing mm -hmm. because there's just too many uh, puzzles to be made out of buoyancy and drag and uh, swimming around and leaving the head on the surface and stuff like that. We've also uh, um, can show that so you have a map there, so you're not completely yeah. lost in the dungeon. Yeah, it's also, we also uh, ended up at uh, Metroidvania styled uh, map uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, and how you, how you gonna, um, how are you gonna work on this? Are you doing a, a concept for the whole dungeon? Then you do it just like gray box, so we can already play through. Then you're working on the riddles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have uh, we are building uh, the the world directly in uh, in uh, Unity with uh -huh. uh, some mm -hmm. tools in there where we can actually right away play whatever we we uh, came up with uh, puzzles and uh, and uh, traversing and exploration and stuff like that. We have that in very uh, simple gray boxed versions, and then we when we are kind of satisfied with it we tried to see if we can make some graphics around it that looks nice and then we just iterate until uh, it feels the way we want it to feel and uh, the whole process is also we have to consider what we want to tell in this with this puzzle also so it's uh, there's a lot of stuff to be thought about when we do this thing yeah and some of the puzzles i mean I know how to solve them, but in the beginning it was. I remember, yeah. the, I remember the pitch prototype without the walkthrough that you shared with us. <laughs> Some of us were struggling. I was still, yeah. still sitting there trying to solve the. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's. Uh, I mean, I love when I get, uh, when I get challenged by games, yeah. and uh, yeah. so so that's kind of, and the the more. Ch as, as when you in the end solve a puzzle, the more challenged you felt, the better it feels solving it. Mm -hmm. I, I feel so. So for me, I wanted to make a game that uh, that where that feeling of uh, of oh, I did it. It was hard, but I actually did it in the end. Uh, should should be as as big as possible. Definitely. Yeah. 
but that also means that we have some hard passes and and in and uh, we are actually gonna have like a, a hint system for the final game so if you get stuck you can you can get help but hopefully there was all there will also be a lot of uh, youtube <laughs> films <laughs> to, to so. check out uh, yeah. we we're, were already discussing uh, feedback from qa and so which we can how we can get it into the game or how we can um, give players a hint without breaking the immersion of the game yeah. so because as Andreas said it's you have to find a balance that need to spend some time on a little mm -hmm. but then you solved it and then you're feeling happy but if it's too hard like I mean you also don't have some traps mm -hmm. here like uh, uh, yeah you don't want to get it too yeah. frustrating obviously yeah so oh no, no. Yeah, but I mean we also it's it's short loops you have so so yeah. you will not be you will not be too far from where you mm -hmm. were when you when you uh, when you're out of there yeah uh, and and uh, and throughout the game you will also get upgrades and uh, and the head will uh, stay inflated for longer mm -hmm. as you go along and uh, yeah so so the whole thing gets yeah of course some of the puzzles will also be harder but the most the hardest puzzles we will have in the game will be um, you will just could go around them because they they will have my minor upgrades if if you if you solve them mm -hmm. but uh, they are not necessary to complete the game so so there will also be sort of a difficulty uh, oh no 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 push no, no, difficulty no. as you go along that way as well and if you get stuck somewhere because we have this uh, open world style there will usually be other places to go right in the in the beginning of the game where we are now it's pretty linear but, but yeah. uh, in a few seconds you will uh, <laughs> you will uh, yeah. you will get to an area where you can actually choose between uh, three different puzzles mm -hmm. uh, and it will be like that uh, a lot and and there will also be uh, larger game loops where you can choose which one to go and uh, then uh, if, if it gets too frustrating you can you can work a bit on the other uh, come on, path. come on, come on. Oh, uh, so close. We did it. <laughs> you need you need to watch this the speed run that we're doing. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there you're gonna see the reflex. <laughs> Yona from uh, AQA. I mean yeah. it's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. And we will also get more into the story tomorrow with the with the story event as well. Yeah. Where we talk a bit more about what I mean with the complex world and uh, what we're trying to do with the game story. Yeah, I'm very interested in that actually. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, these sort of puzzle platformer games, when they have a, an actual story behind them, I think that's always yeah. very refreshing because otherwise it would be only mm. another puzzle. Yep. Yeah. All right. So. To the uh, I think that would be it. And there's another creature. Yep. Come on. Andreas, how many people are actually working on this right now? The studio, the team? Luckily, we are up to uh, seven. Uh -huh. So um, so that's nice. But we've been we've been only three people for a long time for uh, the last year. Uh, a level designer, me and, and our programmer, Victor. Yeah. Uh, who's, uh, and Tobias is the, who's going to do the event tomorrow is the level designer and, mm -hmm. and also a writer for some of the story. And we also, in the beginning, we did a lot of planning because for us it was important that that the whole story was told through the gameplay. And so we planned the, all the, the puzzles. So we, while uh, Rita was working on, on, the, on the framework for the puzzle game, mm -hmm. 
we we did a lot of uh, like planning where we so we know that the number four puzzle uh, after you get out of the cave would be about wind and, and then we have like sort of planned it out all out because we needed to make and with wind and you have like human built uh, area with uh, yeah so so we know that that's kind of what we need to make a puzzle around this and it's been much easier to just start making puzzles if you sort of have a concept of where to start when you when you're actually working on them so the elements were all planned out and then did them and then this is where we ended up also show you this because um, that those are the, the air hunters uh, so they're yeah. trying to steal your head they're away trying to steal your head. okay okay yeah and and if it's, it it's and it's part of the, yeah. And we actually had them do a lot of stuff uh, from the beginning, but now it, it's just down to they steal your head. And then there's also, of course, uh, a story loop where it ends. Turns out that you get told why they are, want your head, and uh, okay. And uh, you actually just saw that, but uh, but. Uh, it's part of uh, the whole solving thing there. You yeah. have to figure out how the whole thing with the with their lava and uh, and why they want your head and, and how you can use that to get further in the exploration of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Uranium Raptor just, just asked, uh, where are you guys from? I don't think we talked about that yet. Where are you actually no. from and uh, how long do you expect the game to be roughly? Yeah, we have, uh, of course, it's always hard to I mean, I'm from Denmark, and you guys are from Denmark, but the, the, the development is uh, taking place in Denmark. We are sitting here in Copenhagen uh, mm -hmm. doing the game. And the whole uh, duration of the game will, of course, uh, depend on who's playing, because it's a puzzle game. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. But uh, <laughs> what, we're, what we're aiming at, I mean, like six to ten hours mm -hmm. uh, for the main game. And then, uh, of course, you can solve the whole thing and get all the secrets and stuff like that and yeah so 10 to, 10 to 12 hours i hope yeah. but someone will probably be able to just uh run through it in four hours i i don't know and the i mean we have this this part we've built now is is it takes roughly 30 minutes to play but uh, i think uh I don't know. If, uh, can I spoil how fast the uh, speedrun is right now? No, nope. maybe not yet. Okay, we'll need to I'm wait until tomorrow. But, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but, but it's a bit less than half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's probably still room for improvement, even. It even is. With that. Yeah, it's, it's not perfect yet. Is. So, yeah. I mean, for people interested in the speedrun, you can download the demo and, and, oh, yeah. uh, and try it out. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then look the speedrun, and then you. Yeah. Then you yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we have, uh, we are trying to. Uh, he's, there's also already exploiting like uh, bugs and uh, stuff like that in the speed run, and we are trying to stop that. We are still in development, so, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, also a war between us and the speed runners. But uh, yeah, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the speed runners will always find ways to break the game <laughs> definitely yeah uh, that's part of their job and I, I i actually like that a lot i think it's, uh, it's fun to see how people figure out ways to screw up the game to get as fast through it as possible Close. you're good at this uh, thank you very much not, sir <laughs> you've been practicing yeah, I practice it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, usually the um, whole stream should be about the Lego, building a Lego oh, yeah, head. Can remember the idea, actually, but yeah. we skipped that one because. Uh, but at least I did. Uh, you built it anyway. I built it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have the picture. Yeah, we have it up. We have it up right here. It, it looks pretty good. It looks very accurate, actually. It yeah. was a lot of work. I can imagine. Because we first we had to collect all the, the different Lego uh, stones. And yeah. usually a room of a six-year-old boy looks like, I don't know, it's like <laughs> a garbage <laughs> shell. They're, yeah. not, uh, they're, not color. they're not in color order. 
Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was based on the first script from the game. Yeah, it looks good. You know, in Denmark, the first thing we learn is that you have to keep your Legos in uh, color order. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. no. I, no. I mean, of course, it's Denmark. I mean, it's Lego in <laughs> Denmark. And it's... Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. But it's great. Right. Yeah. I mean, creativity, you know, knows no bounds. Right. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, another question was, when did we, the publishers, join in? When did we first hear of Octato and Airhead? In the beginning of this year. Yeah. It's not, it's it not been that long. In the beginning of this year, it, yeah. I, um, when we first talked, and because they had already this uh, really playable prototype, mm -hmm. Of the, com uh, the first chapter was completely playable, mm -hmm. so it was uh, we, were, we went on it and we were pretty fast. We decided, okay, this is the yep. follow up, and then we got in touch with the guys. And uh, I guess a month later, we already talked about um, signing a deal. Yeah, so I'm still uh, still happy that we did it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah us too it's been very nice to be able to get back into uh, <laughs> doing the actual game instead of trying to mm -hmm. <laughs> find someone yeah to help us do it so that was nice yeah i don't know if we uh, can we uh, can we reach no we, I, i'm not sure actually you have to play the demo to see the end for yourself yeah, that's also probably. the secret area you are you are not getting to. Yeah. So the demo is available right now, though you can you can get it yeah. right now, download it for free and play it for a limited time on Steam. Yeah. So. And it would be yeah. awesome if you then after playing the demo join us on our Discord channel yeah. and then share your feedback with mm -hmm. us because right now it's uh, very important for us to get feedback. Yeah, feedback is. Always welcome, yeah. Always. Definitely. And there's still room to to listen yeah. to everything we get. It's also that, I mean, you play, you are planning to do some player sessions in Denmark with uh, a couple of students. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that we're getting even more feedback. But yeah. So the demo is, uh, of course, it's very helpful for us to show the world is a game. But for us in development, it's also uh, important to get feedback on the, on the game. Uh, riddles too tough or... Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely yeah we do a lot of... Uh, yeah, we need feedback for everything. Mm -hmm. Even from performance to box to to actual gameplay elements. And, uh, and uh, especially the whole... Is it too hard? Is it too easy? Yeah. How do you feel? Is it fun? Yeah. Is it fun? It's fun. Definitely. This is not fun. I think you did so good in the beginning, but yeah, no. actually you already solved it. But uh, you oh, just okay. need to. Yeah. I'm, I'm so I'm very sure that Yona is sitting next in QA. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's like, like eh, definitely. What's he doing? <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna out of getting out of this room anymore here. Okay. <laughs> I'll stay here. No. Jona will be playing the speedrun tomorrow, yeah, for yeah, those who are wondering. Yeah. So he knows the game quite well. Come on, pick it up. Um, yeah, th something that we talked uh, actually just before we started the stream was um, I, for example, haven't played the game at all yet. Um, and the reason for that is that we try to um, keep some of, some of the QA away from certain games so they can then later into the uh, project uh, get like a fresh look, like a first, uh, yeah. a first look at the game. and. You know that you can always you always have someone um, within the team that can still get a fresh impression and give fresh feedback, even you know even when the game's already further in yeah. its development process. So this is the first time I'm actually even seeing the demo, so quite <laughs> interesting to me. Yeah, so that's nice. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah because I mean we're all spoiled when we play the game. We always play it the same way, and and we can even see that when we send it. Exactly, to you. that's that's uh, something you you uh, just um, you, especially during testing as well, right? Development obviously yeah. as well. Development and testing. We 
we played the same games over and over and over again, looking for bugs and you know all sorts of stuff. And um, you you get into a certain pattern of playing the game. You you start missing things that might happen to new players. Yeah. So that's actually really important. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot your head. Yeah. You forgot your head. Yeah, I've totally forgot my head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's great. I just want to grab. Uh, are you breaking it? <laughs> Should I break it? No, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Off stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you ran out of air. I really hope you didn't yeah. break it. No, I didn't. Oh, it looks fine. I need to, to I need to drop it here, didn't I? It, it, do you want me to tell you how to solve it? <laughs> hey, this riddle is too tough. We need to talk <laughs> about this. There you go. Ah. No. You should have used the other button. Should I call Yona in? <laughs> yeah, or maybe the, someone yeah. in the chat can help you. I'm not going to help. You need help. I'm going to leave you hanging. <laughs> Oh, you're so, <coughs> you're so mean. Okay, now, now I, I got it. Come on. Good friend. Uh, no. Okay, no. Okay. <laughs> you're so close to the ending. <laughs> Oh, we still got some time left. We'll make it. We'll make it. You want help? Once you should help me. I, I don't. I, as I said, I've not played I mean, the demo I, I at all. Know, I know the game already, but I don't know what to do. Oh, you have like the lava is lying next to the air tank now. Oh yeah. Try to use it on the air tank. Come on. If you can. Yeah. Pick it up. Why it's. Ah, ah, can't you pick it up? Yeah, there you I go. can pick oh. it up. Ah. There you go. Yay. Nice hippie. Yeah, ah, so there we go. Went. Okay. Yep. So now I don't need your head anymore. Now it wants to kill you. It became your friend? Yep. Uh, but you forgot the head again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is actually kind of uh, interesting because now the head is not deflating because the air hunter is. Yeah. Uh, They're holding it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of. Uh, I lost my head again. Yeah, and it's that's fun. We have to figure out a way. This this shouldn't you shouldn't be able to make this happen. I mean, it's it's pretty fast to get up there again, mm -hmm. but yeah, I feel it's a bit annoying. So we're actually developing the game as 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 we speak right now. That's, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that is first-hand feedback there. Life, life, uh, development. Yeah. life development feedback, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope you didn't back do up. anything uh, strange head while you were away. Uh, you never know. These air hunters uh, change. I don't trust them. Strange creatures. I don't trust yeah, them. Yeah. Where, is the, where is the head? It's gone. Uh -oh. It should be on top. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you did it. I did it. <laughs> you broke it. Well, <sighs> you know, as all the games that we're showing, or most of the games that we're showing, this is obviously a work in progress, so you know, there's gonna be some some bugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah try to restart yeah. it from the last save. Well, last save. It will work. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So do it all again, but remember your head. <laughs> Looks promising. <laughs> oh, I only have to do. He's doing a. Come on. Yeah, there you go. A bit go. afraid of water. Fill the head, please. Okay, fill the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually sometimes I really forget it. So. Okay. All right. 
You're killing me, Reinhard. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was part of. It's on my list, killing you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what I see on my list is because I was uh, interested in uh, um, about other indie developers in Denmark. Are there many indie developers in Denmark, or is it? Yeah, oh. there is. There's uh, quite a lot. We have uh, like. Um, we have like uh, you can you can get funded from the the the, the Danish government through the DFI Film Institute, uh, mm -hmm. where you can there's something called uh, spill ordning where you can get money uh, for developing games. We got some in the very early development for this game, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have like you, you could, there's also like funding you can get other places. So that's nice. Uh, so we have quite a large indie scene. That's awesome, yeah. yeah Do the other one. Oh. Jonas, uh, Jonas, no. Jonas in chat, he says, you're not supposed to break the game, that's his job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to help him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I see. He looked a bit exhausted. So <laughs> I thought, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Shouldn't look like that. He's too young. <laughs> he needs to keep. Yeah, we have uh, my guys here also watching you laughing. Oh. So. <laughs> so let's wait for the next milestone approval. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. They are telling me you are extremely All right. good at it. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. Yeah, right. and now I'm going to wishlist the game. You are. Yeah, of course. And as should you. I did it. <laughs> Many times. Is that even possible when you have the demo? I'm wondering. Uh, yeah. I guess it is. Yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the other way around, I think. If you have the game, you can't yes. play the demo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, you ha if you already own the game, you, you can't play the demo. That's true, yeah. Did it. Well, we made it. Yes, here we are. Um, what, we. I, well, I, I helped. Did. Didn't I help? <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to help. I tried. I to mean, help. Andreas as well. Uh, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. That was Wonderful. nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Pretty nice. So really Good looking stuff. forward on the on the next. I'm without joking looking forward on the next milestone because having another chapter playable. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, great and it's really. And also, sometimes some of the riddles are really, <laughs> but they have to, to be like that. It's of okay. Course. It's really okay. Of course. Yeah. 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 There you okay. have it. Airhead. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with us? No, I think we're done. It's. Uh, <laughs> I have of obviously I could show uh, stuff from from during the development. But I think this is nice yeah. ending. Yeah, I think so too. Demo I and we so the it's been good. We'll we'll get back to it uh, with the speed run tomorrow. I yeah. think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, um, oh, and in the evening, it's going to be about the story. Yes. Uh, with Tobias from uh, of Trader. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So that's going to be interesting. So yeah, more Airhead coming up soon. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here, Andreas. Yeah, um, definitely. It was nice showing yeah. it to you. I'm looking forward yeah. to playing the game myself soon. And uh, yeah, everybody out there, remember to wishlist Airhead. Check out the demo if you want to. And uh, follow us on Discord, uh, where you can chat with the developers themselves, actually. If you've got any, any more questions about the game, about the dev teams, you can, you can talk to them. You can talk to us. Yeah, we're there. We're all there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you there. And until then, have a good time. Take care. <laughs> Bye.
few realized the consequences of him coming to power. Some even hoped he would save Germany. But we knew better. We knew all he would bring was tragedy, chaos and death. We knew we couldn't remain silent. We knew we had to resist. No matter the cost. Few realized the consequences of him coming to power. Some even hoped he would save Germany. But we knew better. Because we're going to talk to our developers from Pink Rocket Games about the We knew the all he would bring is, was uh, tragedy, uh, chaos, uh, and uh, death. The so called Third Reich um, and try to stop Hitler on his way to power, on his way to. We knew power. we couldn't remain silent. And for that, we have two devs invited from the Pink Rocket Studio and we're going to talk to us about the development of the game the history behind it, their research process. And I would say, should we get them in here right away? Yes, we can do that. So let me uh, switch over to our lovely, deve lovely developers. And now you can even hear them. So maybe start with a quick introduction. Who are you guys and what are you doing at Paint Bucket Games? Hi, Jan. Hi, Felix. Thanks for having us. Yes, and the rest, <laughs> Sebastian, <laughs> do I have yeah. to introduce you? <laughs> yeah, hi, uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm sitting here in Kreuzberg in the Saftladen. I'm the art director of Paint Bucket Games. Uh, nice to see you. And Jörg, what are you doing at Paint Bucket Games? Sorry, yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> Jörg. Uh, I'm a co-founder and game designer slash game director, whatever, uh, at Paint Bucket. That was a, a bit of a tricky uh, yeah, introduction. Okay. What are you doing at Paint Bucket Games? Well, <laughs> I am Paint Bucket Games. A, a rough hand over there. <laughs> a rough hand over there. So, who else is working at Paint Bucket Games? Where are you guys? Where are you guys working? Like location based? Where else is in the team? How many people are working there? Just give us a little, a quick rundown on on your team. Okay. Um, so, Paint Bucket Games is a small indie studio in Berlin Kreuzberg, so at the heart of Berlin. Uh, we are a team of five now. Um, so with us, there is uh, also working Vivian, uh, our artist. Uh, then uh, it's JD and Jona, our technical designers. And right now, there's also Lucy with us, our art intern, oh. with uh, new ideas and approaches. <laughs> So yeah, we can see now on the stream a little a slideshow Maybe, yeah. that you guys prepared for us with all the team members and <laughs> how they are working on the game. Also some stylized picture of you two guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that is uh, something that uh, Sebastian made in the early days. It's, uh, yeah, it, we all got our business cards in the style of the game, um, in the same art style. Yeah, so pretty. Speaking of side of the game, I just gave a like a quick, a really quick rough rundown about the game. Do you want to just lose a few words about what is this game? What was the intention behind the game? Because I mean, it's out already, so most people probably know it. But just for the, those who don't know, what what is Three Darks of Times exactly? 
in Through the Darkest of Times, you play a, as a resistance fighter, a civilian resistance fighter in Berlin in 1933. So when the right when the Nazis uh, came into power, and you and you try to uh, build a resistance group uh, of your consisting of your friends and people that you know, uh, and try to as good as you can uh, resist against the regime. So um, educate people about what they're really after, uh, try to get funds so that you can even work as a resistance group um, and uh, and help people basically persecute it, uh, hide them from the Gestapo or from the police. And, um, and you try to do all of that while not being caught by the Gestapo or the police, which is really hard. And mm -hmm. you also have to witness how the country changes over time, how uh, the people that you know, um, you know, your relatives, your co-workers, how they might actually fall for this regime, how they think it's a good thing, and how they cannot understand why you um, why you are worried about the path that Germany takes. Yeah, and I think, and, sorry there to interrupt, but I think like, what is still really striking for me is that in this game, you're not playing as some kind of war hero and you're running through the Normandy and just gunning down Nazis, whatever. You're playing as just a normal guy. You are a lawyer, you are a firefighter, or whatever, and you try to, you know, resist this this regime. And um, as you said, like witnessing all the developments that are going on, and it's um, yeah, that's still very striking for me. And it was like yep. really o always an emotional impact that it has that you well, you try to do something about that because oftentimes I, I'm under the impression that it's uh, portrayed as like. There were not a lot of people, you know, fighting against all the stuff that were going on in these times, and that is simply not true. There were there were a lot of people that were fighting against that. So, and, and speaking of resistance, um, you actually put a lot of effort into research for all the historical um, events or like the general historical accuracy. You wanted to keep um, as close to the historical facts of, um, as possible. What was your approach there? So, how? deep where you're going into libraries and trying to dig out stuff that is like not so prevalent already in the, in the history of these um, times already and was there something surprise, surprising for you guys already because we all sit in school we learn about history of world war ii and all of us seem to slip slide into this oh yeah i know about that yes it was bad times but for me, for example, when I was playing the game for the first time, it was still very heavy. It was like, oof. It was, it was like weighing down on me, even though I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. So, and this is still something where I say, this is, uh, you did a very great job there. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, so, so for us, it was really important to, approach this part of history in an appropriate manner um so we felt like when when i digged into the story of these civilian the, the story and resistance fighters that existed um i felt that this is a fascinating story and that this is a story that is not told enough and that uh is worth being told especially in a video game that this would make a great video game and but it was clear that we would need to pick a different approach that we couldn't go for uh you know the the typical uh gamey you are the superhero and you are defeating the bad guys and then you win uh approach but we would need to do it in something in a way that would be more appropriate to how it actually played out and um so yes research was super important uh, we well, I read read tons and tons of books. Uh, we watched every movie that we could get our hands on, but we also simply went uh, out because we we live in Berlin, right? We are mm -hmm. uh, we work in Berlin, and it's all around us. I mean, Sebastian, you can probably talk a little bit about 
liked this, how we went out for the city and the city comfort was there. I mean, there is so much, so much locations here. visited a, a bookstore there and then the people just uh, give you um, more and more hints for material for for books or already written where you find all the stuff which is happening here so it was um, very interesting yeah, that, that was that was an, for example with this bookstore that was really an example i i went in there and talked to the owner of the bookstore and she told me that this bookstore was a meeting point meeting point for uh people who were against the regime during the Nazi time. And, um, and that was like, this is the kind of stuff that we, that just happened, you just happened to run into when you start looking uh, in, in Berlin. A question for me would be, were you guys uh, historically interested before already? And if so, like, you know a lot about the story and were there still things you discovered where you were like, I, I couldn't imagine that this really happened in those times or that stuff like this really existed. Yes. Uh, yes, I was, I was very interested in history before, but basically as a hobbyist, um, uh, just reading about it and um, yeah, and, uh, and what I learned at school. Um, and, but during the work on the game, uh, there were a lot of, a lot of, information that I had no clue about before. Like one example was what really was really shocking to me was that there was after, I always thought that when Hitler came into power, um, then basically there was no resistance. There was nothing that could have been done anymore. Uh, basically Germany turned into a fascist state one from one day to the other. But in, but the truth is that it was a slow process, that it happened day to day, that things changed slowly. And one thing that I learned was that there was a, a big, big demonstration, a protest march in Berlin with 200,000 people protesting against the regime <laughs> uh, weeks after Hitler was into power. And that is just that I had never heard about this thing before. Mm -hmm. um, and uh yeah it was was details like this or and then at the same time how early some of the terror already started and how also how uh how visible it was and how how obvious it was to people around it and that so many people just watched these things happen um and did not do anything about it that's, that's also stuff that's now in the game, right? These details that you found out about, because I know that this protest is, can also be found in the game, and I know yep. that it portrays very well the the bystander thing, where people were just just watching stuff happen and turning turning away from it. I think that's very well portrayed in the game, and so people like us can learn about these details. Because I know the first time I played this mission, I was like, "Wait, why are there two hundred thousand people here?" And I thought there was no. Yeah, I thought this wasn't a thing, like yeah. like you said. Yeah, definitely. So with a theme as harsh and dark and even sad, um, was this also why you chose chose this distinct art stream right now? So this very abstract looking thing that you were like, okay, we're trying to um, how to say to really like uh, compensate or or work out the theme by, you know, not showing explicit um, images of just dead people and blood everywhere, but to, you know, have this abstract um, look that still, you know, conveys the message uh, really well. So was this also... Yeah. Yeah, so as we started to brainstorm about how we can visualize that that, that game, uh, so we... we uh, we come to the conclusion that we that we don't want to we don't want to do what what a lot of other uh, games or movies do to portray uh, the, the the fascist regime regime in a way uh, which which the fascist fascist regime what what the Nazis <laughs> basically would like you know these heroic mm -hmm. picture these these yeah. these heroic soldiers and and so we so we figured out that there's a lot of we did a lot of 
did a lot of research and uh, we figured out that there is basically the perfect role model to to go in a completely different direction is the what happens in the 20s in the 30s in the art scene here in berlin in the weimar republic is this german expressionism like 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 kete kollwitz otto dix uh, and so on so people who portrayed um their environment in a in a, in a different way in a more uh, in ex expressive uh, rough and and uh and uh, sometimes also uh, ugly way, and <laughs> and 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 we tried to to adopt this for our game to to uh, so that that we in the end we would have an art style that resistance fighters in our mind would like and mm -hmm. uh, Nazis would hate. So uh, this is this is the, the idea in mm -hmm. the, that. Yeah. And was this was this like a coincidence that? This distinct art style <coughs> that you're using right now was also then banned uh, in the in the times. Um, so that this abstract thingy um, was no, already was, banned by the Nazis, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. It was it was uh, it was blamed uh, as an art of the Kunst, so it was banned ah. from the museums. And the Nazis only want to see like these, you know, these these old-fashioned heroic paintings. So with with the uh, and and this expressionism doesn't fit that kind of uh, of, of uh, picture they had, and so it was good for us. We could just use it as our orientation uh, to to um, yeah, how should I say that to develop our own style on the base of that of that kind of art. Okay, now especially with this art style, with this look. How hard was it to pitch this game, and what were like the greatest challenges overall in uh, designing the game and coming up with this game? Um, it was a hard pitch, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would say, um, because especially in the beginning we didn't have anything, and we just had this idea, and we were telling other game developers as well about it, um, and then they always asked so. Yeah, but um, so, how do you win the game? Can you yeah. uh, can you kill Hitler? And um, then I was like, ah, probably you cannot kill Hitler because that's just not how it happened, and uh, it's also not necessary for what's important about the game and what you do in the game that you kind of beat um, beat the Nazis. Uh, it's a it's a it's a game about being in a resistance that does not win, kind of, and that still does try to do the right thing. So um, winning is survival, basically. If you survive that you time... Per, yes, persisting, win. because it's... I would also... I, I always say that you, you try to keep existing as a resistance group, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you just want to survive, you can give up and say, like, okay, I don't resist anymore, and then your, your chances for survival are even higher. But uh, what you're trying to do is you try to keep doing the right thing and try to keep as a resistance group. And that is that was also the part that I say was the hardest to design because it's this thin line between um, giving players something to succeed, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you are playing the game, right? You want to be good at it in, in some way and you do something uh, and, and reach a point. And at the same time, um you cannot give them everything <laughs> yeah kind of and uh so yeah so so what the way it works is basically you um if you do if you stop resisting if you stop doing resistance actions as your group your group will eventually dissolve they will just give up they will lose health and then they say like okay we give up well, what's the point but at the same time at the same time, there's always the more you do, the more you do resist, the higher the risk is that you get you're getting caught and a slippery uh, slope. Then that you have to yes. sweep. Oh. Yes. So, yeah. We will actually see the game, of course, in action. We will have a dedicated let's play session, also with I think both of us, right, Felix? Yes. So you and I. Both of us and you guys. And you guys. So we will um, play the game, and we can then go into detail about all the different mechanics um, that will be in there. But you dodged my question a little bit about I did. Uh, <laughs> a little bit about like also what were like what was the hardest I mean I mean you you told about that the hardest stuff was designing like the wind condition basically. 
Okay, then you, do you didn't dodge the <laughs> question. I'm sorry, I missed it a little bit. One more thing we could talk about is maybe uh, the music, because oh, the yeah. music is also very, in this game, very important, because it, pr uh, it transports the emotion, it's very, it's very well written, and it helps to um, uh, transport the message of the game a lot. So how did you decide on which music to use, and where did you record it, or who wrote it? Um, there are a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, so, so, so basically, we, 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 as we start to th think about the music, the soundtrack of the game, so we uh, very quickly come to that um, to that idea that it should be something from the time, obviously, and and swing is the music of the resistance because uh, Nazis didn't didn't like swing music and everything. It was U.S. American. It was international. It was international. It was. For young people, so it doesn't fit the, this this idea, logic, this idea. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And and then we had the great great chance to uh, work together with the swing band from Berlin. Here it's the uh, Rufus Temple Orchestra, and we uh, we booked uh, we booked the studio. Uh, I think it was quite close to Spandau, and a very nice studio in an old cinema. And and then on one day we recorded. I don't remember exactly 12 or 13 tracks for the game which is which is a lot for 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 one record yeah. and 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 uh, I mean you saw a lot uh, some of those pictures I made yeah. there and, and it was a great day because those uh, guys were just like total professionals and we uh, and we gave them a list so with a lot of stuff we we want to have recorded like like new um, new songs they never played before mm. on clarinet and so on and uh, that was that was awesome and so this this one one part of the soundtrack of the music was coming up uh, in the, in the game was coming in the game and the the, the other part uh, a lot of the of the ambient stuff you you hear in the game is made by Almut Schwacke with, with, which is a sound uh, a foley artist here from mm. From the Saftladen Collective, and, and <laughs> she she made she made a lot of um, great ambient tracks that you hear in the historic events and and so on. Yeah. Very well. Do we have any questions? Do we have time left? Is the, is the big question here. Oh yeah, Ooh. because we're gonna have um, a talk with devs from Mexico right after this. So. Yes, exactly. So we will have a, a bit of constrained time frame there. Um, no, I mean, thanks guys. This, this was pretty great. Those were like great insights. And I would say we will talk about maybe a little bit more. Also, maybe a little bit more about development during our Let's Play session. So yes. we don't have to keep it like completely Let's Play focused. So it's tomorrow it's afternoon, tomorrow. I think. Yeah. Yep. Tomorrow in the afternoon. Yes. I mean, we will display the schedule uh, basically on our stream the whole time. So, guys, if you are, you know, a little bit lost where when is happening, we will display the schedule and you can see exactly when the events are happening. Just a quick thing then anymore through the darkest of times is out now on basically every platform. It's out on Steam, it's out on PlayStation 4, Xbox and even Nintendo Switch, which was also probably uh, quite an adventure for you guys to, you know, do the porting stuff. And it, I think this is also a topic that we can um, run down when we are doing the Let's Play session. Yep. So I would say um, thank you for being here with us. It was uh, great talking to you. I hope also that uh, the audience got some nice insights about Through the Darkest of Times. You can also head over to Steam and of course wishlist the game. And of course, don't forget to head over to the Indie Arena booth online. And if you haven't already, create your avatar and explore our booths. Explore all the games that are out there. Because this is now a digital convention happening right now. Because, well, Corona. I mean, I don't need to <laughs> explain what that stuff is because everybody knows already. You could also hop on Discord to ask more questions if there are any questions. Because of this limited time frame, we didn't have much time to ask. Exactly. You guys couldn't ask much questions, so the devs are going to be on Discord to answer all of your questions. If you have more historical questions, if you have more questions about the gameplay, the game design, just hop over there, talk to them, and they will happily answer your questions. Exactly. So, yeah, without further ado, I think 
that should be it. So thanks okay. again. Thank you very much. Jörg and Sebastian from Paint Bucket Games. And up next, we will be here soon with the Dremarians from Mexico. So <laughs> stay tuned and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, friends. Hello. A Red's Quest. What a game. What a game. We are here today with uh, the developers, the Dreamarians, uh, Jesse and Rob, to be precise, uh, from Mexico. They decided to join us, and um, we'll switch right over to them. And uh, let's have a little talk about Red's Quest and the Dreamarian Game Studio. Exactly. Exactly. Hi, friends. How are you doing? Hello. We're doing great. We're doing great. Awesome. A little bit early here in Mexico. It's like six thirty a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. No, but it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's also a good time to do streaming with you guys. <laughs> awesome. That's very good. Thanks for Glad making it. So here. we kind of made like a little travel here from Berlin to Mexico. So yes. what we will do basically today is just talk about our dear developers from Mexico. We're also probably curious how game development is working in Mexico because yeah I mean sure there are probably video games coming out of Mexico but Mexico is probably not the, the, the country known best for video games so this will be interesting sure. this will be interesting sure. what you guys will have to talk but maybe let's first start with a simple introduction Jesse who are you and what are you doing at the Dreamarians? Okay um, so I'm the studio manager at the Dreamarians. I do environment art, modeling, texturing, um, uh, story too. It's mm -hmm. like a combination of tons of things, like any indie developer, yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. right. That's right. Well, a lot yeah. of hats. A lot of hats. Yeah. And myself, I'm the studio director and founder, and I do. Uh, Level design, game design in general, some some modeling work and animation, um, art direction, that kind of thing as well. Some some hats here and there. Yeah. You guys are busy, right? Busy people. Hello, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I That's would fair. suppose so. No, very, That's what we're doing. Yeah. very quick interruction. Yeah, we've we've already gotten four or five comments about uh, about people loving your hair, Jesse. Fabulous. All right. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. All Go good. No, no, no. I mean, any compliment is welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wonderful. Now, how many people are working at the Dreamarians? Maybe we can uh, fire up one of the team first. Absolutely. What the, 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 the game is, uh, the game, the company is Big about. Word. So you started out as the haiku studio, right? So that's another story oh, yes. that, that we right. might want to get into. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about that. What happened? <laughs> sure. Well, you guys happened, actually. That was, that was one of the big things. 
<laughs> you guys yeah. that's happening. Absolutely. Not too long ago, I think it was um, uh, the start of May, the, the Dreamerians turned one year old. We we have been working together, some of us, for, uh, for I don't know, it was um, seven odd years as Taiko Studio. Mm-hmm. And we we changed the name of the company about a year ago. It was a turning point. We knew we were getting ourselves into something amazing or something different. It was the right moment. And so we, we, we switched over. Yeah, actually, when we were Hike Studio, we were four people. It's Danny, Josue, who's there in the photos, yeah. um, myself, and we grew yeah. tons like. Yeah, We're definitely. 90 right now. Oh, there's a family. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And of course, we want to mention everybody's name because they're going to be excited. <laughs> so Ooh. we have to go through that. I'll go Very for great. it. Go, go for, for it. it. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's, uh, so it's uh, Eugenia, which is... Uh, She's my mom. Mom, I love you. I have to <laughs> we got one of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's also Josue, Ale, Pablo, and Andres. Uh, for writing, um, Jaciel, Ricardo, Daniel, David, uh, Max. Yeah, and Giovanni, Javier, Andrea, Leanne, Rafael, Luis, <laughs> and Alberto. That's that's all. That, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, it's grown a lot, but it's still like very tightly knit, familial yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah, I didn't count, but that's but definitely more than four people. Yep. <laughs> awesome. And we also want to make a disclaimer because. Um, as we're in Mexico City and we're near the suburbs, you may hear a roster. Like, roster. Roster. Yeah. Like, a roster. Uh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, about it's I about time for him to get up, yeah. <laughs> you literally yeah. just heard the roster. That's all mean? good. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel says, don't forget Matt. He's part of the team, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Cool. There he is. Yeah, talking about Mexico. Um, what's it like being a game developer in Mexico? It's uh, over here in Europe. We have no real idea of uh, you know. We, I've never been to Mexico myself. I wish I was, but neither have I. Yeah. Maybe one day. I'm calm. Mexico yeah. is really <laughs> cool. I mean, we yeah. have um, really tasty food. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, awesome landscape, uh, biomes. Mexico is really, really cool to travel. And also, the Mexican video game industry is growing, definitely. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's easy like to sometimes like mess up and say big, small. It's it's growing. It's, growing. it's definitely mm-hmm. growing. It's, mm-hmm. it's... That's important. <laughs> Absolutely. It is, it, is, it, is, it is. And it's growing healthy. It is. More studios, more games being... Uh, Colleges, more game jams, more more uh, university careers, more that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Esports. Yeah. And also, Mexico has always been like a huge market for like the consumer market. The yeah, consumer sure. market. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when no, you no, no, like developers. Yeah. So when, getting, when, yeah. when you when you say that that it's all growing and stuff, um, when you like really f- founded the new company, do you? Do you feel that? So is there a lot more applicants coming in? So do you do you like see, okay, wow, so, so many new faces, so many new applicants that you can really feel it that it's like ramping up over the months? So is this like... Oh, definitely. Oh, for sure. I mean, if, if I was to compare it when I like first began, it was like just me in a way, and then it was Anthosue, and then Jesse Lola, to, to now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just like more diverse uh, people with more experience, of course. From uh, different yes. careers, From like different careers tons of yeah. people go like, okay, I'm gonna study animation to, to, to make, make videos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so mm-hmm. more and more people, talented people, looking for jobs in the game industry. So yeah, that's amazing. It's definitely it's for the better, for sure. Yeah, for sure. No, sure. like them. Yeah, yeah, there they weren't the, the, like that many events. They're more game focused. Game jams. So. Speaking of events, um, is there also any type of like bigger convention like Gamescom already in Mexico, or is this still too early for you guys? Maybe. <laughs> nothing, yeah, nothing quite as big as Gamescom. <laughs> but I mean, if 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 someone that's a developer is listening right now and they could go to one a year, that would be GammaCon at yeah. the north of the country. 
it's it's a really cool event also anime and other stuff but it's really video game focused yeah because it's not too big it's more like really focused on bringing developers from la from yeah. san diego with a lot of experience mm -hmm. in yeah triple a so that's the event the yeah absolutely we also have Pixelatl, which is closer to uh, uh, to the capital, which is where we are right now, and it's it's a lot of fun as well. Uh, speakers from all over. Nice. So it's all growing. Really, really. It's, good. It's, all it's it's a shame that you cannot be with us at Gamescom this year. It's such a shame. I I it hope really that we is. can hopefully make it through <laughs> these difficult times, and then maybe next year we can yeah. all be together and have like. I think it's six or seven days of pure madness. I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, this is all great and we're trying, trying our best to compensate and do it all digitally. But yeah. of course, having a big event in person like Gamescom would be very, very awesome. But for now, oh, we are stuck uh, with what I mean, stuck, not uh, meant in a you know, demeaning manner. Um, with the uh, Indie Arena booth online that we have going right yes. now, so where you can exactly. walk yeah. around. I mean, I hope you checked it out also too, that you can walk around, oh, check out the booths and all of that. Um, so this is working quite well. And also for this, um, we have a lot of stuff set up. So you can check out a Red's Quest um, already on Steam, so you can wishlist the game there. Yes. So um, we have a Discord running. So visit it if you have some more questions our developers will be there for you so you can ask questions in the chat directly and our developers will answer it or anyone from our um, staff that knows about the question of course can also help you out there so please visit it i mean we can also shoot it into uh, the yep. chat right now yep, or yep, yep. maybe a little bit later no no we'll do we'll do ba bam there we there have it go. Here all you can the links all the links so yeah <laughs> <laughs> All the links you could ever So want. yeah, yeah, after this short advertisement break, we can now maybe go back to the topic, right? Yeah, Unless we still topic. have a little time left. Topic that game. The red, a red square. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> why why did you go for a rat as your main character? Oh. It, it, it's an amazing old story I love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's cool. The story starts in a traffic jam. It's kind of crazy, right? A traffic jam in Mexico City. Who think that would happen? <laughs> um, yeah, in a traffic jam, it was my cousin Andres, which is working with us right now again. Uh, and I, uh, I'm i super responsible, so I was driving and I wasn't paying too much attention to him. And he was like, yeah, sci-fi bikes going up and down the pipe. And I was just like, not getting I'm in. to walls. Yeah, no. <laughs> so for some reason, I went, what you mean like a rat going like sideways on the pipe and up and down and it like, like sort of clicked for a moment so ev like eventually 120 years later after the traffic jam we got <laughs> home and we started like drawing and mechanics and this and the other and it was a really fun moment which we can still like draw from in a way and even though it's not that racing mobile 2d game anymore it's something completely different there's still that vibe of scale and contrast and looking at a very ordinary world from very unique eyes which is well the eyes of matt the rat mm -hmm. yeah and also this idea this idea came like eight years ago maybe i've well, been yeah. in the city like seven and a half years and since i entered it was like one day we're going to do a rat quiz. Yeah. Not now because we're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> not yes. Yet. Awesome. Oh, it, it's yeah, an idea it that has been bo uh, like uh, boiling I for years. Boiling. Like, okay, so it's going to be a 2D adventure platformer. And then it was like it was the 3D. game telling like, make me 3D because... <laughs> <laughs> Do and you, we just have to listen to the game, right? Do you regret listening to the game going through? No, 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 that's, <laughs> that's not. In very brief moments here and there, but in the end, we're always happy we have. Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. There's, more, there's more to Red's Quest, though, than just it being a platformer. There's a story behind the game as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. My, my brother Pablo and uh, Andres, my cousin, 
and myself and Jesse have been working on the story. We we always wanted to get a story in there, and it was going to be a love story, like a like a two way love story between two characters. And you just get you're seeing Matt's story. You could have seen her story. Right now, we're focusing on 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 his side of the story. But yeah, there was always this thing about returning home. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's much of a journey from Matt going back to Nets mm -hmm. at the house was not uh, like waiting like oh my god oh, no, I'm no, no, gonna no. return he ha she has no, her own bad. story but yeah it's, it's really amazing how they two look together in the game mm -hmm. we know how we <laughs> did <laughs> <laughs> I think we will have still a lot of you know events coming up it will, sh oh, yeah. it will show a lot more of Definitely. the game it's a, it's in a very early stage right now the game is so uh, yeah. exactly so but and yeah, as time as time goes on, we'll definitely show some more, yes, some more content. Yeah. We've got a we've got a question from the audience. Uh, will there be cats in Red's Quest? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. Technically speaking, cats plural. What are we going to say? Cats say plural. No. Cats plural. You could just have cats plural. No. Just say, <laughs> just say yes, and then you know you still write and even. If it's yeah. not cats, maybe it's just a cat, okay. then okay. you still answer the question, so it's all good. There is a cat. There is this cat, the claw, you can read about him uh, at the um, fact of a rat twist on Discord. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of info uh, that you can find there. But yes, it is going yeah, to be cat. this cat that it's gonna make everything turn upside down yeah and it's more than just like an obstacle it's it's a character for sure and and it does play an important role in the story oh, that's so cool. curious so curious i mean i already saw a little bit of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're <not>. but um <laughs> yeah so curious to see it in the game and all of this coming together so i guess yeah. it will be mm -hmm. very very awesome Okay, what else do we have up to talk about? This we could talk we about the game uh, forever, yeah. I would suppose, but we will have a dedicated stream for that. So mm -hmm. maybe we should, you know, tone it down a little. Um, maybe we can. What were like the biggest hurdles, um, especially when we coming back to game development in Mexico? Like, what when when you found that your company and everything was set and you had the, the, the contract with the publisher? So what were like the, the biggest obstacles that you had to you know encounter from not only like from a development side maybe but also from from um, like organization or office space and um, how are you you guys handling that? So is it uh, something that was difficult or was it like oh we didn't think about this we didn't think about that and oh no we have to be quick or was it more like, yep, yeah, we have a plan, we do it like this, 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 and no problem? Or is it? Is there a little bit of cliche in there that you'd be like, okay, um, oh. Mexico, there, there was, there's a lot of temperament and passion going, so... Um. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> in terms of the, the administrative stuff, it wasn't uh, any, any trouble because we've been uh, working as Haiku Studio so many hmm. years, so we had everything like... Okay, we know. Ah, like this. okay. But, uh, for example, when we have to register the new name of the Grimmarians, it was like, but you can't uh, here in Mexico like, say, oh, this is a video game development studio. It's like, yeah, we do software. Yeah, you have to do like, <laughs> oh, okay. around this category and this category, just like to find a way that it's, it's what it is, but still it's not like contemplated legally in a way, but those kind of hurts were were like yeah and also um bring he uh people to the grammarians i mean um three of the guys for example are from from the very north part of mexico from ciudad juarez chihuahua the northern yeah it's really okay. it's like more than 24 hours driving oh, yeah so it's okay yeah, yeah so we're doing like from here and from there and just like looking at people here and there mm -hmm. and uh, it's crazy because uh, due to the whole um, health situation right now everybody's like strewn back across in a way <laughs> but yeah that was definitely a moment yeah. of just like seeing who we wanted to work with and who wanted to work with us that was definitely difficult but super exciting in a way mm -hmm. and super great 
Right. Aside from that, I mean, we could say like breaking into the industry, proverbially speaking. And <laughs> of course. And not seeing like the events and what was our first GC like and our first friends from, from abroad that were, you know, mm -hmm. like already in there and that kind of thing. It's, it was definitely difficult, although I would never say that it was harder for us than for any other developer anywhere else in the world. Great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless, bless you. you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Awesome. So good talking to you guys. Yeah. I think we should. Do you have anything more on your on your heart on your mind? Uh, we've been asked. We've we've been asking another question from the audience. It's a quick one. Is it? Will there be cheese? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, yes. I, I think <laughs> without any spoilers, we can say yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There will, there will be, be cheese. cheese. Yeah. And awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. There will be cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, lots of cheese. I I think uh, everybody's happy to have met you for the first time. I mean, many many yeah. of them for the first time. Yeah. We we already we already met a couple times. <laughs> yes. And, yes. Uh, and we well, will in yeah. the future. And um, yeah, tomorrow we got some uh, we got some more stuff prepared. Concerning the game a little bit more itself, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the Dreamarians. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Part yeah. of the family. Happy to have you. Thank yes. you for being here. It was a pleasure talking for you. That, um, <laughs> talking with you. Sorry, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, as Bro was saying, thank you for having us. We're not just talking about the streaming. We're talking about, oh, about this you? handy games, the Dreamarians. Absolutely. from the heart Aww. yeah yeah awesome. same, same goes awesome. to you guys so awesome can I, can I even do this yeah i i, I can <laughs> my my heart is a little bit uglier than yours <laughs> but uh, you, you got it down. it still comes from the heart my heart <laughs> <laughs> uh steffi is also uh, writing we love you there's yeah. there's lots of yeah. hype uh, in yeah. the chat or lots of love in chat that's great yeah we will also awesome. see a little bit more of the game Yes. Uh, mostly we will see like highly in development stuff, but this is also like very interesting. But mm -hmm. we will also have some some new assets here and there that we might show and uh, you know tease a little bit here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. But that's it for I would say now. So yes. thanks again, Jesse and yeah. Rob from okay. the Dumerians. And I would say yeah, let's get some it. rest. Take get a nap. Some rest, take a nap. <laughs> exactly. You, you deserve it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and we'll be talking okay. to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. So Absolutely. take care. We'll See do. ya. Bye bye. See ya. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. <laughs>
here we are. Welcome back. Hey. We're here with Seed by Seed, the developer team of Pileup. Yeah. And uh, yeah, why why don't you guys introduce yourselves real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so I'm Antona. I'm a game designer and level designer on Pileup. Yeah, I'm Thais, and I'm also a game and level designer on Pileup. I'm Yanis. I'm one of the programmers of uh, Pileup. Game today, probably. And me is uh, Jean, and I'm doing everything the, they don't want to do. That's good, that's good, perfect. Um, I mean, there's more, it's not just you four. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's more of you around. We've got some pictures here. Um, where are you uh, from? Where are you from? Where are you working from? So right now, we are in Angoulême, where most of the team uh, is, uh, is living. Um, actually, you are just half of the team right here. There is uh, four other people, uh, one other programmer, two graphics, and uh, one sound designer. Um, yeah, and so most of the team live here. Anton is in Paris, and our sound designer, Anise, is uh, in um, the south. south of <laughs> the France. real south yeah. of France. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's cool. In the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> So, what's the indie uh, game development scene like in France? Do you have other studios you're you're in contact with? Or do you have like a community of um, indie developers in France? Funny, and also it was a very welcome uh, community because uh, when we started our project, started our project were like. Uh, very young and naive and everything. We're like, okay, yeah. we're gonna make a game. It's gonna be so yeah. fun. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a> school. <laughs> all this, everything has all been this game. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I would say there's um I don't know maybe over a hundred studios. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so okay. quite a few. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And so I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but. I think uh, the whole concept of the game pileup was it wasn't it a school program like a school project or would yeah. you tell you tell us a bit more about that how how did that whole thing start? So yeah, we all meet up in a school. You know, Angoulême there is a public video game school. It's the uh, only one in uh, Europe, I think. Yeah. And um, we do a student project and we do video games for this. And so the whole team meet up about, uh, around the pitch uh, with the core mechanic was uh, piling up. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool to work all together. And um, so we, I think we all wanted to go indie uh, before beginning it. Mm -hmm. And um, in school, everyone was uh, really uh, in love, I, I would say, in love is a sports of the game, and so we we say the let's let's continue it. So it's been now two years uh, yeah. as a real professional. Yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. There you go. Yeah, it's a it's a super unique concept. Uh, I yeah. feel like pile up. So because obviously you know puzzle platformers, you know that's a genre that most people have seen before, right? But this this idea of just why don't why not make the players boxes that have to you know literally pile up on top of each other <laughs> to solve those puzzles? That's a that's a very unique take I think, and I really like it. I, yeah, I'm the, those boxes, that. The, the the concept, um, cardboard world. Where did they come? What what? The, how did you come up with that? It, it's coming right from the mechanic itself. Um, uh, we knew that we wanted to make a game about uh, players piling of, on top of each other. Uh, so we just asked ourselves uh, what was like um, uh, intuitive uh, to pile, and then we came up with the cardboard boxes. Uh, but we went through a lot of research. Yeah. Uh, we had stuff like uh, uh, maybe pieces of totems, mm. uh, maybe uh, it was even uh, pillows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. drawers, stuff like mm. that. We tried a bunch of things, but. Actually, the cardboard was what feeling uh, the most intuitive, and it was also something that uh, allowed the graphic artist and the sound and the sound designer the, to explore the feeling of the material itself. The, yeah, and it, we found it uh, quite inspiring. 
especially our sound designer who spent yeah. hours in the sound studio just like rubbing punching yeah. and rubbing. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine, yeah. yeah talk, talking of inspiration, was, is there any game out there that you've been inspired by, uh, in, inspired, inspired by, and like, did you play any, any game that you took certain inspiration from, or, yeah, what, what was your inspiration? <laughs> the, the time we pitched uh, the game, uh, the game that was out everywhere was Breath of the Wild, Zelda, mm -hmm. and it was it has nothing compared comparable to Fire Emblem. What was uh, an idea that was uh, sticking to, to our mind is the freedom. Uh, you have the freedom to solve a lot of things. You don't have to follow one path. So most puzzle platformers are just puzzlers. You have to find a solution. There is a solution, and you have to find a work mm -hmm. mind to find a solution. But uh, Breath of the Wild is like there is a puzzle, but you have uh, dozens of solutions. And this is something that we wanted to keep, and there's a lot of creativity. So yeah, I guess uh, that was important. Also, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. was so inspiring. We really checked a lot of Nintendo games. So, yeah, of course, yeah, and stuff to throw away, obviously. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and co-op games. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of co-op games. Yeah. Co-op yeah. co yeah. co is a big part of the game, right? So. I mean, you technically technically can play it on your own. Yeah. Um, yeah. But obviously, yeah. it's more fun. It's it's more fun playing yeah. playing with friends, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, when it was a project, uh, you you can only play it uh, with four players. Mm. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Concept, but actually, it was fun uh, when we uh, got like real indies uh, to think through uh, how to make the game uh, more scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, from for one to four players, we had to come up with little tricks. It was fun. Yeah, mm. that was a yeah. great challenge. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean the demo is out right now. People yes. Can, people yeah. can try it out. Um, yeah. If you just uh, hop on Steam and uh, go onto the pile up Steam page, you can download the demo right now. Try it out yourselves. Um, but there's some, you know some tricky parts to the game, right? Uh, Absolutely. It's not I mean, always, it's a puzzle game. Exactly. It's not always Duh. easy, exactly. So um, you've prepared a little video for us, right? That um, yeah. sort of tips and tricks video that you want to, you know, kind of inform people as to what to look out for? Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, the idea is to, uh, to show people that uh, you can have a lot of creativity uh -huh. uh, when, you, uh, play, uh, when you play the game. Um, you can, uh, every puzzle is open-ended, like Jean, you explained, like in Breath of the Wild, uh, for example. Uh, we thought about one best way to uh, solve the puzzles, mm -hmm. but there are always many, many ways to uh, yeah. to, uh, to solve uh, each, every puzzle. Yeah. We saw a lot of people on festivals, like, uh, or whenever we went to a friend presenting the game and showing how to play. Yeah. Uh, are playing differently there no no yeah. other people are doing the same stuff mm. so mm -hmm. it's so funny how we wanted to make parallels between different puzzles. yeah yeah that's a really cool idea i think that also gives it a lot of replay value yeah because yeah. you always know that oh that could be a more efficient way uh, way to play through the game so mm -hmm. yeah that's cool it, it also makes the game uh, really funny to speed run because yeah. you uh, think about a ton of different paths uh, like should i take this box or this one mm. yeah you can yeah it's it's a puzzle. The speedrun is a puzzle on its own. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can and imagine. The challenge of uh, mastering the move sets because uh, y uh, you have a uh, like the jump, the dash, the drop, uh, the mm -hmm. that you can use uh, during the game. But uh, when you get used to like timings and stuff like that, you can find new ways to like yeah. jump higher, jump. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Speaking sure. of that, maybe we should just show you the video then. We'll show the video and you can just uh, tell us a little bit about it. So um, we'll pull it up right here. Yeah. Hold on a second. And we'll show it to you as well, obviously, because... Uh... <laughs> we can come live. There we go. You should be able to see our screen there in a second. 
Can you see it? Is it? Can you see yeah. the video? Okay, perfect. All right. So we'll. Just... Oh, oh no, 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 sorry. <laughs> yes, we, we are seeing a uh, screen. You can see the. Maybe we, we should. Uh, on on the stream, we can. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, you cannot, exactly. Just in in Discord, you click uh, onto okay. watch stream, <laughs> and you should see our screen now. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We're ready to go then. All right. And we'll just play the video. Uh, and you just tell us about it and tell us when to hit pause or, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure. So, here we are in the demo, and uh, that's one of the first puzzles. And that's, like, the, the best way to solve it is to use the, the spring. That is one of the most versatile items of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I'll show another way, a more creative way to, to achieve this, uh, this puzzle is to build a stair with cardboard boxes and you have the ability to throw items so you can just throw one item mm -hmm. on top of the button and so that's another way uh, you can uh, solve this puzzle and of course with other players you'll have many many possibilities whether you're playing with two other players or three other players mm -hmm. so, but here's the best way that i'll show again is uh, to use a spring so then maybe you can take the spring with you and bring it to other other puzzles. Yeah. So maybe we can take a pause here and just explain a few concepts about it. Oh, you can explain. Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> just for information, so in this game, uh, you can collect uh, items, and they're having the same behavior, physics behavior as the player itself. So you can find the items, and uh, you can carry them, and they are not locked to one room. So the game you're moving from. Room continuous level and you can carry the items with you so whenever you solve the situation the challenge is am i carrying more stuff with me or uh, am i leaving it there for the puzzle mm, yeah, yeah I, re I remember this uh, in, in one of the early builds i tried to uh, carry as many boxes <laughs> through all the yeah. rooms as i could <laughs> it was pretty funny yeah, <laughs> yeah. something we, we show uh, later in the video so yeah mm -hmm. you can go on okay so here's uh, another one uh, that's a more tricky one because here there's a button on top and you have to place the box. Uh... Yeah, mm -hmm. and you you have to guess that you you have to bring the the spring up to with the with the stairs that you built. So here, this is how you solve it uh, by yourself. But you can also, as I said, uh, bring some items from the previous rooms uh, if you manage to buy them <laughs> correctly. <Yeah. laughs> right? Uh, but eventually uh, you can uh, you can pile the items and um, bring them uh, with you. So yeah. You don't know what to do. No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly, you can make yeah. big piles and bring bring it with you. And so suddenly you have two springs and a lot of boxes to to solve the puzzle. So. Here you are. You you, are, you can be creative in the way uh, you can uh, solve this simple puzzle. Yeah. So something interesting uh, is that if some if you see a stream or a YouTube video of the game, uh, you can you're not really spoiled about the game. Here. Oh no no it's okay. No no no, no. Okay. go on. We we we'll talk about. Yeah. We, we, it, uh, what happened is uh, another player joined. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, you have a new bunch of options to solve because uh, now the players can like drop stuff and they can uh, drop sensors. Yeah, they can drop themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, the number of items you have in a room uh, is uh, one of the main uh, uh, tools we have to scale uh, the puzzles. Uh, regarding the number of active players, mm -hmm. so the set of items you have uh, in a room um, is a uh, well depends on the number of active players. Yeah, there are less items when you are more players. N not, necessarily not necessarily less, but... but it can like for example in a room where uh, when you are alone and you have a spring, maybe if you are three players, then you don't have a spring. Yeah, yeah. So have so a way to not make it too easy if there's uh, a lot of players. Yeah. So the game always adapts to how many players there are actively and yeah, it, it makes you think 
<laughs> outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. here you can, you can bring all the items you want, even with if you are with uh, other players. So, yeah. so the possibilities are are really uh, really endless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The more you progress in the game, uh, first the game is very generous and it gives you a lot of boxes, like mm -hmm. you have plenty and also you can carry through the rooms. The more you will advance into the game, the less boxes will be available. So you have to think a bit more. It's not that difficult, but you will have to make some planning on what am I taking with me or uh, can I optimize this level so I can take this box with me. Yeah, you always have to think ahead and, and yeah. make a plan on how, to, how you approach this this puzzle. <clears throat> yeah, and, and items actually are always coming with a, like a, a, a dimension of uh, it's really helpful to have them, mm -hmm. but also uh, with a constraint. For example, uh, if you are a single player, then you can only uh, carry one, one string with you mm. because you cannot pile anything on top of string yeah. Yeah. or it's just going to bounce. Mm -hmm. yeah. And another concept that we didn't explain is that you always need to be, uh, all the players need to be into the doors to go from one room to another. So you can't leave anyone behind you. You yeah. have to be, everyone has to finish the, the puzzle to uh, to come. But you can, of course, you can help uh, each other to, 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 to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, so, yeah in the whole control. game, the, the concept um, of yeah. cooperation is very important if you're playing with other people mm -hmm. because you're so mm -hmm. dependent of each other. Yeah, sure. And uh, here, where you can see a, a rare collectible that's uh, collectibles that are harder to, to to find and to and to get. So here, when you are two players, it's uh, you can really use cooperation to to manage it. Uh, and show when you are alone, it's really harder because you have to uh, to find a way. Because uh, if you see, the rooms, there are not enough items to be uh, to go high, uh, mm -hmm. high to as you can see. Yeah. You'll have to to be yeah to think outside the box and to to think like where can I find other items? Mm -hmm. Do I backtrack and maybe if I go further into the level maybe I can find uh, another item and that's what I am showing right now yeah you, you find two other boxes and you can backtrack with them so the the, the game is very open uh, in this resolution yeah um, so that's um, uh, there's been a question in chat uh, can you use a box to keep a door open instead of having to push it uh, put it on the button uh, I think, and I think that depends on the button, right? If I'm not mistaken, there's some buttons that you only have to push once, and they'll keep, they'll stay yeah. open. Yeah. And others, you actually have to keep an item or a player on top of it. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, okay. the square ones um, must be uh, maintained, pushed by an item mm -hmm. or a player, mm -hmm. uh, and the round one, uh, once they are open, uh, it's forever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you can also like choose to use a box to uh, block. The, the grid, yeah, and just you know, this yeah. one, uh, for, for example, the one we just saw, in, you, you can definitely open it, put a box uh, in front of it, then remove all the other boxes, and the, the door will not close. So, that's another way to 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 cheat, <laughs> <laughs> to, but that's something uh, uh, we like to see players uh, do this kind of things because uh, it, it proves that they, they really get the, the, the concept and how the game works. And yeah. you know, it's always pleasing when you are a player and you you think you 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 found a, a creative way to achieve the the puzzle. Yeah, yeah like you outsmart the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they have people to playing and saying, "Okay, I just cheated. Have you seen that? I cheated." And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, well, oh, kind of. Thing, like, oh, okay, right. this, <laughs> this is actually interesting. Uh, this is the part we were talking about before. It's uh, what we call the complex moveset. Yes. Uh, it's the, the the part of the movement mechanics that uh, we are not explicitly teaching uh, during yeah. the game. Like it's not tutorialized or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is stuff you can uh, discover uh, by just yourself. by playing or watching uh, a. A stream on Twitch. <laughs> oh, watching a stream on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. This is actually and also the first time for me seeing yeah, that Yeah, I've not seen set. that particular move before. 
before, yeah. And I have so many hours in this game. <laughs> okay. I don't know, for people who are watching and don't know me, I'm the lead tester of uh, Pile Up, so I have lots of hours on this game, and there's still <laughs> new stuff for me to explore, as it seems. <laughs> which, is, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> keeps, it, it keeps it fresh. Yeah. Soccer tournament at the rain. We didn't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And so, yeah, we'll show you some really advanced uh, moving mechanics and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Teach us. Yes. I'm looking new forward box. to it. <laughs> and a new box, yes, but uh, we, we won't showcase the, the mechanic of this box. It's okay. what we call the sticky tongue, uh, the green box up here. Uh, so you can play the demo to discover what it, uh, what it does. It's really fun to play. So here, uh, that's a type of platforming room where you have two uh, ways. You have the obvious way from the left, where you, you jump over the, the, the blocks, the easy way. But it's also the longer way. So if you're a runner, for example, maybe you would prefer to use uh, the other way, that is to, to jump and to dash mid-air from the... Uh, not like that. <laughs> or fall into the water. <laughs> like that. And dash yeah. mid-air to, to, to reach the yeah. box uh, faster, and yeah. then you can you can bring it back. So I've, uh, I've done that before. We've actually had... Uh, I'll, I'll hit pause myself here real quick, just a funny yeah, story. Sure. We found out uh, that it's it's very difficult, but it's possible that if, if you've got, a, got at least two players that... Um, I, think it, I think it has to be three players, that uh, two people can... If you hold the dash button, right, you'll be stuck yeah. in the air, and then yeah. you can you can kind of um, hop your way oh, over yeah. each other uh, across yeah, an entire like, across an entire room. In theory, it's very difficult, and you'll most almost always fall at some point. Yeah, like you you create platforms of yeah. the players. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's something exactly that we found out. And that's that was that was super fun to try, yeah. but it's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> First, we, we thought about that as a co-op mechanic, mm -hmm. uh, like if someone uh, uh, can't manage to like jump his way through uh, their way through yeah. something, uh, then you can help them by uh, turning yourself into a platform. Mm -hmm. And actually, it, it turns out to, to be used mostly uh, for speedrun situations yeah, and just like, yeah. it's, it's advanced, yeah. actually. <laughs> And we are going to show another advanced move that is uh, quite the, the same idea, but uh, with uh, the, the, throw, the throwing action. Mm -hmm. So this is how you, you're supposed to solve the, the puzzle. You just bring the, 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 the box in, mm -hmm. and you, you make the bridge. But here we are showing how you can become a platform. Need air yes. and throw the other player, but here we didn't manage it on the first time because yes, as we said, it's very advanced. Uh, mm -hmm. advanced yeah, the timing has to be perfect. We don't yeah. necessarily have it as developers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what what we're saying is really it's it's meant to be played by uh, everyone. But if you're really a hardcore player that wants to. to Bring the game uh, to the, a higher level. You mm -hmm. you definitely can uh, have fun with uh, the the piling mechanics and uh, all the the moves that we have. Yeah, we were talking uh, about uh, the games yeah. that we were playing during the development, and uh, obviously Mario Odyssey was one of them. And uh, we really uh, find interesting the way uh, that they treat the, the move set and act, uh, especially the complex move set because it's mm -hmm. uh, never explicitly uh, tutorialized, but uh, it, it's actually uh, making the game uh, really deep because uh, it opens new ways to solve the situations, uh, even though uh, you would never need to master it to finish the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, all, that's awesome. That's very really interesting. I think I think that was pretty helpful for for a lot of people. Hopefully, yeah. um, um, again, we'll say it we again. If you if you want to check out the demo right now, it is yep. available on Steam. And um, yeah, we're gonna play some mini games. I've I've been told. Yes. Is that is that still the plan? We're gonna have a little excited. tournament. A little tournament. Yes. Okay. <laughs> UA versus. Developers. Right. Let's see who wins. Um, so if, if you win, you get a free bug. 
Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if we win, we get to choose a feature or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> or am I? Or am I? <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, let me prepare this here. Um, yeah. Then we'll be playing some games together. Okay. Can I move that? Maybe for explanation of the context. Um, so in pilot, you will progress through some world. Um, there's a little bit of story, and you will go through. And um, whenever you finish uh, or you go through a world, you will unlock some mini games. And um, basically, you will co op all the way through the world. And when you're over, you're com coming back, and you can slowly you can fight uh, with each other. And it feels like releasing all the pressure. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, having a break from all the puzzle solving because your brain is just fried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is one of the mini games that are available on the demo. In the, in the full game, there's gonna be four mini games, right? Yeah. 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 So if you see. maybe you should identify yourself. Yeah. So that the I think I'm the orange box. Uh, yeah, I'm the yellowish one. And I'm the lilac one. Violet one. Are you All ready, right. kids? Cool. So... Okay, we're team blue, you guys are team red. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right. So Handy Games is I team mean, blue. You know, uh, I, would oh, explain, oh, okay. I would explain this game a little bit, but it's it's uh, football or soccer if, you, if you're American, uh, and I think it explains itself, <laughs> you know, more yeah. or less. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes, let's go. Ah, oh no, I missed oh, really? it. You oh, really oh, oh, up oh, oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> ah! The skill! No, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, ah. yes. Nice. It's going to be tough. Oh. Oh. Why are you so good in this? How many hours play this game, man? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I think I'm just lucky. Nice. No! So, okay, so the, <laughs> you know, the tricky part is that not only do you have to protect the ball, you also have to protect yourself because the other team could just pick you up and yeah. start, right? Hey, there you go. hey, leave me alone! <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're just wrecking you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's never too late for a comeback. We can play a second round. <laughs> it's a bit chaotic sometimes. I don't even know. Oh no! <laughs> I keep missing my box. Ah, no. yeah. See? Oh. I keep confusing myself. Yeah, yeah, no. I keep, oh, I keep, I had it. I accidentally keep picking up the player instead yeah. of the ball, which that doesn't really help. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh. I got it! Oh, no. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's on me! Oh no! <laughs> I lost the ball! <laughs> oh no! Oh, I see, see, it's getting close after all at the end here. Okay, you got this, you got this. Go for it! Yes! <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, oh, good move. What a save! <laughs> oh, wow. All right, all right. Okay, nice. congratulations. That was impressive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, can always, we can always go for, a, for another round. It's a quick. It's a quick I'd game, say right? we play three rounds and whoever. Best out of five. Okay. So, first, first to win three games? Mm -hmm. That will be fair, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah we got the time. <laughs> okay. We have awesome. to save. One, uh, when team, team Handy Games is leading by one. <laughs> okay, let's go. One's missing. Oh, me, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, same teams or do you yeah. want to switch sides? Uh, no, or I think... Let's switch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, to be fair. I don't mind, yeah. It's easier when you have the blue team. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see, I see. Is that is that written in the code? That's, that's psychology. <laughs> oh. oh, not a skill. Yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh. Wow, <laughs> what a move! What's about to win? I don't. Oh, I don't want to toot my own horn. But... <laughs> good. Damn. Oh no! No! Oh. No! No! Oh. <laughs> so close. I think we spent too much time with the 
Well played, well played. Yeah, that's not <laughs> Just sit up on the ball. Oh, Actually, I gotta go down, okay. This one is not to load. Ooh! Oh, no. Ooh! The tackles! Oh, oh. yes! <laughs> okay. I think this is the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even doing. Yeah. I'm not even doing anything. It's all. I'm, not. <laughs> I'm just. Oh! 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 Wait! Oh, you you red, yeah. right? I'm 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 orange. Yeah. Well then, go for uh, it. Yeah, but uh, come they're on. Defend, they're defending. Oh no! No! Yeah! It's a close one. It's a close one. Uh, uh. Um, oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Get it. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, it's not too late. First, two. Three. No, no, that's not four. <laughs> Get your own. Oh. I, I don't know, guys, but I think you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've, you've played the game so much, maybe it's, maybe it's not even fair. Usually I'm not really good in in, in the, the box ball, maybe. Well, but today I'm just, are, I'm just on fire. On you are on it. I'm on fire. Alright, that's oh, two to oops. one. Uh, two to zero, actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. This, this could be it. This could be it already. Mm. Mm. Yeah, best of five. We're switching players. He's missing. Um, yeah. Are you missing? Oh, you're switching players. Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> For sure. I mean, yeah. It, sure, why not? Okay, uh, switching sides again or? I don't... Yeah, red. Okay. Yeah. okay, all right. Yeah, okay. sure. Are you ready? Okay, I'll stay in the goal. <laughs> That's my best. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Making the oh, no. The oh, I, oh, okay. That's, that's you, actually. Okay, so that's good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you discovered the strategy. Yeah. There is always oh, wow. A... The middle game is evolving. Oh, hey. That was a good move. Oof. That Get tackle. It. Get it. Get it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? 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 What's happening? <laughs> what happened? I must say this is some high player. Yeah. High, high yeah I call it you. Yeah. Get it. Oh, Go to the place. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's brutal. Diagonal. <laughs> oh, 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 that was my chance. No, no, no. Oh, what a shame. We are overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, what's wrong with you? Step up your game. I am. Yeah, oh, Anna, Anna is just too good. She's unstoppable right now. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Honor is safe. No, no. Okay. No, okay. Uh, I would say I'm sorry. This honor is like destroyed. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, why? It's me. <laughs> I'm just gonna, trying to help. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's actually really difficult not to pick up the player yeah. of the ball. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> ah, next level strats. Why are you cheating? <laughs> oh, I think well, I think we won, guys. That you being said, though, won. that being said, and you barely lost. Except for the last <laughs> one, maybe it was very close. Yeah. <laughs> it was very close. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. GG, as they yeah. say, as they say in uh, in the pro leagues. Too easy. <laughs> Not at all. It was, a good game. it was a good game. You were just on fire today. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. It happens. No, the, the, the level was actually really impressive. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure I, 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 uh... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's kind of our job, right? To play these <laughs> games a lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, most of us here, we were very competitive.
yeah. Uh, especially I'm the usually old not. Old. I'm not competitive at all. You're, you're learning. You're learning. Mm. You're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, though. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It's yeah. a great game. We'll, we'll have a rematch soon, mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we'll, no. we'll train hard. <laughs> very yeah. good, very good. Awesome. Uh, I, I think that uh, we are better at speedrun that uh, I think. Yeah, maybe a speedrunning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I can imagine sure. that, yeah. Uh, Yona would be the guy to challenge for a speedrun oh, yeah. from our team. He's, um, he's, yeah. the, he's the speedrunner out of all of us, but uh, I don't think he's tried to speedrun Pilot yet. But I'm sure he will at some point. So. At some point, yeah. So yeah, give us give us a time to beat, and, yeah. and we'll we'll get into it. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Could, could be fun. Could be fun for the next <laughs> event, sure. We, yeah. we had the time on our previous demo, uh, which was a bit shorter, mm -hmm. but uh, it was like uh, you, uh, it it was a uh, uh, two player any persons, <laughs> and, uh, less than one minute. Oh wow! Really? Oh wow! Okay, that is quick. No, uh, it, it uh, would be a bit more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 think, I think you can go yeah. below yeah. two, really? no way. but I'm not sure you can go below Wait. one. Okay. For, for, the the for the current demo. Mm. For, yeah. for the current demo. Okay. Yeah. Well, Yona, you heard it. <laughs> sub, sub two. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Follow I did in, in uh, two minutes time. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Actually, the longest room is the one with the big button because you have to jump and you cannot like Give it. go mm. after. Right. Someone with uh, Mitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I think well, my record is about five minutes, maybe, when I'm playing through it. That's a start. That's a start. Yeah. About two minutes. That's insane. <laughs> well, that's what speedrunning is about, right? <laughs> I'm oh. finding out how. We'll, we'll get Yona on the case. Um, yeah. You and him, you'll figure it out. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Go for the sub two and uh, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Everybody else, again, if you want to play the demo yourselves, check it out now. It's on Steam for a limited time only. But um, yeah, it's right there. Here's and the link. Um, Go for it. And uh, don't forget, if you, uh, you, you can uh, invite, invite friends with uh, remote play together on Steam. Yeah. Yeah, this is yes. actually so, what we just did. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We played the because games. Uh, obviously, obviously yeah, you're sitting in France, we're in Germany. Yeah, especially um, these days where, I mean, most of the time you have you have maybe a friend abroad and you can't play um, locally together or yeah. due to COVID-19, many... Um, many families maybe want to play together and they can't be in the same room. Yeah. Um, and that's a very helpful feature to have. For sure. For sure. And yeah. you can play the demo itself as well, you know, not, uh, together. Yeah. And not just the mini games. We just played the yeah. mini games, but you can play the entire thing as mm -hmm. a team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And you can actually uh, plug together uh, more than just two people from two places. You can... Uh, yes. We Mm -hmm. We played it with uh, four people, and for like none yeah. of them were even in the same city. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that definitely. Yeah, works. we had to find ways to play test during the COVID. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. And um, and join the Discord if you want to ask uh, any questions. Uh, you can find us from Handy Games. You can find all of our developers, you guys, uh, everybody's on Discord. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Uh, link is right here. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you there. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I think, um, is there anything else you want to tell us? There was something. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been talking a lot about how to go fast and slow and everything, but uh, mm. initially also the game is for family, for everyone. Yes. It's supposed to be very accessible, so it's, it's, it's not true. that hard. Like, you can pick up the game, it's quite easy. Yes. You can play with your uh, parents, you can play with the kids also. Mm -hmm. It would be okay. There's a lot of mechanics that you can help. The other people. If a pe if a person is having trouble, you can help mm -hmm. the person. Well, don't hesitate to jump on the game, even if today we were having fun because we are the devs and we want to do that. But uh, for any other person starting, it's also fun. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be competitive or. Uh, no, no. Well, of course. It's actually, not so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For any pressure of yeah. any kind, you can just like if you want yeah. to spend hours in one room, you can. Yeah. And. Actually, um, what's uh, what 
what's uh, what is like a really friendly for uh, especially new players uh, with the piling mechanics is actually if you can pile with anything you can pile with anyone then if someone cannot manage to do something then just you can go back mm -hmm. pick them up and mm -hmm. you know, help them mm -hmm. pick them up and help them yeah that's uh, that's very lovely actually yeah, yeah. I like that it's, it's, that's something that is very important to me when I play a game that I can take my time to really mm -hmm. take in the whole environment and, and pr appreciate the art that is behind everything and all the, the small details because you guys put so much work into the small tiny details into a, in a game and I think many people don't appreciate it enough so oh. <laughs> it's important that the player has the time to really be able to appreciate yes. all the small details. Sure. So, um, actually, having no time pressure is more versatile than having one because if you yeah. want to put yourself under pressure, then you always can. Yeah. 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 You can always set up a timer yourself yeah. if you like to. Yeah. And if you're if you're under pressure, you, you don't really you don't tend to explore as much as you yeah. should mm -hmm. in your games. That's mm. for sure. Yeah. And actually, uh, we are going to stream again uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Breakfast and as breakfast. Can I have breakfast together? <laughs> and then we are going to play as a team and take more time to like show okay. stuff and, yes. and the kind of little details you were talking about right yeah. now. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. I love breakfast. <laughs> My Who favorite doesn't? meal of Who the day. Doesn't? Breakfast, <laughs> breakfast is best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Perfect. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye.
everyone. Hi. I'm Anna and this is Konsti. And today we're gonna show you something exciting. Um, you all know the game, you all love the game. And we're talking about Little Big Workshop. And it's coming, it's coming to console. It's coming. It is. It is. <laughs> it is on its way to console. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna be playing the Xbox version. Yes. The well, in work, pro, work in progress version. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> the, <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. You you know what I mean. You know, it's it, it's yeah. coming. It's not quite ready, but um, we're gonna play it today and show you what's what's up and what's yeah, different. Yeah, we'll we'll just show you um, all the things that will have changed from the PC version to the console version. So yeah, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. So let's get straight to it. Here we are. We um, we thought we'd show you all the basics you, you're gonna see at the, the start of the game. Uh, so this is a starter, um, starter factory. And as you see, the UI has changed quite a lot. Um, I know. We can hear it, but they can hear it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's Blad. Who else? The bully. Not at this time, Blad. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is uh, the start, and as you see, the, the UI has changed. Um, we had to adapt the whole menu system and everything to obviously handling uh, the game with a controller. Yes. Um, so you see uh, the, um, all the, the research and development statistics and your workers in, uh, inventory and all the analysis tools uh, are accessible on the right trigger button and the uh, all the the planning mode, the market shops, and the remodel. All the gameplay yeah, menus, yeah, are <coughs> accessible on the the, the, the uh, left trigger. It's, it's quite simple and intuitive, I think. Yeah, and that's um, like the the most important bit. Um, you know, apart from yeah. obviously making the game work, yeah. <laughs> uh, is uh, making it as intuitive, uh, feel as intuitive as possible. Yeah. Uh, because obviously, you know, this is a build-up strategy game, top-down sort of, you know, everybody's seen those before on PC, yeah. and uh, you know what to do with your mouse and keyboard, but obviously you don't have that, or you don't, you don't usually have that on a console. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, um, or, you know, the, the developers put a lot of effort into making this game as accessible mm -hmm. via controller as possible. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, everything is really easy to access via the controller. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, very intuitive. And yeah. It all looks a bit different. So it, if you've played it on PC, yeah. you might be a bit confused at the beginning mm -hmm. because all the menus look different, right? Um, but yeah, I think they did a great it, job, um, though. It's yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd say let's uh, let's build some things. Yeah, we've prepared another safe game for us to jump to. Um, We're actually sort of progressed into the game, right? Yeah. yeah I think that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Mm -hmm. The good factory. Get it, guys? <laughs> because we're so good. <laughs> there you go. Right <laughs> button this time. <laughs> he hesitated a second. Yeah, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Okay, so that's our wonderful factory we've prepared. It is a good factory. <laughs> we'll see about that. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Hello. So, Hello. right. We are... What should we build? So we prepared one room uh, specifically for a woodworking, the other one for metal. and. Yeah, that's injection that one's, that one's that's uh, for plastic, plastic yeah. and a paint station. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we will see how ef effective and how um, 
yeah, how, how good this is going to be. How good the good factory actually yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> keep in mind that this is still a relatively early game, right? This yeah. is not like a very advanced factory. <laughs> right? <So. Nice. laughs> uh, you know, there's a little, you know, a little certain someone who uh, prepared this, uh, prepared. Prepared. Prepared this uh, <laughs> factory here, this year factory for, <laughs> for us. So, uh, yeah. Shells are always good. There's a smiley face on them. Shall what we? could go wrong? Yeah, let's build it. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's. You don't. You don't. You guys don't see our setup here, but the monitor we're playing on is a bit small, so <laughs> it's, it's kind of far away. <laughs> it's kind of far away. Don't tell them. <laughs> so we have to zoom in a bit, <laughs> so we'll be able to see what's going on. <laughs> that's okay. Just, just so you, you're not wondering. There, hey, there's a zooming feature. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> If you're if you're sitting a hundred yards away from, if from your 16K TV on or your if Xbox, you're, or if you're just blind, uh, you can just zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All good. Yeah. Gonna be quite metally shelf. It seems. Um. A metally shelf. That's okay. All right. The game, you know, obviously, at its core, the game works the same way as it does on PC, right? You, mm -hmm. you buy workstations. You employ workers. I was gonna say you employ employees, but that's kind of like, <laughs> you know. Um, I think the phone is ringing again. By the way. Oh no. <laughs> Blood! Like God damn it, blood! <laughs> Stop calling us! Okay. Bloody hell. <laughs> <coughs> oh no! No! Hey. Not again! <laughs> we need okay. to label those. Uh, what I was gonna say <clears throat> is that we forgot to link the billboards okay, to the um, um, yes to the stations. You want to link the billboards to the stations? Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> What um, what was I about to say? Uh, the game at its core works the same, right? You, you mm -hmm. employ workers, you buy stations, uh, and you acquire contracts that you then have to fulfill. Um, and yeah, nothing changed in that regard, uh, but obviously the controls for everything are a little bit different. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the... Oh, okay. You or know should we? Doing. Oh no. <coughs> Let's just finish this <coughs> factory yeah. first, and we while they're product, uh, producing the thing. Yeah. Um, Let's go back to the planning mode. mode. Right. So we're gonna yeah do this one. Uh, that one yeah. is more effective. Yeah. Sounds good. Got assembly. Those aren't linked to the station. It doesn't matter, it doesn't yet. matter, because we have two, mm -hmm. two assembly steps anyway. Right. That's all good. That uh -huh. there. And oh, that's the... handy. It, it jumps right to the. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a feature they, they implemented in the yeah. console version. That's really so handy. Instead of just highlighting the, fact, uh, the, the, the workstations that you can use for a certain task, they actually. Um, jump you right through it because you know you're quick mm -hmm. you're quick at selecting the right station with a mouse yeah. but with a controller it, you know it would be kind of tedious so um we figured it's probably a good way to have these people uh, yeah. have, have the players um you know get taken to the right workstation straight away so make ten? yeah ten is a good number ten is a good number right it's okay. always a, it's always a winner yeah. Okay, and there you go. And um, here's the truck. There's there are our shelves being hopefully constructed quickly. It's uh, again this this part works exactly the same as it would on PC. Mm -hmm. Nothing changed here. Oh look, we have twins here. <coughs> oh wow. They look ex they look the same. Yep. They should get to work. Come on. We should we should rename <laughs> them and give them. Okay. Where can I find them? Uh, workers. Uh, Elizabeth and Michelle. Can we rename them? 
not sure actually if we can read it and then click on that. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Click on the name, maybe. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There what you shall go. we name them? Twenty one and twenty two. <laughs> uh, how about Chip and Dale? Chip and Dale, yeah. Chip, 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 chip and Dale. Yeah, the workers are very cute. Shell. Dale. <laughs> Blood it. <laughs> it's not the right twin. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Chip and Dale, there we go. <laughs> we better get to work. Well, they're already getting to work. Um, our good factory is not that good, I just noticed. There's not a lot of decorations in there, huh? It's really not. Our workers are very upset oh. with the decor. So maybe we should uh, polish the place up a little bit. Yes. Shop. Uh, decorations. I want the carny plant. Always get the carny like plant. It. Make sure like they're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> like a supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's Supervisor Carney Plant. <laughs> He's always so rude and hungry. <laughs> He's very unpleasant when he's hungry. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's make sure that in every room there's at least one. Decorative maybe, item. Yeah, let's let's maybe give them some water coolers as well. I like I like there to be water. That's something I appreciate at my workplace as well, right? The fact that I can get water when I'm thirsty. It like it's it's a small detail, but it really it really helps you like survive. <laughs> Generally, yes. <laughs> Wa'a. Wa'a is uh, really it's good for you. That's <laughs> I mean, that's not a big reveal or anything, that's just yeah. act. Okay. Let's order it. Let's go. That should be better now. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <clears throat> cool. Uh, maybe we can actually get some some plastic, some rubber ducks or something going at the same time. Let's see. If there's any, you know, market. available on the market, I'm not sure. I don't think we have unlocked it yet. Uh, maybe there's just no demand right now. What challenges do we have? Challenges. Oh, we could do we could carve a gnome or something. Carve a gnome. Yeah. Gnomes are good. I would like a gnome. Land the product. Yes. So one step product. Get wood. Carve gnome. <laughs> Done. Easy. <laughs> Easy to remember. I like it. Okay. Uh, he wants. Yeah, this, uh, so since this is a challenge, you can change the amount, obviously. So let's yeah. give him three if he wants to. Let's give him three gnomes. We should probably pri money, prioritize huh? that one because that one's. I mean, we've got it, like fifty I mean, it's, days, but it's still, like, he gives like a two-month <laughs> deadline for three gnomes. Uh, but client comes first. Okay. Uh, All right. Yep. Sure. Uh, we can speed up time a little bit. Yeah. Now. There you go. There you go. I love the carny. Mm. I want one. I want one. my heart. As I said earlier, uh, as we said earlier, the game is coming to consoles finally, um, but it's already available. If you want to check it out? I mean, you can already buy it if you want to. Um, it's a good game. It's a good game, no matter what platform you play it on. Just gonna assign more work. And if you've got any questions, if you want to talk to the developers uh, from Mirage Game Studios in Sweden, you can head on over to the Discord mm -hmm. and um, ask them anything you'd like. But no! Unlock Yay! 
that was quick. We didn't need 50 days for that. We need like <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> oh well. Maybe we can... Yeah. Maybe do this. Uh, this page with our guy. We're already nice. working on shelves though, right All now. Right. So maybe yeah, that, right. that would kind of com you know, conflict. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is there anything else mm. we can make that's like just plastic? Or maybe? On the basic On the basic or medium section? Not really, huh? All a bit mixed. That one's mm. mo mainly plastic, I think. This Is it? I thought it's metal, but maybe there's different kinds. Well, yep, let's go see. for it. Go for it. Yeah, it's mainly metal. You're right. And wood. And wood. And mm. uh, Could be. Uh, plastic's not sturdy enough, it seems, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Should we wait? Yeah, we can wait a little bit. Just speed up time all the way up. And They're still not happy. Uh, there's a couple of loud machines in the room. That's the one you want. Oh, okay. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. No wonder. That's a loud room. Um, let me put a water cooler in there as well. Yeah. They all, they all like water coolers. Maybe it gives us 30. And again, put that in. We put some, put some more plants more. in. We could put the, um, the, yeah, that one, the flower box. It's so large. We can put it next to the creeper. Yeah. That should be fine. Cool. Order. Order. Let's go. That room isn't the most even. Mm. We only need at least 37 cool. uh, points. Whatever you, you can also put a water cooler in there, I guess. Water coolers everywhere. Does that, doesn't that obstruct? No, well, they don't really have to go to the... Um, oh. and, and, uh, Do you need a plant or a fan? Something like that. Cactus. 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 There you go. Decorations for everyone. Perfect. So they can see all the features are still there. The, you there. got the you got the overlays. You got all the statistics. Mm -hmm. um, you know everything is still there. It's just tidied up to fit on a controller on a mm -hmm. gamepad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The shelves are coming all nice and I've done already. Who knows? They're twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm excited. There's some exciting news. Further exciting news uh, concerning Little Bit Workshop, but we're, we're going to get into that tomorrow. Uh, Simon and his, uh, his guys over at um, Mirage Game Studios. Oh, no, no, no. Stay tuned for that. Again, the plan is already saved technically because it's the same same product. Uh, so that feature also still in the game. Mm -hmm. You can just go on and execute that plan. 
<clears throat> I don't know if we're advanced enough yet to start with the bicycle. That's a pretty, a pretty mm. big um, production line that you gotta set up for the bike. We can take a look at it, but Let's have a look at the. Band. I think our factory's oh gosh, is quite a bit too small. I mean, we can we can make all the product. Uh, we can make all the all the materials that we need, but yeah, we're gonna think, need at least one more workstation. And, I, and it's a contract, so it's gonna have a deadline, yeah. and I don't think we'll make it. So maybe you know, this is something for a, for a later stage in a bigger factory. Yeah, those shelves should be no problem, I hope. I hope. I mean, I've known before about this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, think, I think they got this. Our workers, uh, they got this. I wish we, we had, um, well, the market's gonna update soon. I wish we just had, like, a rubber duck. Uh, rubber ducks are great. Rubber ducks are great. I've actually been told that within the community, the player community of Little Big Workshop, the most popular item is the catapult. Yeah. That's what I've been told, and we're going to talk about that with uh, with the devs as well on uh, tomorrow. So they'll 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 be able to tell us why. I hope. So I'm not sure. Could be. Could be Maybe? I think so. Yeah. Or because it's a meme. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I think it's probably at this know. point. But yeah, obviously we're not we're not set up to construct catapults yet. We need three more. haulers all, all in all because, um, yeah, I think one more hauler would be good. I don't think we need three because our factory is not that big mm -hmm. yet. Haulers are definitely worth it, but they're mostly worth it. When, um, it's a bigger factory. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When there's longer distances for stuff to be carried around, mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. And where there's bigger deliveries coming in and out. Refresh. No rubber ducks. We want ducks. We could make. Uh, could we not make the um, the plastic food? One up and one to the right, or that one? Yeah. The toy food. Yeah, the toy food. That's that's, that's plastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's plastic. Yeah, let's make the other one. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of plastic. It's just plastic and painting. Should be no problem. Right. Let's go. Oh, we should we should connect them with the mm. billboard. Well, since it's three different kinds of materials that we're or three different kinds of items that we're gonna make, we should just use one for each. I think that should be enough. Yeah. 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 In this case, I wouldn't use the. Uh, the billboard. I was gonna say blackboard, but that's not what I meant. Because, um, yeah, because especially with those, um, with those injection presses, there's a setup time, right? Um, and that would um, that would mean that every time they they make a different kind of uh, uh, item, they would have to set the entire thing up again. So, uh, like 10, 15, maybe even 20, there's like a small product to make. Easy money. Um, where, where the billboard really shines is when you have one production, like one big production step, but it's always, it's always the same. If you make a hundred, uh, whatever, a hundred, uh, films, then you could just, Use that to split those hundred carving um, mm -hmm. production steps across multiple woodworking. 
stations. That's when it really makes sense. Um, but I think this is, this is good. This is good. Also, the shelves are... Deadline's no problem here. Yeah. Easy peasy. Just to make sh uh, just to remind everyone, we're playing the uh, upcoming uh, yes. console build. Mm -hmm. We're playing the, the the Xbox version right now. Um. Uh, and yeah. If you want to pick up the game right now? It is out on Steam. Yeah. Uh, as we speak. If you if you want to play it on PC, you can play it right now. If you want to play it on console, you'll have to wait a little bit. But it's coming. Oh, look at all, all the burger buns here. Burgers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Can we speed up time? Yeah. <laughs> Always, always with the timing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, again, we've said it before, it's the exact same game, um, exact same features, there are some minor tweaks to make it, you know, run smoothly on consoles, to have the proper overlay, the proper um, um, user interface, so that it's as easy as possible to get into, you know as intuitive as possible, but overall it is the same game that you could get on PC right now. Mm -hmm. Content-wise it's the same, mm -hmm. it's just adapted to... Exactly. So. Okay, done. It's done, deliver, send it. George. Quality is satisfactory. That's good. He's a funny guy. He is a funny guy. And the burgers, or toy food, I guess, come along nicely as well. No, they Oops. collapsed. Uh oh, maybe we need another break room. Maybe we don't have enough break. Oh, goodness, it's all. Break capacity. Yeah. We need Oops. more stuff we here. We can set up a maybe second room. Second room? Second break room? But if or we look at bigger. the setup, yeah, I would say make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Because we would, like, from the setup here, it doesn't really make sense to make a second one yet. Yeah, sure. We can do that. Okay. Um, model. Let's make it bigger. A lot bigger. <laughs> sure. I need to. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Let's see. We'll get. We'll have to get rid of some walls there, huh? Mm. No, it's okay. Hello. Um, exit it. to get rid of the inside walls yes. as well, right? Yes. Come on. There you go. That wall and that wall. Right. Let's do it. There's been a question if there's any plans for a closed alpha or beta. Uh, no. Um, as I said, the game is already out on, um, on Steam and it's coming to console really soon. So, it, you know, content-wise, the game is pretty much done. It's just a matter of um, optimization and you know, some minor tweaks that are still left. Uh, so there's not going to be any beta, uh, alpha or beta um, on console, but it's going to be out real soon. It's so bigger. satisfying to watch them. If only, if only construction could get us Okay, now 
shopping. Break room, another Vendotron. Let's go. Coffee maker, over here, and let's give them a game console. Hello. Who doesn't like gaming? Who doesn't like gaming? Not me. Mm. That was confusing. What I meant was I don't not like gaming. <laughs> <laughs> you catch my drift. <laughs> 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 and a full small table. Let's make our people happy, shall we? Give the people what they want! an expensive break room. <laughs> Better be happy now. And I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> nice. Cool. Alright, we should probably get another production line going because okay. they're working on the plastic food, but let's look at capacity. the market. Yeah, we could make uh, the price is going up there. <laughs> I like teddy bears. We don't have a sewing station though, and I think we're going to right, need one, right? yeah. We could make a Swedish classic and just make a lot of dollar horses in the woodworking shop. We've got a lot of woodworking um, True. capacity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Go cheap. <laughs> Always go cheap. <laughs> Buy cheap, sell high. Is that how it works? Good with numbers. Uh, maybe we should get a second painting yeah. station because the food's already getting painted here. True. But we have the money. Basic. Uh, that's a paint station. Um, maybe just yeah. Or or by the working stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, just put it here. The, the export zone is here anyway, so that's no problem. Mm -hmm. gotta, they gotta carry it over that way anyway. Right. Uh, <coughs> mode. Let's go link that to this one. And we're good, I think. Yep. Should be. Let's make, let's make 50. No, how many can we actually sell? 30. Okay, let's not make 50 then. Let's make, <laughs> let's make 20. That's a safe number. I hope. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Beloved game as well within Oof. the community, I think. Good thing what? we didn't make more than 20. Oh! <laughs> Better make those 20 quick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're just gonna. Are we gonna prioritize yeah, it? Yeah, sure, why not? I'm a bit scared now. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm super excited for our segment tomorrow when we're talking with. Mirage Game Studios about you know, the community, the um, future of Little Big Workshop, and all that good stuff. So be sure to come around for that. What time is it? It's gonna be. Let me let me check the. Uh, it's gonna be at 4:30 p.m. If I'm not mistaken. 
can we can have a quick look at our schedule. Hold on a second, I'll bring it right up. Four p.m. Mystery solved. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so tune in and learn a bit more about. The oh wait, that was today's schedule. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I have a look. I think it's 4 8. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Tomorrow. 7 p.m. See, I thought I was prepared. Like, oh, I'll, I'll pin the schedule to the wall right next to me. But it's too small, I can't read it from here. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, what are you gonna do? It's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on Saturday, tomorrow, August 29th. We're gonna have a talk with um, Mirage Game Studios about, you know, the game, future of the game, the community, all that good stuff. And I'm super <laughs> excited for that, so, uh, yeah. And it's 7 p.m. Central European time. Yes, 7 p.m. Central European that. time. You can check out um, on our Twitch channel, uh, if you go to the schedule section on our Twitch channel, it should, Twitch should automatically recalculate all the times to your local time zone, if you're interested in that. But, you know, otherwise, yes, it's uh, Central European summertime, 7 p.m. What are, what are we gonna make after this one? Oh, the dollar is already gone. I didn't even, I didn't even realize. Already out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. Let's do. Let's do one more. Let's make one more. Contract item. or? Yeah. Well, well, it could be a challenge. We could try the stool. Is it a stool? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. We probably need a sewing station for that. I think. Yeah, right. we're gonna need mm -hmm. a sewing station. That's all right, though. That's all right. Yeah, we'll get one. Mm -hmm. And it is that one. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Those aren't linked via station yet. Yeah. Uh, billboard, yeah. But yeah. Should we? Could yeah, we could get a billboard, sure. No, it makes more sense in the long run. Yeah, and that's and that's in that um in that situation, it makes sense to get a mm -hmm. to get a billboard and link those two it together. It just makes things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I guess we can put it in front of the, the plant. <laughs> in front of the decorations, like. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of decoration in your room. We'll just put billboards in front of it. <laughs> Still happy? <laughs> right, so I think there's two. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, back to planning. Yep. And then just link the station, uh, the billboard, and it'll automatically link both stations. Yep, perfect. Yep, awesome. Assemble and we're done. Yeah, one assembly station should be enough because mm -hmm. um, there's only one. I mean, assembly the other state. one is busy. Oh, it's busy anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense then. All right. Speed up time again. And maybe prioritize this duel, right? Because it's got a deadline. Just to be sure. It shouldn't. It shouldn't conflict with the toy food, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> awesome. Still no rubber ducks. Still no ducks. 
Well, I think we'll just stick with those two for now. And, um, I mean, we're about to run out of time. Anyway, so. Already? Yeah? Oh, wow. It's been quick. It's been quick. Oh, they don't like the rain. Oh, uh, because it's too big. Yeah, because it's so large. Yeah, we can we can always get him some, some more decoration in there. They get a carnival plant too, because yep. they have so much space. Sure. And then. It's right in front of the gaming table, maybe, or the gaming seat. Yeah. So they don't get too sweaty when. Relate to that. Oh, you? yeah. Very relatable. <laughs> yeah, should be good. Okay. Okay. We can never have too, too many plants. True. True, true, okay. true. Okay, toy food is almost done, and then we got the stool, and then I think, uh, yeah, I think our good factory is. Um, on the verge of being an even better factory. <laughs> ah! Awesome. Yeah, again, We're stool done, deadline, like no problem. All the toy food, almost done. Prize even rose. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> I have to read all the numbers yeah. on the screen because it's. <laughs> you don't see it on the screen, but the, the screen that we're looking at is quite far away. <laughs> Um, but that's okay, because Little Bit Workshop is coming to console, so you can play play it on as big a screen as you like. Yeah. You can play it on your 100 inch, uh, 32K flat screen, no yeah. problem. I don't know if there's 30, 32K screens out there, probably not. Okay, let, let, let's take that back. Little Big Workshop console does not officially support 32K. <laughs> okay, so don't blame us if you run into trouble if you're renting out Hard Rock Stadium and trying to play it on the on the on the you know uh, uh, on the cube in the middle. So, okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Almost <laughs> done. Almost done. Let's go. Awesome. Deliver. And we're good to go. Nice. I mean, all in all, we lost some money yeah. today. Quite a lot. But I mean, we built, like, we literally quadrupled the uh, <laughs> the break room in size. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's for the work, guys. Yeah. So considering that, we didn't lose that much money. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't fail any contracts, so that's a win in my book. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll say it one more time. Little Big Workshop. We all know it, we all love it. It's coming to console. This has been the Xbox work version. It's coming to all the consoles. Um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, you can pick it up right now on Steam if you like. If you wanna check out all of our other games that we got with us here at the online Indie Arena booth, you can check out our booths over at the Indie Arena booth. Um, and if you wanna talk to us or to the Developers of each game, including Mirage Game Studios, who made a little bit workshop, and um, Massive Mini Team, who made the port. Yeah. Um, or us, if you just want to us. chat with us. Yeah. Have nice uh, head over to the Discord. It's free. I mean, of course it's free. It's Discord. What, what do you expect? <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's Little Bit Workshop coming to consoles. Very, very soon. Yeah. We're excited. 
We hope you are too. And we'll see you in a bit with our next segment that is One Hand Clapping. One Hand Clapping. Oh my God. Okay, cool. See you then. Have a good time. Bye. Bye.
Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's us. Um, I'm Philip. This is Anna, and we are doing. Moin! <laughs> Already something saying. We're doing the one-hand clapping stream. Yeah. So I hope you can hear us and everything is well. Mm -hmm. We have a special guest for this. Uh, hey, <laughs> we have a special guest for this stream. Uh, the developer, the, like um, one of the developers, of course, and it's uh, Thomas Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, he's the creative director. We can't hear him yet, <laughs> but we will soon switch over. So then can introduce him. Let's switch over then. Hi. Hi Thomas. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Hi Philip. Hi Anna. <laughs> um, I'm here in the Bad Dream Games headquarters in sunny Los Angeles, California. Um, it's a little bit early here, so forgive me if my voice sounds a little toady. <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> early. Like a toad. Many thanks but, to um, you for <laughs> getting up that early to do that stream for with, together no, with us. Yeah, no worries. I'm excited. Sorry. Oh no, I'm excited to watch you you two play the game and talk about it. Yeah, and I'm actually excited to finally get to talk with you because mm. I didn't get the chance to talk with you yet. Uh, <laughs> no, this is our first time meeting. It's very yeah. exciting. I have a lot of questions about um, how the whole game came together and how it all started and so. Me too. I'm excited <laughs> to learn. So yeah, we have, of course, played the game a lot already. Yeah. Uh, like, you're the lead tester, I'm the producer. So, um, yeah. And to introduce the game uh, would be great to... Um, to hear you talk about how this idea came together, how it all started, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So for those of you who don't know in the audience, and maybe even Anna here, uh, uh, the game is you know called One Hand Clapping. It's a 2D puzzle platformer where you sing into your microphone and solve musical puzzles. Um, you wander through this you know multicolored, sort of beautiful, chill, vibrant world, uh, and interact with various you know environmental objects or characters that get you to use your voice in all these different ways um, so you're physically singing into the microphone um, and the game analyzes your pitch to um, you know do all sorts of things uh, the game is this huge uh, smorgasbord of mechanics that uh, you know really push the boundaries on how a game can respond to uh, human input or vocal input. Um, so, you know, the story of it is um, quite long, and <laughs> but I'll give the short version. I mean, um, we have a bit time, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, essentially, you know, we, I've been working on this game since uh, 2016. Um, you know, I started working on it alone and just sort of playing around with all the different ways that maybe your voice could uh, respond to or not the other way around, your game can respond to your voice. Um, <laughs> I think the voice also responds to the game <laughs> a bit. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's very true. Um, and then, you know, slowly over time, I was at school at the time um, and uh, got more and more team members to work on it um, until, you know, I had a team of about uh, 20 people, you know, give or take. Um, and we worked over a year to um, make this 20 minute demo um, and that demo you know soon went viral after its release and was played by lots of youtubers who were excited to share their voices with with their audiences which is you know a really vulnerable thing to do and i think um you know a lot of content creators left it the chance to uh you know show that side of themselves that people don't usually get to see um and it's kind of a game where you can't really you know a lot of people have personas or um you know, you really get to see the, everyone's true self, unless they're, you know, singing with a funny voice. But that's, you know, that's just how they, yeah. um, but it's you know, like also show their personality. The voice is part of a personality. And yeah, if you like, uh, yeah, can can play with that in in, this, in, the, in a stream environment and get people to laugh with you and uh, about you, <laughs> um, yeah. trying to, right. to solve these puzzles, uh, that's hilarious. And so... It, 
Yeah, it, it usually ends up people just screaming into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we won't end up doing that today, but we will get famous because we are now famous, uh, streamers playing this game. Uh, yes. No, it works the other way around. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, great. So it was a student a student demo, and mm. yeah, you already had great success with it. And now we are making oh, yeah. a, a real game, right? <laughs> Yeah, so now we are taking the a concept behind that student demo and turning it into you know everything we wanted it to be. So um, it's a much longer game. Um, our first release on early access with Stadia um, is sort of like an extension of the student demo. Um, it takes the desert biome, which is kind of like the the core of the demo, um, and expands it out into like an hour of content. Um, sort of fleshes out each of the mechanics that were found in the student demo while also adding a bunch uh, more new ones. Um, and, you know, that whole process has been super exciting as well, working with Handy Games to, um, you know, take this, you know, much smaller concept, but sort of blowing it up into, you know, you know, all of the dreams that we had, <laughs> you know, while initially working on that, that smaller game. Um, so it's been crazy. It's been, you know, <laughs> there's so much content and there's so much. Um, it's evolved a lot. You know, content, yeah. yeah, there's lots of like weird narrative stuff going on that we didn't really have time to do before. Um, and that's that's been really rewarding. Yeah, I think it's, it would be a good time to like start playing the game and then we can yeah, continue to talk about why we also play. Yeah. We'll see how that works out. But um, okay. I think, uh, yeah. So thanks so far, we will set up the game and then uh, sure. we can all watch it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we can start again. So can do some vocal warm-ups maybe. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> hey, you have to train us. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now... The game will train you. <laughs> game will train you. <laughs> so I don't have to. <laughs> Yes, and I can hear it. Nice. Then uh, we should switch oh, over to the game. Yes. Now everyone should be able to see the game, and yes. we'll just I take the controller here yeah. and start the game. Nice. Hold your breath. <gasps> we <sighs> a lot of people already die in that part of the game. <laughs> <clears throat> cool. So, so, I guess I can talk a little bit about just this section right here. So, <clears throat> the um, you know that whole intro se sequence, the deserts, actually the the second biome in in the game. So um, you're kind of starting off in this cliffhanger. You know, who is this character? Where are they coming from? Who's this other character who just saved you? Why did they have to save you to begin with? Um, so, you know, some sort of Star Wars prequel stuff going on here where, um, or not prequel, whatever, the later, anyway, uh, you know, where we'll introduce the, the biome that comes before the desert um, in a later early access release. So doing early access has been really cool because we've been able to sort of mix up how we release the biomes as like chapters. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you dive right into this sort of calibration sequence. So the first most important thing about this game is that, uh, you know, we want the player to, um, you know, first of all, that the game picks up their voice. Um, so we do like a sensitivity calibration while you're being quiet at the beginning. Um, and then we go straight into this range calibration um, where we ask the player to sing their low note, where you can sing your low note. Uh, and then trial. your high note. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we kind of choose the middle between those um, and then, you know, verify that range by getting them to sing a few specific notes. So. Uh, uh, Wow, 
That was just perfect. Uh, now you're on your way. Took a while, but <laughs> entering the duet desert, so... getting a nice big hug from I love this character. Hugs. Oh. So great. So <laughs> that hug at the beginning it always makes me so happy. Oh, Another game glad. is calibrated to my voice, so now if I get to a puzzle and Anna wants to sing it, <laughs> it will be quite low. Uh, right. So, like, what do we do if we find out that it didn't work? Uh, that, like, someone else wants to play and that pitch doesn't work right now. Yeah. So if you press escape, you can always, you know, hit recalibrate, or not escape, sorry, the menu button. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, you know, the second option right there is range calibration. Um, so pressing that, you can... Um, so sing to now... see see your voice within the range, and all the uh... lines will go green if you're in your range. So uh, now um, if you sing your range? <laughs> Way too high. So yeah, you can see <laughs> your, your range higher. starts where mine, mine ends. <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> to see. so we could so, now adjust it to that it's between our ranges, so we can both try to play. Yeah, it's it's safe, yeah. and then you can kind of switch off, I guess, as it sort of goes between. You can also check the sensitivity calibration. So, yeah, so you look yeah. at that. It doesn't pick up when we are not if we're just breathing. Uh, it shouldn't turn green, right? Mm, yeah, hopefully not. Oh, that sounds fine. Maybe we can yeah. even make it a bit lower that our lower singing voices still come yeah. come through. Mm. I guess the microphone for the game is quite far away for us. Yeah. Because Set up and stuff. But yeah, it, I think it uh, calibrates uh, really well. Yeah, <laughs> what we it looks good. Cool. What we tried to do. Yeah, I mean, ha having a good calibration is pretty important. I mean, once it's set up once, you're kind of good to go for the rest of the game. Um, so yeah, taking the time to sort of just check everything because everyone has different <laughs> system settings that can in interfere and whatnot. So. It's funny if I'm talking that <laughs> then it opens this mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, we'll just try what, what happens now. Landed here and now in this beautiful desert. Yeah. So this is the Melody Hermit, and she's kind of like your guide through the through the desert. Um, and her, um, you know, she's starting to show you the power of your voice um, for the first time. Um, you know, showing you how much power she has, and then also, you know. Um, Showing you that you can also do that as well, but maybe not as intense or cool. She but, feels um, like, to me, she feels like a, a, a mother figure. <laughs> yeah, You're talking, so that's it's already <laughs> influencing the elevator. <laughs> well, let, let, let's uh, do this elevator puzzle. So now we just are supposed to sing a high note, I guess. To, to make yes, so this bridge will move up and down as you sing up and down. So you can try messing around with that. Uh, was well, still possible wow. to do it even with the higher range. <laughs> easy. Awesome. <laughs> so easy. Uh, so yeah, this whole section is, you know, the way the game is pretty much broken up is that um, there are different chunks of mechanics. So we kind of take one mechanic one by one, uh, sometimes interweaving them, um, but kind of exploring them uh, in turn, starting off really easy and getting harder as you go. Um, but so yeah. I guess I'll just do this one too. So you're wandering through these desert ruins. Um, and yeah, the Melody for. Hermit you said is like a mother figure. That's sort of what we were going for, like this mother bird um, caretaker who's really protective and, um, you know, loving and trying to teach you, you know, how to harness the power of your voice slowly and steadily while watching over you carefully. I think I will just uh, try to solve the puzzles while you are talking, so I will sing in between. That's okay. Yeah, 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 sure. So, because it feels a bit awkward standing in the puzzles and already knowing the solution. So uh, right. this, this way they move up and down uh, mm. uh, differently. Like one moves up when I sing high, the other goes down. So let, let's try it out. Ah, uh, 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 uh. Very nice. Yeah, so we wanted to, you know, 
the first puzzles you do, we want to be a little less, uh, you know, specific with how you use your voice. So um, these, we call them the rising bridges. Um, they, um, you know, you don't really have to sing specific notes. And that's kind of what's cool about this game, as opposed to maybe traditional uh, ways of teaching music, is that we can kind of intuitive, uh, just have players intuitively mess, intuitively mess around with their voice. Oh, no. All right. Um, Gives the player also a bit of a bit more freedom. To yeah. Explore their own voice because at this point you probably don't have as good of a feeling, a feel for your own voice yet. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I think it's yeah. also that the, the game is not meant to be like a hardcore puzzle thing where it's only one solution mm -hmm. and you have to be really, really tricky to get it. It's more like also expressing a freedom, freedom. Um, right. <laughs> with the voice. Yeah. This here. one. This puzzle is also kind of cool because a lot of these uh, bridges are uh, bounded to your range. So they'll only go as high as your highest note, but this platform here will actually go as however high you want. So, okay. uh, Philip, if you want to sing your highest note, okay, you can it. see how high you can get up. <laughs> oh, no. No, you try. <laughs> nice. Oh, and we found another creature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Ooh. those are the wee foxes, cool. <laughs> and that they kind of, if if the melody hermit is the mother figure, the wee foxes are kind of like your your younger brothers or sisters, um, who are up, always up to no good and kind of uh, follow the melody hermit around. I love the wee foxes. They're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Hey. La, 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 la. <laughs> I, you, I think you can also like whistle or like hum. You don't like there's different really? ways to sing, right? Like, let's... Oh no, it doesn't didn't work. <laughs> Maybe it's out of range. Mm. No, my whistling is not detected very well. <laughs> Maybe a bad, bad. Probably bet. too high. So mm. we're trying humming. Humming is humming is great. Humming's good. I like humming. Mm -hmm. Calming. Yeah. But, mm. but I think you you once said that um, in the beginning, like the first things you, ma uh, you 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 made when you made this student demo, or even before, it was mm -hmm. much more a puzzle game and much less a singing game, or or, or harder. Is it true? Y yeah, it was. Um, the first prototype I made was all like boxes and like kind of looked like. Uh, I don't know, Thomas was alone or something, um, but felt like uh, Super Meat Boy or something with <laughs> all of the platforming that was going on. So like there would be really fast platforms moving around you that you could like yeah. stop by singing or something and you'd have to like platform over them um, or like all these sort of uh, bullets shooting at you that you would have to sing to like change the color. Um, that and hectic. it was hectic, it was cool and you know, I don't think like a whole game of that would be, you know, kind of slowly teach people to feel comfortable with their voice and like really engage them. Um, it's definitely an aspect that, you know, we can you know, play with in this game because there's so much that we're doing with it anyway. Um, but, you know, we kind of realized that, um, you know, we didn't really want, we wanted to remove death from the game um, and, you know, focus more on uh, getting people to you know, think about using their voice instead of just screaming all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it makes it much more accessible and like, yeah. 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 And, and just like the, the act of singing is kind of this really calming thing. Um, and singing into the game feels really empowering. And so we wanted to, you know, mimic that in the visuals and the story and also the feel of the mechanics to sort of make this really comforting environment uh, and safe space where you can, you know, sing. Okay. <laughs> So I now will try this wheel puzzle. Um, see if I'm just talking right here and nothing happens, so I think I have to sing higher. Uh, 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 Beautiful. Did it. <laughs> 
I think this puzzle is like yeah. the culmination of the this section where you have to block the wind with the bridge by using your voice to lift it up and down. So now if I just jump up here, oh, we're dragging away. <laughs> <laughs> and now even here, no here, it's not high enough. So let's try to get the platform up a bit, but not so far that the wind, the wind keeps hitting me. Uh, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You are a professional. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. So now we're at the top of the bridge. Ah, what a nice view. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> What's um, going on? Somebody help me. Oh, wow. <laughs> I must say anything else. Okay, nice. So, her power of singing is stronger than this storm. Yeah, apparently. Once yeah. again, saves you from certain demise. So if I have uh, would have sung that loud in that moment, I wouldn't have done it right. <laughs> it's only <laughs> her who can do it. Yeah, you haven't really. I don't think you're powerful enough yet, Philip. Yeah, maybe Anna is. Um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so that you know, um, sort of every mechanic you encounter with the harmony, uh, sorry, with the melody hermit, um, she kind of teaches you by doing it herself first and then you know tells you to do it as well so this is the second mechanic uh in the desert biome um you want to where? try yeah i can try uh the reset button is B. okay uh, yeah, nice. first, first bridge was easy but <laughs> <laughs> let's see if you can do this as well what all right. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's fair. Through, through the rock. <laughs> look at look at how close she was. That, 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 that takes skill. Yeah. Well, I think if you hit the rock, it, the bridge stops, yeah, right? Yeah, it usually stops. So I think there are many options here. Like it's either you go above or you go very below, so you can yeah. still fit under that rock. Mm. But like it kind of lifts up and <laughs> she, down. She did both so. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, you see a skilled tester finding yeah. new ways to play the game. <laughs> Try this. Uh, there you go. You, you know, <laughs> you, you you know all the tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah, because like that's just, like a really boring way to do it, right? I mean, I can go zigzag if you want. But we'll try to zigzag. <laughs> oh, no, I think now we are blocked. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I think a boring way is better. <laughs> Okay. That looks pretty, uh, the, oh, the way. Uh, nice. I good bridges will become complicated, more yeah. complicated, so. Mm -hmm. Let's do the easy ones for easy way. Oh, I'm already starting. Oh, 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 oh. Cool. Saved it. <laughs> Ta talking into singing, it's yeah. possible. <laughs> Yeah, try it. She's too good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've got too many hours on this game already. <laughs> so. Uh, how is it like if you're designing those puzzles? Um, mm. Always you have to find some way to to make the voice influence these puzzles or making them the main part of that puzzle. Um, mm -hmm. how, how is like designing puzzles for the human voice different for um, compared to designing just puzzles in a like platform game? So something. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. Um, so I mean, when we're designing a puzzle, we kind of have the basic idea. Um, and this idea has been around for, you know, since the student demo, pretty much. We just kind of expanded upon it. Um, and so we kind of have this rule, this general rule that we keep when making a puzzle, where um, if the puzzle is mechanically different, uh, difficult, then um, 
the singing has to be really easy to do. Like the singing portion of it has to be really easy to do. So you um, if like I... if you if if there are lots of moving pieces or if there's like um, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Philip. Yeah, what I meant, like if if it's hard to figure out what to do. Right, exactly. Doing yeah. it should be easy, and if it's like, oh, I see exactly, I have to sing this bridge, it's, it's quite easy, but it's more like then right. the skill part is, is harder, right? Yeah, so, so the way, like when you approach a puzzle, the game doesn't really tell you how to do anything, really. Um, and so when you first approach a mechanic, you're like, okay, what am I supposed to do here? And the first thing you do, obviously, is sing, because this is a singing game and everything responds to your voice. Um, and so the way you figure out a puzzle is really by singing and seeing what's happening on the screen in front of you. Um, and if you kind of have to keep singing to figure out what is happening in the puzzle, then you're exhausted by the time you know how to solve the puzzle. And then when you um, really right. try to <laughs> sing it, it's only... <laughs> <laughs> And so then, you know, if the puzzle is really simple to solve, though, um, or, you know, if the puzzle is like really uh, clear, like what you're meant to do, then we also kind of want it to be uh, fairly easy to solve it as well, because we don't want the player to feel frustrated by the fact they can't solve this puzzle, that they know what to do. They just like are limited by, you know, the singing portion, which, you know, let's say this button is just in between a million different columns um, and you know, the melody hermit swats your voice away every time you get close to it, then that would feel really frustrating. Um, so, yeah. I, I'll That's just kind of finish this puzzle part. and then we can talk now. Yeah, okay. Uh, no. Uh, saved it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I had to hit the column yeah. there. But now, like, I'm, I'm stuck here. So, uh, there's always a way to reset the puzzle, right? And mm. in this case, I don't have to redo the puzzle because, like, it's part of it that I'm top here. I just have to be fast enough after resetting it to go <laughs> That's through like, it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> you can also just wait on the other side of the column and then do it again, I guess. Yeah, you, like can, you can do it. it again. But you can't or go, go back to halfway. the side. Yeah. Right. So now I'm inside a yeah. temple, I guess. Yeah, you're inside these, these ruins. Um, and in these ruins, the puzzles get a little more challenging. Um, so you can hear there's like a little bit more weaving to go through and it also introduces some of the other sort of ideas. But I, oh, I need to go up there first. So I think just there's a button here, but I need to be up first. So maybe I do it in, in two tries. Then mm. reset. Beautiful. <laughs> Can I ask you about the art style for a second? Um, yes. How, like, did you get any inspiration from any already existing game or hmm. any? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking. Your talking voices were exactly Sorry. right. Sorry. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Did um... where did you um, where did you get your inspiration for the art style? How did mm -hmm. you get inspiration from our stuff? Because I need to, <laughs> need to hit the high button. No! <laughs> <laughs> Almost, but I can't go over here. It'd be here. funny if you could like push yourself off the platform with your voice or something <laughs> by accident. <laughs> nice. nice. Off screen. Well done. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like I can play um, this game yeah. blind. <laughs> the art style. So, um, you know, we had the existing student demo art style, which we started in in 2017 or something. Um, and that kind of took on this cool like 2D, 3D, slightly like there's some perspective to the camera, even though it's all orthographic uh, perspective. Um, uh, and so when we were developing this game, you know, we kind of we had that existing art style, um, but we're kind of realized, you know, that, you know, method, that perspective um, was going to be pretty challenging for making such a long game. Um, other games have attempted to to do it to like, uh, and it kind of depends on the different um, kind of game you're making. Um, but for this game, you know, we wanted it to be really clear exactly what's happening on the screen. Um, and so we opted for this more, um, you know, head on flat art style uh, in comparison to the student demo 
Um, in terms of like inspirations, um, you know, initially I think Inside was a big inspiration, um, and just for like the the look and feel of the game, you know, even though it's 3D versus 2D, um, I think like the the flat shadedness and moodiness of it, um, especially for our city biome. Um, and then for this game, um, you know, we were definitely inspired by Gree, which is one of the more you know, beautiful 2D game puzzle platformer, or I don't know if it's a uh, platform is released recently, um, which kind of has this, a lot of similar themes um, with deserts and different biomes and, um, you know, wandering from different biome to biome. Um, and so, you know, it's it's been cool, you know, working with on an art style to, uh, you know, that is modular that we can reuse to create this much larger game than the student demo. Um, and yeah, taking a lot of inspiration from other games that have done that before. And to, um, to see more of it, I will try to do it yeah. puzzle. Uh, so uh, Philip, do you want to show off the auto-complete feature, maybe? Is that <laughs> no, cool? No, no, we want to do it ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> if you're struggling. <laughs> Oh. Whoa, that's some art. That's art. Yeah. That's beautiful. Looks like two dogs kissing. <laughs> I was so seeing so an octopus with just, with just so four so tentacles. <laughs> that means you have serious problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. On the other side, it's, yeah. it's mirrored, so ah, it can't get, get even up here. So let's try it again. Uh, Almost. Uh, oh. <laughs> nice. Sometimes you have to sing ugly yeah. to get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on my wall. <laughs> cool. Now you made it out of the ruins. Yeah, now it's <sighs> silent. Peaceful desert. <laughs> and I think we so found some plants here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are we? Oh my gosh, what is this place? Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's this. It's a big tree. <laughs> Oasis. Cactus. I, I want to finish that tree to show some of the uh, new stuff, so... Uh, uh, it's my favorite part. My favorite mm. puzzle. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear what, what she's saying. Uh, uh, if it's your favorite part, maybe you'll sing the next one. Oh, God, that's like, that's so <laughs> Should we recalibrate? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You could switch off the notes. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. So. Nah. Yeah, that's okay. here another wee fox so that wee fox is singing the the melody from the student demo actually it's like a oh, little yes. homage <laughs> Yeah. 
Wow. Easy. <laughs> Making your way to the top of the tree. <laughs> So the top here of you. The tree looks so yeah. cozy. I just want to go lay down and. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Just looking out over the desert, on, bathing in those pools. Yeah. <sighs> Beautiful. Now everyone's here for the lesson. Like the animations always. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I would fail so hard singing those high notes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, could try to sing along with you to see if yeah. it works. Oh no, I don't do it. I'm way too too low. <laughs> but you've already done it. Yeah. I just love the wee foxes so much. The animations are so cute. I think yeah. that's all I uh, like. That's hand drawn animations, like frame by frame. Mm. For me, it always sounds a bit like the Simpsons theme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's difficult yeah. enough that we don't get legal problems, I guess, but <laughs> it has a bit of a vibe. No. Oh, what? So now it's getting very dark. And I think we have to free ourselves by being loud or singing. So. So that mm. darkness is, is something like a recurring thing in the game, right? That's, that's, that's right. Yeah, so it's a little, you know... But everything is happy in this game. There's, there's some darkness. <laughs> there's definitely some darkness in, in our next release. I think everyone will get a taste of that. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about this earlier, um, Philip and I, because I think this darkness, or I think you call it silence, um, yeah can be interpreted in so many ways because mm, it really can um, <laughs> like for me i i interpreted it in a way like i could see a lot of parallels and um just a lot of common things with um certain mental illnesses even mm -hmm. like the darkness i i could see certain aspects of depression in there like when you you mm. have ups and downs and it all comes mm -hmm. very sudden sometimes but mm -hmm. there's always like you um the hermit for example it uh, it's there to catch you and mm -hmm. um yeah show you that there's always like the journey never ends yeah, there's right. lightness, light is still there in the world. You just have to yeah. 
find it. <laughs> for me, it would be interesting like, to, uh, to hear, is, is, there, like, is there an intended meaning or is it like yeah. this game is abstract enough that it's made for people mm. to interpret different things into it? Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely put a lot of thought into sort of what silence is and what it represents and how that is portrayed in the mechanics and uh, the narrative. Sorry, these melodies are going to keep playing over okay, and over yeah, until I, we I, solve, I, it. solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just solve it. Maybe we should have recalibrated, but it worked anyway. <laughs> Good try. I, I, this is a completely different place now, right? This feels a lot yeah. darker and yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah, in the you know, we we um, you know, the game as a whole is about finding confidence in your own voice and your relationships to other people. Um, and you know, that can come in lots of different forms for lots of different people. So it's you know, it's hard to nail down you know or you know explain everything in this mechan in this game with no you know text or um uh you know um you know very little sort of ways to explain such a complex topic um and but you know the that's this character here is you know kind of uh trying to figure out themselves and uh you know learn more about you know these different parts of their life their, their lives you know with their mother or with their friends or um and looking to sort of find their voice again um so that's beautiful man thanks <laughs> yeah so there are the my like now, right? <laughs> for one puzzle at least <laughs> Oh, no. Maybe we should recalibrate for you. I think it works still. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not, not, not nice to look at to hear, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can console it. Maybe. It's that a hard, hard puzzle, yeah. So talking a bit about like narrative in the game and how we don't really have words. So this is sort of one of our opportunities to like sprinkle in some narrative with these constellations that form. Sort of like a little confusing maybe at first, but um nice. <laughs> the moving one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tricks me with a different note. <laughs> Oh, it's getting interesting because... Right, there are two team. roads here. So um, it's a little confusing which one you're meant to do. Um, and... This one can be really hard for some people because you have yeah. to use your ear to kind of figure out which ones are higher and which ones are lower. Um, and then take those notes. So we don't have much time left. I think like about 10 minutes. I think we'll yeah. try to solve these kind of puzzles and, and start the next one and, and then end it here. Um, like, what I also think is great now uh, is all the sound design. Like yeah. you really feel like you're in a, in a cave. And what's interesting for nice. me is like, is, is how the sound design and the music, especially for a game that's about music, how did you approach that? And I will, mm. even if you're talking, I will try to solve these puzzles <laughs> meanwhile. Okay. Um, yeah, that's definitely something we have to put a lot of thought into. And, you know, talking with our sound designer, um, we, you know, we often have to go through like pretty um, clearly, you know, what the mechanic is and what the conditions have to be. Um, so this sort of constellation here, you can see, is like the player falling from something. Oh, right. I didn't um, even Cool. Um, uh, so yeah, like for this section, you know, if you walk in and out of the puzzles, you'll notice that the melodic layers fade out to leave only the drum layers so that the melody of the background music doesn't conflict with the melody in the puzzle. And then also, you know, the, the part in the nest, for example, you know, 
that involves lots of different layers fading in and out and you know uh, the melodies you sing have to be really uh you know gradually gradual on how they increase in difficulty um and in how they Oh, that oh, almost boy. killed me. <laughs> Did I do it? No, I didn't do it. What, what failed? Oh, no. I'm not sure. <laughs> was not the right uh, moment, but high enough. <laughs> Team we work. did it. <laughs> yes. Cool. So yeah, I mean, we for the the background music here. You know, we really want each biome to feel different musically. Yeah. Um, so the desert's very relaxed and has these kind of marimba instruments. Um, and you know, the the cave is very mysterious, and so we try to, um, but also kind of, you know, the longer you solve it, the song becomes more and more uplifting and less kind of spooky. Um, yeah, and then the bells here are kind of in the same notes as the background music. So that's like other small things that we have to to tweak to make it feel cohesive. So. Ah, I think I already did it. So. But I think at this point, I think we can um, stop the game and just go. Yeah. Okay. I think we can cool. show what's up here. To tease, and that you can try and <laughs> see. Hey, that's some cool next thing that you want. Maybe want to solve. Now there's a whole lot of bells. Because also interesting, like now the puzzles right now, they don't need to sing. So there's sometimes mm. you you have these um, like these these pauses there to maybe to make me relax my voice mm -hmm. and and do something else. So maybe you mm -hmm. can talk a bit about like what what different types of puzzles there are going to be like in. The, later yeah um, what's there to come yeah Release yeah it. so the you know the game as a whole has you know lots of different biomes and each biome explores a different kind of way of using your voice um and so the desert is all about melody um and you know keeping it all about notes and you singing those notes um and but yeah no that can get exhausting and so we also want to get the player to, you know, think about hearing notes and, and, you know, playing them on an instrument like those bells mm -hmm. and how that can also affect the world just to give them a, a break maybe from singing if they, you know, that whole section leading up to this bell section is, you know, quite a long yeah. amount of time to, to spend singing. If the last um, note uh, had me, yeah. <laughs> especially if you're, you know, you don't sing every day like yeah. I do. If you're not used um, to it, it can be quite this game. exhausting. Yeah. But speaking um, of, um, mm. I uh, I remember that um, one larger purpose of this game is to to make the player feel more comfortable with their voice, right? Mm. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that I I personally already have made the experience um, that because I'm I'm a really anxious and shy person, and I would have mm. never thought in my life that I would be brave <laughs> enough to sing uh, in a game on live stream for lots of people. Round of applause. The, well the done. The game works. <laughs> it really does. And I, I would have cool. never thought I would have the confidence. And mm. yeah, I just, I, just, I just wanted to add that it actually does what it's supposed to. Right. I mean, once you're in the game, you're like, you're not in the real world anymore, really. Yeah. Like, you just feel like your voice is coming out of this character and it is a tool for you to traverse the world. Yeah, and before you know it, you're like singing all these songs yeah. and... Um, you have an excuse you, to sing. Like, yeah. like singing is, is something, like, it feels good, right? But you are kind uh -huh. of, like, ashamed if you do it, right? <laughs> because you, right. you might not be good because you don't do it often, like... Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're playing a game, then it's to play the game and you... And you find out, hey, it's actually it's it's really fun to sing, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. no matter how good it sounds. Like yeah. <laughs> it, it, right. it's more fun if it's better. But uh, yeah. <laughs> even if you just barely make it, it's still it's still nice nice feeling. I mean, it, right. it's, in a in a way, it's just uh, it's fun, but it might not be as pleasant for other people to hear it <laughs> yeah. if you're not right. that good of a singer. Yeah, so so what, what 
what can we say to people that think, no, I'm not a good singer, this is not a game for me? What would you say to those people? Um, I mean, the game, you know, it, it, it tries to ease you into it and it, you know, takes, holds your hand, you know, the Melody Hermit will be there for you. <laughs> um, and, you know, just to, um, you know, it, there's, there's no right or wrong answer in, in the game, really. And, you know, you, your goal is just to get to the other side. And that's what's cool, you know, is um, however you want to, you know, get from point A to point B, B using your voice. Um, you can you can experiment with that um, and even if it sounds terrible or you think it you know you think it sounds terrible um, you know if you win you win right <laughs> 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 no, no that's not really the, the idea. Um, I think it gets it gets but, better like you you, you learn it, a bit yeah. like if you and just it, it's really rewarding your voice, uh... mm -hmm. and you know they're uh, you know, the mechanics are small enough so that you get that reward of feeling accomplished fairly often. Um, you know, the Melody Hermit cheering for you or, you know, a big burst or the constellation forming, you know, you get to see something unfold every time you, you know, you hit the right note. Um, so, I mean, yeah, thanks for sharing, Anna, that you that felt that way. That's, that's yeah. awesome. And I think, you know, for me, I feel like I've gotten a better singer making the game as well. You know, my falsetto has definitely improved. Um, <laughs> I can, I can sing high voices in the car on the way to work um, <laughs> with with more confidence maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah i'm glad that you know we can create another outlet for people to be creative um you know outside of like the the depths of a karaoke bar or something um where you don't necessarily have to be drunk or something but maybe <laughs> maybe it helps um yeah, yeah. and it's also like uh you, you can play this game right now. We don't like have a demo up right now, but um, the game is on Stadia mm -hmm. uh, in early access. Mm -hmm. And like we are starting, like I said, we started with a small section of the game and we are now updating it every two months. And the first big content, really big content update came out um, like a week ago, exactly a week ago. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's now like, uh, I think we, we played half of that right now, something like that. Yeah, yeah about half. Yeah. So, and like every two months, we will there will be more content like until the full game is finished. And now at the beginning, because the content is, uh, is smaller, it's also cheaper. So if you if you want to play it right now, I think you can get it for three bucks now on Stadia. And you will get all the future updates. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's a and steal. Yeah, it's a steal. It's, a deal. it's it's really to, to get what? game of the year at that price. That's yeah. that's something else. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if you if you want to to know more about the game and uh, maybe talk to Thomas a bit more, like uh, on our Discord server, um, you can join us there, and uh, yeah. we'll be happy to answer It'll questions. All be there. You can just chat with us if you feel like, and maybe meet other people who are also very interested in this game. Just yeah, stop by and um, yeah. yeah. You can share your thoughts yeah. we want to hear them because we're still in early access so we're still actively you know working on this game so yeah. if you feel like oh this part is just way too hard or um any feedback you know, is welcome I, yeah mm -hmm. and it helps really uh, yeah. to improve the game and make it better for everyone yeah. and yeah. i think that like that has a lot of potential of, obviously we see that because we are, <laughs> we, are, we are publishing the game but it, it's really great uh, what we have heard so far mm -hmm. um from people nice. playing it um and Good. even like now streaming it, playing it, 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 was, it was fun. I uh, even like, I want to continue, uh, <laughs> but you were also giving such uh, good answers, so yeah. I could decide what to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, it's awesome to talk about the game and have the chance to do that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Um, mm. that, that's uh, one thing, like tomorrow, um, we will do another stream this game um, and we will try out because it's not really made for it but we will try out to use some instruments uh, to play cool. through the game i think we will get further <laughs> than today um, <laughs> and like you have a guitar here a piano and we'll try what we can do maybe we we'll bring some extra instrument too let's see philip is a, is a real talent you can do everything so <laughs> yeah we, we'll try it um, uh, and see how, how good the ga game can handle it currently because of course like we do a lot of testing here at handy games mm -hmm. but we have not tested it yet with instruments. <laughs> we have used our voice. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm nervous. I think that will be funny. So yeah, uh, yeah cool. tune in tomorrow.
and try it. Yeah. I'll be um, there. Yeah, meanwhile, I mean, so far, um, it's, uh, the game is only accessible and er uh, early access on Stadia, and it will mm -hmm. be Stadia only. Um, mm. Until the game is fully complete and fully finished and fully released on Stadia, we can mm. already wish list it on Steam, however, um, mm. as I've been told. Um, nice. Yeah, you can have a look and see. It's gonna still take it will take a while for it to be released on other platforms, but um, yeah, just wish list us, uh, wish list it, list. and. Meanwhile, just go to Stadia. I mean, it's three bucks at the moment, <laughs> so get it. Right. <laughs> it's There's the, the, it. <laughs> the one month free trial. I actually got it like a couple weeks ago because I've, you know, I've been developing for Stadia, but never got to try it myself. Yeah. And it was really cool, you know, you know, you log in um, and the, you know, the sign in, like the, the free trial process getting it is really easy. And then all of a sudden you just have all these free games to play. Uh, and you can just play instantly, like with no download time, and you don't need the memory on your computer or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I played some games with some of my my team members here, uh, and some other some other games. Um, yeah, super, super cool platform and really really easy to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, then yeah, thanks uh, everyone. Try it out the game. Yeah. Uh, thanks yeah. for watching. And thanks for yeah. Watching. The next stream will be, you know. <laughs> um, um, we have a plan here. <laughs> we have a plan, but it's super tiny, uh, tiny font, so I can't read it from here. <laughs> <laughs> but we will show we show yeah. the schedule right right after the trailer. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for There's being with us, Thomas. And it will be chicken for Thanks for having me. <laughs> and yeah, uh, have a lovely rest of the day. You've got yeah, you ahead too. Of you still. <laughs> Gonna go work on the game somewhere. So <laughs> this has inspired me. Okay. Okay. See ya. See bye. Ya. Bye bye. Right. So um, I guess this is goodbye for now. Um, it was really nice talking with uh, with Thomas. It was really great to have this new insight into how it all came to be and yeah just all the inspiration and uh, yeah all the different parts of development it's really interesting yeah it's it's a surprise but developers know their game <laughs> they <laughs> know what they're doing that's uh, yeah no you really uh, can talk about the game and mm -hmm. uh, knows exactly what it's about and what's great about it mm -hmm. so and it's it's good to see the inside where it's coming from and where it's going to yeah. So it will be still an interesting project to follow for the upcoming months. Absolutely. And, uh, we'll have new updates coming in all the time. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned and follow us everywhere to, to never miss an update or anything. Um, and yeah, check out uh, the Discord. I just posted it earlier as well. You can go there and there you will find all sorts of links as well for the twitter for our twitter and everything else that you might need <laughs> and yeah um thank you for tuning in and we will see you in the next stream yeah bye bye
rough night in Clawville. What now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. One bizarre case to solve. What a pleasant surprise. The looks the cop was in person. <sighs> Never heard that one before. You here for a good old-fashioned beating? A dame to die for. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what does she really want? Lawrence? Let loose your animal instincts. After you, boss bird. Because tonight, you'll have to go wild. Blow me, sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. The legendary chicken police is back together. It's an amazing news. Say, partner, are you chicken enough? Hello guys, welcome back. We are here today uh, again with uh, Chicken Police right now. Mm -hmm. um, you've already seen the trailer. Um, you know, no need really to introduce ourselves again. I'm Konsti, I'm with Anna today. Hello. Uh, you've seen us before if you've been around the Indie Arena booth and we are joined right now by the developers of the game Chicken Police Painted Red, the Wild Gentleman. Let's Head on over, head on over to them, and guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I am Van, the writer and the director of uh, Chicken Police from the White Gentleman. And hi everyone, I'm Tomasz, I'm the producer of the Chicken Police. Hi, I'm Peter, I'm the leader of Chicken Police. Yeah, so we made this uh, super weird and normal adventure game. That's that's cool. Uh -huh. um, how? Well, first of all, how did the Wild Gentleman sort of come into existence? Your you know your studio. How did you guys meet? What's the story behind all all of you? Uh, actually, the Wild Gentleman is uh, born because of Chicken Police. So that was our first uh, uh, project together, and uh, we are gathered our team to make this game especially. So. Uh, everyone in the team is very uh, experienced in the, in the uh, game industry, uh, but together as a, as a new team, new uh, development team, this is our first team. So, yeah, basically the right gentleman won because of Chicken Police. Okay, awesome. And the game itself, uh, you know, I've, I've seen some, some concept artwork uh, going from all the way back from you know pixel art styles to what we've seen in the trailer right now. Um, what happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> How did that happen? It's a question we, we get a lot. So, so yeah, the first first idea was a very traditional pixel art adventure game, but uh, we thought that that's not weird enough for us, that's not uh, strange enough for this project uh, especially, so uh, we tried some uh, traditional 2D uh, drawn uh, graphics, but also uh, didn't, didn't really resonate with us uh, quite well, so, uh, and then I just uh, cut a, a rooster's head and placed it to my, to my, my body, uh, and, and it was super strange and weird and odd, but uh, not the best kind of way. And, and we, we were just like, voila, that's, that's what we need. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was very strange in the, uh, the first, first glance, but uh, uh, soon as Tomash uh, saw the, the first uh, uh, pictures I did, I'm uh, not a graphic artist, so it was horrible. Uh, but soon as he succeeded, fell in love with, I think, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of felt the same. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> yeah. when I saw the game. You know, when when Jan came to me and uh, told me that hey, there's this new game coming. You know, that we're gonna publish and it's called Chicken Police. Man. <laughs> okay, that's. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're open-minded, so sure. And then I saw the game and it was like, it's. Uh, I said this yesterday, I think, it's, um, I mean, it's at its core a very serious game, you know, a very serious yeah. story. 
and <clears throat> it's it's I wouldn't say I wouldn't go as far as to say the game is ironic because it's not, uh, but it is it has a certain sense of humor to it, with yeah. you know with the animal people and that that sort of stuff. It's 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 cool. It's I, I really like it personally. It's very unique. The first time I saw it, I. I, I just thought it was hilarious. I need to play this game more because it's exactly my kind of humor. It's just this this yeah. silly nonsensical combination. It's just yeah. And then as as soon as you yeah, and you you kind of go into it and you think oh this you know this is kind of silly but it's funny yeah. so I'll give it a go. And then but you realize that it or rather the that sense of of weirdness kind of it just goes away as you play the game and as you get to know the characters you don't see them as these weird animal human hybrids anymore they're actual characters like it really works it's yeah. crazy it's super yeah, that, that was the, one of the core concepts of the game uh, was this this strange contrast between between the uh, the animals and then the silk silver tone but i don't know uh, the other aspect is, is the very witty dark noir tone uh, we have in the game. And the story itself is a very nature uh, mm -hmm. story. But yeah, uh, the humor is, is, is also a very, very uh, important uh, part of the game because it has its uh, very own absurd, uh, cynical. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to put it in words, but uh, yeah, the humor and uh, in contrast, is that with this story is, is the main main core concept uh, behind behind the, the world of Chicken Police, which is a its own world. So it's not America or Europe. It's, it has its own world uh, called the Violence. And, um, and yeah, so that, that was the main concept to to make this contrast, and uh, and it resonated very well with uh, with us first, and and then the first players who saw the game. It's it's uh, it's very special, yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, you know, talking about those characters, uh, I think uh, you sent us some some footage of how these characters came to life, right? And we're going to show that in a bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can talk a little bit about how you actually, you know, took pictures of these animals and kind of created <laughs> these yeah. these characters from from nothing, basically. That will be that will be very interesting. Yeah, so the, the first test footage for the characters was just some uh, stock images we, we uh, uh, meshed up with, with our own bodies, the photos of our own bodies costumes. And, uh, and it was silly and, and funny, but, but nothing uh, too professional. So we thought that we need to go to the zoos and the wildlife parks uh, ourselves to make, make our own photos of, of the animals and, uh, and also mm, mm, Natasha, the, the fan fatale of uh, the story of the game, is, uh, is a professional model, so, so we have to, to find our characters very, very specific uh, ways, and, but yeah, it's an indie game, so majority of the characters are <laughs> so, us in, in silly costumes and, and with animal hats. But uh, yeah, we, we have a very, very, very uh, talented and professional graphic artist who, who in, in my silly concept, made this totally unique and professional uh, and, and uh, product. They did an amazing job. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. they look lifelike. It's, it's wild. Yeah. Uh, when you say. Uh, when you say Natasha is a professional model, do you mean Natasha the woman or Natasha the cat? Oh, both. Oh, both. Okay. Actually, yeah, actually the, the, the cat who portrayed, uh, portrayed uh, Natasha uh, is a cat named Ursa, and uh, he's a very big celebrity in the cat world. So uh, he has uh, like 10,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, so okay. I need to yeah, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> That's you spend more yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I love cats. Awesome, that is and great. she's amazingly beautiful. Yeah, it's a very know. special cat. Very, yeah. very unique looking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Great job on that for sure. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I also, I also. Hmm? yeah, and also the human model was a, was a very, very talented professional model. So yes. uh, he would be only 
the only the only professional model as big as other uh, then uh, yeah we work with the, the majority of the current yeah so i mean Obviously, you know, the body language is just as important as, as the mm -hmm. pose. Especially, especially I, I believe, especially when the, um, when the face is an animal face, you, you have to work even more through body language, right? Because, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's difficult for humans to... A chicken can't smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, you made that joke as well, yeah. They got a beak, they can't smle. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So body language is, is even more important, probably, yeah. yeah. That's awesome, cool. And um, yeah, similar concept um, or a similar thing happened with uh, with the all the um, environments. Um, as you said earlier, uh, Clawville is not a real place. Obviously, it's a fictional. It's take it takes place in a fictional world. Um, um, yeah, that's. I'm assuming the process is somewhat similar, but also different. Obviously, because you know it's uh, there's more more to to it as well. Yeah. I think all the, the narrative driven games uh, are, are need need to have a, a very specific and and uh, uh, deep big world. So uh, the game, the first first game was uh, uh, created for a graphic novel actually, and then for a real novel, and then uh, came. Uh, to be a video game. So uh, the world of the game was already built. So it has its own history, culture, okay. uh, social issues, racial issues. So all, all these, these things uh, were already built when we started to uh, work on the actual story of the game and the game itself. So yeah, I think it's a, we think it's a, it's a very, very important part for this type of game where you you have to introduce a, a whole new world to the player. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I can already, or you know, both of us actually, we've already, you know, since we're testing the game here at uh, at Handy Games, we've already played through it uh, a couple of times, and um, it there's a lot of background lore to it. It's you know, obviously you have your case that uh, the chicken police is trying to solve, but there's you, you realize that a lot of thought went to, into every scene and every character and everybody has a history and um, some of it you can uncover as you play through the game and that's like that's very interesting to me. Um, I really enjoy these these kinds of uh, hidden lore you could yeah. say um, mm -hmm. that's that's in these in these games it's, yeah. it's, really, it's really lovely yeah I think that's what's what makes a, a game even more interesting if it has a lot of lore behind it. It's just not what you see on the surface directly, but there is so much more behind it. And, yeah. and, it, and it makes characters believable, even yeah. if they're chickens, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it's, oh, okay, so these two guys, they have a history. They've had their, you know, yeah. fair share of troubles in their lives. And that makes them believable as characters, even though, you know, they're as fantastical as you as they could be because they're, yeah. they're chickens so yeah. but um but it works it works that way and that's that's really that's really awesome yeah. what i also yeah. like is that um in this whole universe it there's they have the same issues we have in this world like this well, like there's racial injustice and all those yeah they have the same yeah. issues but it just yeah, uh, the whole world uh, of chicken police is a metaphor uh, for our, our world, but uh, yeah, it, it has its own valuing issues because of the animals and because of the uh, predator versus prey uh, kind of thing. But yeah, in the core, it's it's almost like our world because so many corals, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that makes it even more relatable, I think. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, that's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah ap apart from that though, um, you know, why, why chickens? There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many animals that's, out there. That's the most common question we got. I yeah, I can uh, imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's a strange matter. Uh, actually, there is, a, there is a video on YouTube you can watch right now uh, called Chicken Boys, uh, which is a very, very old video. It 
two real chickens in the backyard who's uh, fighting with uh, some rabbits and, and uh, they're actually like, like some, some very, very witty calves who just uh, uh, fight the crap out of uh, the two bunnies. And I saw that, you know, when I was like, what? what? That's, that's so, so strange and, and, and uh, weird. I had to make, make something out of it. So I always wanted to do some story with animals because I, I very very like this, this kind of uh, anthropomorphic uh, animal uh, stuff and, and also I'm, I'm a big huge fan of the 40s noir movies of the uh, American noirs and the English noir movies. So basically these two things just uh, fuse together and, and that's how, how Chicken Police uh, won. In the first, first, yeah. That's really yeah. interesting. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that is great. Um, another thing that I thought of earlier, um, the the environments, the individual scenes that you visit throughout the game, right? They're they are three dimensional scenes actually, right? And then they're transformed to be two dimensional. How does that work exactly? Yeah, I've, I saw it in the video. That's, um, yeah, we saw it in the video as well. It's uh, yeah. Why, why go the extra mile, right, when you could just come up with a 2D environment? Um, yeah, when, when we started to work on the environment first, uh, it was 2D. It was, um, it was, I think the first concept was actually photos, or, or yeah. made from photos, like the, the characters. But then we realized that we couldn't get different angle of all the objects. So we can't really, can't really make a scene out of just photos because we would be so, uh, you know, yeah, constrained. And uh, because we wanted a view of the environment, we decided that uh, we do uh, 3D. But because we also wanted to make the game very light, so it runs on mobile and uh, mm -hmm. any other uh, platform. We, yeah, it's microwave, microwave. <laughs> so, sure. so we decided that, and because we don't have to move around in the scene, just move yeah. around, yeah. so we decided that we'll uh, pay back all the 3D geometry onto very, very low poly geometry. So it's like 2.5D, basically like movie sets. So it's right. only built from one, one angle, and if you move, Next to it, you see behind the walls. But uh, in the end, it really worked out. I mean, yeah. I mean, it took a few months to. I think there are locations that we did three or four times from scratch. But uh, we, we now have a really good workflow finally. So we are happy with the. Yeah, it really works out with the individual, I guess, the individual 2D parts of the setting and then. You know, those kind of move as you look around the scene that gives this impression of depth that really works very well, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, awesome. What I'm interested mm. in, in knowing is what's, what's your favorite part of developing the game? Is it the first couple of steps where you just come up with ideas, brainstorming, or is it the actual part where you put all the pieces together and then see it all coming to life in, in form of code? And what's your favorite part of developing the game so far? Yeah. <laughs> I have, have a few. Uh, the first scene that, that gets together, first time, you have to look around, it's quite nice. To see. That was the first thing that came to life. Um, that that pretty nice. It was Sony's office. We we used that for the pre-production production. Mm -hmm. um, the first one we didn't make it in the game. We we were we were we have been rewrote all parts of it. But uh, yeah, that that was the best. And also the second one one was. Uh, when we get the first batch of the voiceovers, because yeah. that raised that all, all, these, 
Mid mid magnitude. So um, that that was the best. Uh, yeah, I think for me me as well. And uh, the first one is is this uh, brainstorming section, which is very very um, intriguing every time. But uh, when when I first saw the the first professional footage of song uh, after my my horrible one is I put together. In, uh, Photoshop. So when I first saw the real Sunny, it was it was mind blowing experience. And and yeah, the second one, I think uh, the, the voice voices. And when I first uh, hear Sonny's uh, first lines, whew, it was it was a it was a very very tear jerking <laughs> experience. Actually, when I heard Natasha's first. Dialogue with Sony. Yeah. Uh, that was like, wow, this game is really cool. So uh, I became a fan. But because until then, I just coded all the parts. I was so deep in my, my stuff that I didn't have the look of the game. I didn't have, didn't have the chance to try it and, and play it through. But the first time uh, I saw the dialogue, with Natasha and uh, Sony, that yeah. yeah, the the voice that, acting. That's a very bad part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah, the voice acting is really, uh, it's cr it's crazy good. That just ties it all yeah. together. Yeah, it makes such a huge difference to have this mm -hmm. really good voice acting in this game. It, yeah, it's amazing. I also remember uh, the first time we. We got to play the game with the voice acting. We mm -hmm. were mind blown as well. Yeah. <laughs> it was just perf perfect casting, really. Yeah. It couldn't have been better. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, the, the, the casting was, was, was mind blowing for us as well because uh, we did the voice over with OM Studios and, and uh, they were awesome. And Mark is the, uh, who was our, our voice director, uh, did the casting for us. Uh, majority of the casting and, and uh, yeah it was we were mind blown as well when we first hear the uh, actresses who wanted to play Natasha and Sonny and we, we had, we had, the casting process was super fun as well. We had a lot of options to pick from so mm -hmm. that, it was quite nice. Yeah. Wow. This is the best for us. <laughs> Low key, my favorite voice uh, voice performance is uh, the the characters' names is uh, Phyllis and Roy's. They're oh, the the yeah. head mm, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know if are are the are they in the demo actually? Yeah, yeah. they are. Okay, well well there you go. Actually, the first scene of the demo. So, so yeah, just. Right, there you have it. Go, go and try out the demo, and um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my favorite is yeah. Lance, the, bar, the barkeeper. He's hilarious. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Oh, he's also great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They're all great. Yeah, actually, uh, the guy with the voice for the barkeeper is also Martin. Martin actually. Oh, but, uh, okay, okay. Oh, that's brilliant. But, yeah. That's good. It's Very talented. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's two different, completely yeah. different kind of yeah. style. Completely different everything. characters, yeah. But it works. it works. It's great. Wow. Awesome. That is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess um, one more question that you know we've pre-discussed and you sent us another uh, sort of clip is, where did you draw the inspiration? You know, other games, movies, obviously. You know, the whole film noir um, thing. Um, that would be that would be interesting to know. Yeah, uh, it's a always uh, bad uh, to mention. A few. Um, as as a film noir side, uh, I, I really really like the, the classical forties film noir. So like the Big Sleep, uh, Gilda, Double Indemnity. And also some memoirs like Chinatown or Blade Runner, something like that. And uh, in the game side, it's also very much, <laughs> of course. So, so Brief on Memories is my very, 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 very uh, 
the best game I ever played. It is very good. It is very good. I just, I just love it. We are imagination. And, but also, there are other, other very important games like Snatcher and Police Notes, uh, two early, super early Kojima uh, games I very well like, and they help shape the, the gameplay itself. Um, also, Alien Noir, it's a very, very obvious uh, choice for inspiration. But to mention a not so large uh, game as well, uh, Bioshock is a, is a super important inspiration for, for me as well as I don't know the guys, but yeah, for, for the, the world building, the lower and the world building, uh, it's, it's uh, the original Thief series and Bioshock. It's the two, two main is, it, is it more that, that kind of almost dystopian feel of the game? Is that where that comes yeah, from? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, the whole itself is a, is a very dystopian mm -hmm. uh, city. With, uh, it, it's been like an utopia that yeah. became uh, the opposite, uh, of course, <laughs> because it's a war. Yeah, and uh, also I was in, inspired, uh, inspired by uh, some so then uh, stuff like George Orwell's Animal Farm or Hayao Miyazaki's uh, Ogre or so, it's one of my favorite uh, uh, films of all time. Or like uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox is, is, is also a uh, less and less classic. And, and uh, of course, but uh, the game was already in development when uh, Bojo Horseman uh, aired the first time. But, but yeah, that was a, was a super uh, good feedback that we are in the good way to, to, to make something like that. So, so yeah, that was a super good feedback too. Yeah, yeah. this is a great yeah. Okay. <laughs> That way, so, you yeah. know that there is an audience that would even be interested in that sort of yes. style. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, absolutely. And uh, the game, you know, without spoiling anything, but um, there's a there's a few hints and nods to your inspirations. I feel like in the game that uh, some of yeah, them yeah, picked up. Now that you've yeah. told us, you know what your inspiration was. I'm like I've I've heard that before. I've seen mm -hmm. that before. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I, uh, maybe a hundred Easter eggs uh, from games, from movies, from uh, anywhere I, I get uh, my questions. Yeah. Yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, Again, we've um, we've talked about how you kind of went through um, the different stages of the art style. Um, why did you choose this super realistic kind of kind of theme in the end? Why, yeah, why that? It was a it was a very strange choice, and uh, and it just came like like we hit uh, with a lightning. So so I just uh, tried 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 this. Uh, uh, photo mashup thing, this photo manipulation thing, and and it just uh, resonated super well with the, the, the word it was in my head already. So uh, I already um, wrote some uh, pages for a graphic novel and then a short animation. So the word of chicken bones, the word of the violinist was already in my head pretty strongly, but I don't know how to express that. And uh, and that's why we, we tried uh, different techniques and, and different uh, kind of interpretations. But when, when this, the first uh, image as uh, detected by the real rooster had uh, in, in the place of said uh, a main, I, I, I just know that this is what we need. This is uh, the way we we can express that that uh, contrasty, uh, weird but serious, uh, absurd but but uh, really work really, really, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think we went through the, the movie experience, so it was like a lot of movies. And uh, also from one side, the the characters seem easier to produce this way, so. They are like actors with animal heads, but obviously it made the environments harder to produce, so they match. Uh, 
But, but uh, that's why when we had this group, that's when the, the voice acting came in, like, okay, to make it really feel like a proper Noir movie, we need four voiceovers. So that's when the decision came that that will be the next step, and that uh, brought it to a whole new level. So I think, yeah, it, it was a process, and uh, and we really like it. So yes. We are really happy with the end that's true. I, I, I think it really came together very, very well. Yeah. Um, when I, you know, I've obviously only seen a few glimpses of these older art styles, the pixel art and the cartoonish version and all that. Um, but some, as someone who likes a good, you know, mystery movie or crime movie or, or book even, uh, I feel like this this art style that you went for in the end is a lot more approachable because it's a lot, I take it a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Of course, you could tell the same story uh, in a pixel art style, but it's it is not the same. Yeah. So, yeah. So I feel like I feel like that was a very good choice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it would be a lot harder to get the whole atmosphere across. Yes. In in just pixel like bigger pixels. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think yeah, you did the right choice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, once you once you hear them, uh, you can engage that in that second. So yes, seeing yeah. a chicken head on top of a human body is is, is creepy as hell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> once they talk, once they talk to each other, and yeah, yeah, I I think mm -hmm. this this is a game you need to play. Yeah, it's, it sounds like. You can play the demo for three years. Really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one year ago in, uh, in Gamescom, uh, everyone sat down and, and uh, put on their headphones. It was just like, like uh, pulled, pulled in this world immediately as, as uh, the, the sound, the music. The yeah. voice of work came together. So yeah, if you just saw a picture of chicken police with this, this uh, creepy weird stuff, mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh, hard, hard to sell. Hard, hard to sell, yeah. And also the, the black and white aesthetic of the game is also a very risky move, was a very risky move mm -hmm. to make, but uh, we think that was a good choice yes. uh, for, for this game. Because because of the film noir aesthetic, uh, obviously, but also I think for for this uh, contrast I, I mentioned earlier, uh, to make it more serious than it looks uh, at first glance, we have to do black and white. So it definitely it's fits. Anyway, so. Yeah, it definitely fits. It fits with the whole, you know. I mean, again, the 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 world is fictitious. It's not you know set in a real it's not a real setting, but it is, you know, um, it takes inspiration from, you know, the sort of 1940s, 50s uh, area. Um, you know, you, you see that um, in the trailer when you play the demo already, you know, like the sort of technology they use and all that kind of stuff. The cars you know, they drive and all that. Exactly, the cars and all that, and the fashion the as well. <laughs> uh, the music, also, by the way, amazing music. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Um, so so and and that I think really fits this film noir theme and the and the whole black and white um, design choice. I think that's uh, that really works uh, well together. Um, yeah, the music. I mean, I regularly get the the Natasha song stuck in my head. Yeah. It's just a beautiful song. It's, really. It is really good. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a totally unique song. Maybe it works for the game. So all the lyrics, all the music. So yeah, that's that's a, have, have a very very good place in our hearts. I think that that Natasha song. It was a it was a big milestone for her whole project. That we can imagine. It was a yeah. yeah. It was a very memorable. Is it? Thing. Is it the? Is it Natasha's voice actress who sang the song, or is it somebody else? No, no, it, it was somebody else. When we did the song, we we didn't have have Natasha's. Okay. Uh, also, we didn't know that uh, the game will be lost at that point. Okay. So, 
The, the first concept was just to voice uh, Sony's narration, uh, as like the uh, classic film noir movies, when you heard this uh, uh, detective narration. But, but uh, on, I think uh, when we have our first uh, exhibition, um, we have, have very, um, very much uh, feedback on that we need to do the voice because uh, just the picture um, didn't didn't make the characters uh, believable uh, enough, and uh, and this whole animal thing more creepy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So so yeah yeah as as you said actually uh, we needed to do the voices to feel the characters as as real people as real human uh, people. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a very, very big step for the, for the project. Yeah. And we decided to do the full voiceover because it has uh, more than eight hours uh, of, of voice titles. So it's a super big uh, thing to do. Uh, big RPG games, uh, RPG games uh, used to do this kind of uh, voiceover mm -hmm. amount. So, uh, it is yeah. it's very interesting. It was a super big thing and a super risky thing also. But uh, first, when we hear the first uh, footage of the characters, yeah. we were so. Yeah, as you said earlier, the, the second you start uh, hearing them talk, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm in it. It's, I'm sold. Yeah. It's, uh, no it's, going it's that back easy. Now. Yeah, it's that easy. It really works. It really works well. It's it's weird. It's only weird for for a few seconds when you start up the game for yeah. the first time, and but you're immediately in it when when they start speaking. It's, yeah, it's great. Magic. It is. It is kind of magic. Yeah, it is almost that sort of movie magic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's really cool. It's also, you know, obviously the theme being very mature. Um, this is kind of a weird uh, comparison, but it sort of takes you back to um, this childlike feeling of when you when you see like a kids show with you know with animals as the main characters, and you're like, oh, you know, the kids are all over it and they're yeah, super into it. It's all it's kind of like that, but for you know, for grown ups, I guess, for adults. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I, I think. We are all big kids in this in, in this yeah. uh, company. So in this industry. <laughs> in this industry as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so we made the game for ourselves <laughs> a little. Of course. I think this is the best, the best approach to make the game for yourself. Yes. Make something that you would enjoy. Yes. Make something yeah. and play. Yeah. And then if you have enough passion then it, it should work. Well, yes, the English uh, company, that is our main uh, oh. goal. Yeah. yeah, we all agree on the, this, that we, we should make games that, that, are, that meet our expectations. Our, our, our yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's art at its core, I guess. Um, all, video games are an, a form of art, I would say. Yeah. And yeah, um, so. obviously with video games, uh, it's it's a bit... You know, you can't just make art for art's sake in in this uh, industry because yeah. you know there's always it, there's so many expenses that go into it. Like you know, I mean, how are you going to get eight hours worth of professional uh, voiceovers? You know, that's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but still, it is it is a form of art at the end of the day, and um, yeah. and the most important thing about art is that. The artists or the artists themselves, um, you know, are really behind their project. And it's, you know, mm -hmm. that's why yeah. that's why so many, yeah, smaller projects are are so much more authentic. I would say, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, yeah, actually, we never wanted to make an artistic game. Uh, it just came to be yeah. in this in this other art. So we just want to make a good game, uh, and especially, especially that that we never saw it. Uh, and yeah, the the art side is a is a very strange topic, so I, I don't, don't want to go there. But yeah, I think we achieved some something like uh, 
you could call video game art or artistic yeah. video game, but uh, that that was not the goal in the first place. We just want to make that great game, yeah. special game, and I think we, we managed to do that. But yeah, I think so too. I yeah, think so I too, agree. for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, the story itself. You know, even if it even if it were you know uh, if if it were a movie and just regular uh, actors playing the characters, it would still be a very good story, a very interesting, unique story. Yeah. So even even then, you know, take away all the other special stuff, it's still special. So you know, oh. really really well done from my end. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Awesome. Um, well, I think um, you know if there's anything more you want to tell us about yourselves uh, about the game. Feel free. I think the best you could tell is that, that the play the demo, play the free demo, yes. because that's, that speaks, that speaks for itself, that speaks yeah. anything. Yeah, so, definitely. I, I agree. Playing the demo will tell you so much more about the game and what it feels like than we could ever explain. It, does, yeah. it doesn't work Absolutely. that way. Yeah. 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 yeah, you have to feel it. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you really I have think, to experience it, yeah. In genre, you really have to play. I mean, uh, the, the screenshot or trailers doesn't do justice, really, because you have to engage in yes. the game to understand what is it about and uh, understand the whole concept of it. Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think also the length of the demo is it's good, so by the end you, you know if you like it or not. Yes. Not, I think not so. wasting too much time. For, for <laughs> it's, not a, it's definitely not a waste of time, though. No. No, no, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can only recommend myself. Uh, go, go over to Steam, check out the demo. Yeah. It, is, it is the way to go. And um, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow with some more chicken police. Um, mm -hmm. We've got some fun things planned, you know, not, to, not giving anything away, but uh, stay tuned. There's more coming. And um, yeah, thank you everybody for being here. We'll have a short break and then up next will be Endling. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that thank for you. a bit. And uh, thank you guys. Thank Take you. care. Bye. See you soon. Play the demo! Play the demo on Steam! Demo. Right now! <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. Take Thanks. care. Bye. <laughs>
Hey. Hi, friends. <laughs> We're back. Uh, it's Endling time. Last segment of the day. Last but not least. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Um, I mean, you've seen the trailer. You may already know kind of what's up. Uh, Endling is a very special game, and we are joined tonight by the developers themselves from Hero Beat Studios. Give a warm welcome, and uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi. Sure. Hello. hello. Hi. I can start? Yeah, okay. So, hello, everyone. I'm Pablo. I'm the art director of Hirobit. And also co founder of Hirobit. Co founder of Hirobit. <laughs> Small detail. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm Javi. I'm a programmer and also the other co founder. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm Rob, I'm one of the game designers of Hirobit Studios, and I'm not one of the co-founders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not everyone can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, I think we haven't introduced ourselves. We were on stream the whole day, but... Um, you may have seen <laughs> us before, yes, yeah. yes. But I'm, I'm Philip, I'm one of the producers on the game. Yes, and I'm Consti, I work uh, at, Q at the QA department at Handy Games. So, you know, I'm... I'm one of the people who have already played Endling quite a bit. <laughs> I, know, I, I know my way around. Um, I'm not going to be playing tonight, though. Philip will be playing. Uh, but you already, you, you also know the game very well at yeah, this I've point. Yeah, I've played so, yeah. it a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. And yeah, uh, so um, it's like it's not just you free uh, making the game. So. Um, we have a photo here, so this is the HeroBeat logo. So it's HeroBeat Studios, and uh, this is a photo. I'm not sure you can see it right now, I think, but <laughs> uh, you can see some of the members of the beginning of a project. Yeah, mm -hmm. including the foxes. Uh, <laughs> foxes are the most important members of yeah. the team, I guess. <laughs> but the team yeah. has since grown, so... Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, when we started this project, it was uh, just Paolo and me. Uh, then we contact uh, some former colleagues from our previous previous jobs. Uh, we have been working in video games for many years, so we knew many many people, and they were super experienced and super cool people. Um, they they joined us. Um, that's how, how we started. Um, uh, we get together, um, started working on a very early prototype of the game. Um, and then we we got um, well we, we joined an incubator program called Game BCN in Barcelona, Spain. They were super nice. They helped us during the first months of development. Um, that's how we started the conception phase of the project. A bit of the, project, a bit of the pre production um, and the start. The, the I mean the team uh, keep growing up until now that we are uh, 21 people in the team. Um, we are super happy. Uh, <laughs> everyone is super, super nice, uh, super experienced. Uh, we we really are very, um, like, uh, we we are very um, always. Um, had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to do? Well, we are very happy of the of the team uh, that we managed mm -hmm. together. Uh, and, yeah. So it it started with the uh, like. I think you having the idea and uh, and telling Pablo. Uh, so, what is the idea of the game and how how uh, what, what is Endling? So maybe you can explain a bit. Well, it has evolved a lot since the very first idea. Uh, we knew we wanted to do some um, game where we could deliver a very strong message, uh, something emotional uh, that could raise awareness. That that was. Mm -hmm. That's a thing that has never changed in the project. Although uh, the game in the very beginning was very linear, uh, and for different design uh, uh, purposes, we decided to switch it to what it's, it's for right now, which is an open world. Um, and yeah, uh, we I, I met Pablo in a in a coffee, and I I wanted to uh, to make a logo for the game. And when I was pitching him the idea, he told me like, hey. Yeah, I, I love the, the idea, so I told him, let's do it, let's make uh, this thing, and here we are. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Yeah, it's great. Uh, I think we could already start the demo, right? Um, yeah, sure. Go in and then continue sure. talking about it. Anytime um, we can we can play the demo that, by the way, you guys out there watching can play yourselves right now. If you, yes. uh, if you check Steam, uh, you can play the free demo for a limited time only right yes. now. All right. Yes. Yep. So, sure thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while. <laughs> Last minute no, update. We're, we're doing the game. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Can you see the screen already? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Oh. Okay. okay. And away we go. So yeah, now we are in the game. <coughs> I'll pick up a controller. It's an it's an early version. That's, that's something we have to say. Like. Uh, it's, it's far from finished. Yes, it's a work in progress. But you sure. can already see pretty well what what the game is about. Change the volume a little bit. Okay. Make this sort of music. <laughs> yeah, mostly music. Yes, so, that's like way this. better. Let's go. Okay, go to half. Yep, awesome. Okay, so we are now like directly in the <laughs> in the shelter in the main menu already, and just start here. So guys, just want to mention that this is not the beginning of the the game. Mm -hmm. In the final game, uh, you you start being the so Enling. Enling is uh, an English word which means is the name that is given to the last uh, individual of the species before it gets extinct. You start the game as these mother folks, and you are pregnant. So soon enough, you will have these four little uh, cubs that will uh, follow you during all the adventure, mm -hmm. and they represent your lives. So there is permadeath. If the four of them die, then it's a game over. So uh, we are currently at the beginning of the demo, but it's already uh, more than a few minutes into the game. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. but it's not very far into the game. No, no, no. So we we, we skipped the, the introduction and tutorial mm -hmm. steps. Uh, sort there. of, yeah. So yeah, the shelter is some something that we always come back to. Uh, in the beginning, I think they can't leave it, so I have to leave them now on my own. I mean, I, what can you say? Uh, it looks beautiful already. Um, it's this very unique art style that um, it's, it looks, on the one hand, very realistic, but then on the other hand, it's very artistic as well. How did that happen? Like, what, how did you choose your art style for the game? Well, uh, well I, I'm, uh, I have a background on illustration and graphic design, mm -hmm. so I'm a 2D artist, mm -hmm. so it's for me a challenge to, to get this uh, language of 2D um, mm -hmm. and put it on a 3D environment. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is to, to simplify shapes and have these nice silhouettes with contrast and, and get this feeling of 2D. Yeah. And we are using these bright colors to get something nice to see and cute, but at the end the game is uh, it has a sad story, but yes. it's something that we use to to catch you know the the people even pe uh, even people who is not used to to play games. So we we try to provide something beautiful to to catch them. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think I see that. What's what's really nice is it. Like I know also the concept art of the game and, and mm -hmm. the 3D looks very much like a concept art. We have this like cell shaded style, I guess, but not <laughs> cell shading. In not, not, not exactly, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of that direction. Yeah. 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 Like it's, uh, when people say cell shading, they also mean sometimes these outlines and that stuff. Yeah. But mm -hmm. cell shading, I mean the shading 
of these um, of these areas of these polygons, like the fox itself, like yes. if it was realistically shaded, there would be more than two colors uh, yeah. in, in, exactly. in the orange, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Yes. And, and like one of, one of the most important things is that we have a like a super talented environment team uh, that is doing all the environments, and of course, uh, Pablo's art is like super uh, detailed and beautiful, mm -hmm. but they also like transfer it to the to the game, to the environments. I think they, they did a, real, a really good job. And yeah, I think it's uh, a conjoint effort for all the artists on the team to like yeah. recreate these amazing sceneries and yeah. For sure, yeah. Also, all the 3D models are um, modeled in a very specific way. So we use the topology to create different uh, shadows that will fit this uh, cartoony style. Um, that combined with the, with the game cameras, uh, remember this is a side scrolling game, you can only move left and right, mm -hmm. uh, give us a lot of um, precision or, or we can exactly show what we want and that helps to bring this to uh, the style to the game. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. So we have now um, like uh, finished the first day. Um, and of now, the demo. Of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or night, because yeah, like, it's first night, you're always out at night, but yes. now it gets interesting. So what happens here? It's a trap. Oh no, don't do it. I imagine this cutscene is sort of one of the ways that you introduce storylines to the game, right? Uh, was that the main intention behind it? Yes, we have a, a super nice uh, narrative designer in the team. He's developing a lot of um, like different events happening in this world. Uh, one of them is the this, this scene, the, one of your caps gets cleaned up, mm -hmm. so you have to, to track the cap. And it works as a connection uh, to all the narrative. Um, so your main goal here is to uh, feed your cap so that you don't starve to die, but at the same time you have to track your, your missing cap. Yeah, so basically like the whole narrative of the missing cap is like uh, some kind of backstory that ties the game together yes. and basically pushes you to advance. And yeah, not only survive, but also you want to retrieve your kidnapped cap. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. And like we saw this, this uh, the sense mechanic in, in, in the first night um, where I yeah. was uh, looking for food and now it's used differently. Maybe you can talk a bit about that. Yeah, exactly. Like um, the, the, the sensing mechanic, like, uh, of course, we, we wanted to, like one of the pillars of the game is that the gameplay needs to be realistic because in the end, you're, you're just a fox uh, in this uh, big and vast world. But at the same time, like foxes have some really amazing and wonderful um, skills, even in real life. And uh, what we try to achieve here with the sensing mechanic is the ability of the fox to not only like track prey, which is like their natural um, skill to do, but also like to track the scent of, uh, in this case, uh, the missing cup and the ability to recreate what is what would have happened just moments ago uh, is going to be really helpful for us to like understand what's going on with the with the story. Yeah, because like the fox doesn't talk or read, so mm. <laughs> like that's the way to 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 get what the world or what's happened in the world that yes. you can convey that. Yeah, well, it's very important to keep the game authentic. Uh, we want to add like uh, strong sci-fi elements, just a little bit because we're using a close future. Mm -hmm. uh, but we think it's very important that the player doesn't get disconnected from from the reality uh, through having realistic animations and realistic skills for the, the mother fox, fox and the, the cubs. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you will never see the fox like pulling a lever or whatever, which yeah. is something that makes the sign very easy, but uh, Rob and the team, the sign team has to be really creative to, to get uh, the best um, gameplay from this. Yeah, and uh, besides this, um, like following the story elements, the main gameplay, I think, is just finding food for your cups, right? 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, about survival uh, in this world. Exactly. Like at, it, at its core, Endling is just a survival game. Mm -hmm. um, like we feel like that's the the core mechanic of the game is just keeping your cops alive. Mm -hmm. That needs to be reflected in every like gameplay aspect of the game. It's like the most important part. But not only do you keep them alive, you also not so much in the demo, but uh, as the game progresses, you will teach them necessary skills for survival and all that, right? Yeah, for the purposes of the demo, we decided to give them some skills. Uh, yes. But, uh, this is a hack for the demo. In the final game, you will have to teach them uh, different things. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be uh, learned just because they grow up, but some others will be learned through what we call vital experiences that mm -hmm. are like uh, very difficult moments for them and there they will learn uh, something that will help you to get different prey or different food sources. Yeah, now it, it gets a lot more interesting now that they are out of the shelter and are following yes. me around. So. Yeah, the, um, the game uh, unfolds and the game mechanics evolve as you keep playing because the, the caps will be growing with you. Uh, so you can use their own new skills and things that uh, you couldn't do before uh, you will be able to do it later and you can come back to, to the areas where, where you have already been and discover things that you couldn't do. But at the same time you also have to protect them more because you know in the in the shelter they were more or less safe I guess uh, but now you know that they're out. Yes, they are very vulnerable. Um, we have to not only feed them, but also protect them from different enemies. As you see, the, there is uh, some uh, environmental storytelling here. Uh, we are in this uh, in this map, in this first level, we are showing the pollution of the rivers. All the environment will be degraded and it will become polluted. Uh, the river, for instance, you could uh, fish there before, but eventually all the fishes will be there. Uh, then, sorry, um, you will be forced, or you will have to, to keep moving and exploring different areas to get food. So, over time, the whole environment will sort of change as well, right? Yeah. Mm. And and basically, what what we want to achieve is that each part of the game uh, transmits and represents uh, like big, strong environmental issues that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a society. So in this case, for example, as you can see, uh, when you started the game, the river was cool and it's getting more and more polluted and yeah. it's heavy. Uh, it's, your... Yeah, there's something in here, but it, it still looks okay-ish. <laughs> oh no. This cup here. Doesn't want yeah, to swim. <laughs> he doesn't know how to swim, so you have to carry him around. With time, they will develop different personalities, so you will be able to differentiate them not only because of their skin, but also because of the skills they got and, the, yeah. and how they behave. Oh, but I think there was a fish in, in the river, so I'll get Yeah, at this point, there's probably still some, some fish in the, ah, in the river. Yeah. Ah, no, I, 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 I triggered him. got away, yeah. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> angry. <laughs> Don't forget your cub. No, 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 I just wanted to get oh, okay. a bit away to, okay. to let the fish calm down. Okay, okay. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can catch him. <laughs> oh. Fishy, 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 keep calm. Um, yeah. So at the beginning you said the cubs kind of act as your lives, quote unquote. Um, so um, they can die during the course of the game. Um, how, in what way does that impact the gameplay when, when one of the cubs dies? Well, so, like, as we said, uh, each cub will have, like, uh, specific skills and personalities. Mm -hmm. And not only, like, they, they represent your lives, which is, like, uh, if one of them dies, they, they die forever. So there's mm -hmm. no coming back from that. But also, like, um, it will be more and more difficult for you to, like, um, use their skills to find food because I see if like if you have three cups it's easier to you can use three skills or more um to navigate the map and find food but each one of them that dies is like less skills for you mm -hmm. so you start again um the intention is that they become 
very useful tools for you to survive. Mm -hmm. Not only like something that you have to carry around all the time. Okay. I think you can see it here. They could become useful. Oh. Not really. <laughs> nothing, nothing to find here. Maybe there's nothing there. But as you can see, like the night is ending and it's getting more mm -hmm. and more clear. Uh, which means that in a world like ending, um, humans start appearing. And humans are like. Oh, they, I missed a trap. Oh, into a trap. <laughs> <laughs> they are difficult to see sometimes. You you didn't miss the first one. No, as, yeah. but I was slow because I picked up something before. So if I just run through the stuff, yeah. uh, it could yeah, be yeah. not the best idea. I should pay attention where I'm going. <laughs> so basically now, as I was saying, like the night is ending, yes. and you will notice that um, some humans will start up being, and like, humans in Endling are deadly. Um, there's no way, like, in reality, a mother fox can, um, like, withstand <laughs> the attack of a uh, human. Mm -hmm. So in the end, the, the clever thing is just always to run away from humans. To limp away, like you can see here. Exactly. It's really good yes, animation. Yes, yeah. uh, I try to run, but it's not working anymore. <laughs> this trap is not, not good for me. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we choose uh, fox. Uh, it's like... Um, it's very skilled, foxes are very skilled, but also are vulnerable to many different enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, we think they are in a very cool position to create some gameplay from, from this. Yes. And I think it's also like, uh, it's part of the message that you chose a fox, right? Um. Yeah. Yes, um, foxes are very adapt adaptable animals. Uh, right now, they are, of course, not in danger. Um, we have plenty of, of foxes on, even in close to, to, to cities. Uh, but we are representing here a future where uh, maybe even this kind of creature can be uh, in danger. Mm -hmm. um, we have made, like our research of what could be happening in the following 50 to 100 years uh, if we don't change our, consum our consumption habits. Um, it's very discouraging. So, um, yes, we are trying to represent it here. We are not like um, trying to teach anything to players. We are just are, um, putting here um, uh, like a preoccupation we have. Uh, yeah, the, um, the environment. Mm -hmm. And everyone can take their own conclusion on, on this, what's happening on this part. Yeah, so it's like you're putting them in, in your vision of, of a future, what the future could be for, uh, from, the, like, from the view of a fox. Uh, and <laughs> you can yeah, draw your own conclusions. Yeah, as you can see here, like, there's uh, other animals in the world. Uh, they are less and less, uh, like, uh, the world is less and less populated by animals. Mm -hmm. You can see, like, not all of them are as lucky as you to be alive. Like, yes. for example, deer. That... But one good thing is here: no cars on the street anymore. <laughs> it's pretty safe. I think that's the one thing that currently kills most foxes, I guess, yeah. is crossing the street. But Probably. hey, the street is <laughs> my playground. Yay! No road safety. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe one thing that's or that I feel like is worth mentioning. Um, we kind of already see that in the demo, um, the humans themselves, which are at least in the demo, all of them are sort of your enemies. But um, if we take a closer look at the background story, we realize that not only the animals but also the people are suffering. Yes, we are not trying to put the, the humans as enemies but survivors as you are yes uh, you can find here many different animals some of them will be friendly some others will be uh, dangerous for you but at the end of the day they are just trying to survive as you are uh, in need you are mm -hmm. killing fish and killing uh, rabbits mice whatever uh, everybody is trying to survive in this environment and mm -hmm. that doesn't make them uh, like the, the enemies yeah. the, the evil evil um, mm -hmm. so so yeah, that happens. It happens the same with the humans. Uh, we as society may uh, reach a point where uh, taking care of the environment is not so important because we just we just have to survive there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's also like uh, ind indirect ways that uh, the humans are, are um, causing issues for a fox. Like, I'm not sure if eating trash is the best idea. Yeah, exactly. And like, there you go. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now you said it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, it takes a long time. <laughs> and you now have a nice memory to carry home. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, you, you can see here one of the abilities of the caps. Yeah. In this case, here's a very brave cap that <laughs> wanted to jump for the end. Oh, great yeah, so. one. So in this case, if that cub had died earlier, we wouldn't be able to get that egg and that food. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it gets much harder to, to get all the food sources if, if you have not uh, all the, your cubs. Yeah. I don't see it. Where is it's it? a bit. That's because of the the bright lights. It's right there with the others. Uh, okay, but I, now I have to try. <laughs> I which think one I is. think you got the. No, no, no I don't. <laughs> right one. Never mind. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, our screen is a bit dark here. <laughs> well, it's 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 not the screen. It's the lights here in the, <laughs> in the studio that are very bright, <laughs> mostly. But yeah. Um, oh, and it's already getting day again. It is. It is getting. Oh. Yeah. So no matter if the humans are truly evil or just in a, in a bad condition, it's, uh, it doesn't matter, we should just avoid them. We I should guess. avoid them in this case, yes. <laughs> As a fox. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you can find some food close to them, but... Um, maybe yeah. kind of another topic. Uh, what Development, like what parts of the game so far have been the most challenging for you? That's a really good question. Um, I think um, one of the, I think I mentioned it before, uh, the game started being like super linear. Uh, then we realized that in a side scrolling game, if you make it linear, whatever thing, whatever you left uh, behind, uh, you forget about that because you will never see it again. So we realized that it, it will be very, I mean, indeed it's very important to make the player uh, get attached to, to the environment. So now your your shelter is your your home, um, and it's a place where you feel. What's up? <laughs> oh no! Oh. Wow. Yeah, and you will find like not all animals are kind. Nope. Like and previously, saw, this time I saw a trap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something. But uh, yeah. Maybe not... three. But, uh, I, I was too greedy, wanted to do something on the, on the last parts of the yeah. day. It's a very so, sad moment. I, I think you have lost one of your skills, not only not only a cup, so... So, I'm yeah. not sure which one cup I, I lost, I didn't pay I'm attention sure. to, uh, to, to the colors. I think it would be best to go back, but I, I, I yeah, want to exactly. see what, what happens, really, if, if there are some dangers right now. But yeah, uh, probably best to go back, right? <laughs> oh, but I have uh, no food. So, so. More food. It's always good. At least uh, the greediness paid off in that way, but I'm not close <laughs> to starving. I have well, mouth less to feed. Uh, <clears throat> so, imagine this uh, uh, game well, is just a beginning of the adventure. Uh, from now on, you will have to survive only with two caps. That yeah. will make it harder for you. Um, but you have to be very careful oh. with your cap. You have to take I think care there's of them. something that uh, I just want to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this exactly. is blocked off, and I probably shouldn't go there. Uh, caps, stay safe. Stay <laughs> close to me. <laughs> so that's why it's a good idea to, to go back to the shelter. Yeah, exactly. To not run and into their arms. You will find that each day that passes, like, uh, not only the environment gets worse, but also like humans, they start appearing more and more. Mm -hmm. So like, this, this demo currently has this area that we, uh, we saw now, not most of, but like huge parts of. Um, but the final game will be bigger, right? Um, oh, I should oh, yeah. go there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, like what amount does we, uh, does we explain? exploration take in the game later so um, I think there will be like it's not 
you will not stay in this shelter forever. And I think it's it's one of the main goals of a game, like to find safety, right? Yes, you have to keep moving, uh, finding new shelters. Every shelter will be in the middle of a different uh, area representing not, not only, I mean, it will represent a different environmental issue, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, there is a shelter in the middle of the forest, and then you think you are super safe there because there is a lot of food and a lot of uh, animals there, uh, but then humans come and you have to keep moving again. You can always go back to the previous areas, so the, the wall is always expanding. And that, that's very important because uh, there are some skills of your caps that you will be able to learn later in the game and will be useful here in this, in the very mm -hmm. beginning. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, like, for example, here, as we can see, this tunnel is closed. But maybe at some point, it will open and unlock a new area. Mm -hmm. So, like, exploration in Endling is uh, super key to like find new ways to enter new areas and find new for mm -hmm. new sort of food. And I think it's also um, that uh, yeah, we already saw the pollution of of the river. That that also like other things change the world. Like I think the tower also broke down. That was above yeah. our um, above our shelter. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, yeah, like, I think there will also be seasons, if I'm correct. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> the environment will change in many different ways. So you will be, uh, I mean, you will, you will um, notice how it has changed, not only because of the evolution, but also because of the weather or mm -hmm. uh, different um, environment things. And I'll, all these other areas, like, uh, do they play basically with the same? Is it like just like like here, finding the different food sources and avoiding some of the traps, or will there be like completely different obstacles there? Uh, like um, after like after this uh, river area, um, the world expands uh, so much. Um, you will get to travel to like forests, uh, factories, and whatnot. And of course, you will find different dangers there and uh, different ways to survive, uh, like also different shelters, uh, which represent safety. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was exploring. There you go. <laughs> you have different strategies depending on the area you are. For instance, uh, when you are close to humans in a factory or or. Uh, Anytime close to humans, you have to be very, very sneaky and use stealth. Foxes are very good at that, so... Mm -hmm. So it becomes something. like more more of a stealth game even in those mm -hmm. things. Not yeah. just when it's getting day, but like during during the night also, There's it's more dangerous in those areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, uh, you will be forced to live in areas much more populated by humans, because in the end you're running out of safe places. So yeah, you'll have to learn how to avoid them and sneak past them. Um, we've seen uh, that uh, trap badger earlier, so um, and you know I, we kind of helped him, and he didn't attack us in return. So I'm assuming not all. Oh no! Uh oh! Oh no! Oh, oh, no. oh no. no! This isn't good. This is not good at all. Oh, oh, oh. oh no! Okay, I think I, I scared him off. <laughs> oh, that was really close. <laughs> that was a really dense timing. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, yeah, what I was about to say, um, <laughs> I'm assuming not all animals are enemies in this game or prey because the badger was neither right now. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, there are um, some situations where you will be able to take different decisions, like helping this badger or um, letting him die. That will affect how the story develops. Uh, so at the end, you may have even different endings, endings, not endings, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on the decisions you took. Yeah. yeah. In the end, you have different endings. Or you play <laughs> the last owl because you, <laughs> the last mouse yeah. because you killed all the others. Yeah. <laughs> Right. 
Right six. Yeah, there's the tower that came yeah, that down. Collapsed. I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't. I think I didn't went this way because there were humans. Right. Yeah. Oh, now I have two different sends. One leads me on, and one to the right. So exactly. I have to decide where to go first. Let's let's follow. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, there's another human. So it's they are interested still in the tower. So <laughs> maybe not go there. Let's yeah. just try what's happening if I go there. Okay, um, let's talk about music a little bit. Uh, <laughs> how did you, who came up with the with the soundtrack, and or how did you come up with it? Uh, well, we have a super awesome um, composer for the ending soundtrack. Mm -hmm. He's a very talented composer. Um, oh, and that's well, nice. uh, he came with this idea for for uh, for ending um, where. The, the music will be adapting to many situations, like mm -hmm. uh, each one of the caps is represented by one instrument. So as the um, as you lose them, you will feel how the, um, the music evolves with, with them. Wow, okay. That's deep. Uh, we think it's, um, well, uh, Foxes cannot, cannot rip. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. cannot rip. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, music is something uh, that we want to use to represent the, the different emotions. Also, animals can be very perceptive to different sounds and, and music. So yeah, uh, that that's the way we want to the, the folks to communicate to communicate with the environment and with the player. That's a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. I didn't I, I didn't realize it so far, but it, yeah, now that you said it. That's I think the sound design is also idea. great uh, because, like in these descent mechanics, where you have only these pictures, these these cloudy pictures mm -hmm. of what happened. The sound tells the story of what what happened yes. there. Exactly. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you can see that, like the badger that you previously saved, yes. is now has now offered you food because he remember or she remembers you. Uh, hey, you're my friend. The badger is actually a sheep, but. Uh, <laughs> You would do well not to push him because, in the end, he's only, she is also trying to survive. Yes. But yeah, it's kind of a weird relationship <laughs> between a fox and a badger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone sure. on their own, but not entirely. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One interesting fact is that uh, badgers and foxes uh, usually share a shelter. Exactly. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that either. You did your research. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And here we have yes. now, because like on this day we are now following a new, uh, new scent of our missing cup, right? Mm -hmm. So, exactly. uh, so it's a bit hard to see sometimes, but I, I think there was like the fox still trapped in in, in, the in cage. this cage, yeah. And the guy that caught the the cup uh, was talking to this this uh, other guy. Yeah. So. Will it be clear what happened there, or will it stay mysteriously, yeah. or is it like... Yeah. We're working on different ways to make it clear. <laughs> you will need to push forward and see what's next in the story. Mm -hmm. So now we found the fishing rod. So we are still discussing. So, uh, what my read-on is... Uh, is that the guy um, has caught the cup, not like, I don't know, like to trade it. But this yeah. other guy doesn't want to trade. <laughs> yeah, but we so don't it, know what yet it looks like, yeah. what they are trading it for. Exactly. Because in the end, like, in a world like Endling, you can imagine that a fox cup can be like a really valuable asset yes. to exchange stuff for. Mm -hmm. The fur could make uh, maybe a, a nice hat. <laughs> yeah, the fur, I mean, just for food, whatever, yeah. Everybody's desperate. Exactly, yeah. 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 Like, here in the demo, it's, it's, the demo is actually a lie, because you are not the last fox. You are one of five. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> the, like you said in the uh, uh, beginning, that's not the beginning of the game. 
like in the beginning, you're still the pregnant fox. So yes, in so that you are case, the last you are fox. The last fox. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> so, exactly. uh, so it is very val valuable, I guess, to get one of the last. Oh, I like that some of the key elements are highlighted. So he's carrying something now, and the other guy looked upset. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh, the deal didn't work and he stole what he needed and and as you can see here it's like full bright day now so yeah maybe the best option is to go back but there's still food here <laughs> and I was. like i i think i i played the food game pretty well oh <laughs> close very close <laughs> um, so i don't really need it but i'll take it there's a human coming yeah uh, I've dealt with humans before. <laughs> Can't. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> I didn't want to bounce. I wanted to press the bark button, but I don't remember which it was. No, no. I think it's X. Was it X? No, X is picking someone. B then. Yeah, there you B. go. <laughs> want to bark at him? <laughs> uh, that's not very threatening. <laughs> sure. Maybe, maybe another day. <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> yeah, if you're close to, to people, then it gets really, yeah. really scary. And yeah. uh, so. it's very dynamic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's the ending. That's the oh, ending of, of the demo. That's the ending <laughs> of the demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope <laughs> that we can get a better ending in, Hopefully, in yeah. the full game. Hopefully. I hope it's not the end here. No. Depends on how bad you play, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it was my fault, you know what I mean? Uh, he said it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, th I mean, this was intended for the demo, you know? But, exactly. Um, very, uh... Very sh shocking ending. Very shocking cliffhanger type um, ending. Yeah, to to uh, yeah to to uh, I think that That's also underlines goes. what's on the line, right? Yes, like it's about survival and yes. yeah. And maybe to <laughs> clarify, um, obviously this is the ending of the demo. This is not how the game is supposed to end. But um, we only talked about your cups dying, but the mother fox can die as well, um, actually. And that is that also consecutively means that your cups won't be able to survive without your guidance, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like maybe we we it, it wasn't shown in the demo, but actually if, if you push humans too hard, like in the end you cannot face a human. So yes. who knows? Maybe the consequences are that he just gets pissed off and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I should not have uh, like tried to fight this one guy <laughs> twice. <laughs> that I no. That that got me in the trap. Uh, that so. was a very close call. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Definitely not something I would want to do. Yeah. And yeah, and if it gets it's getting day, then it's the best thing to go back to the shelter, even even if you are low on food. And I think we didn't see it now because I found a lot of food. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are not finding enough food, then you are then it's it's a hard decision to make going yeah. back to the shelter or search for more because yeah. then you are. Yeah. To find the balance, then you yeah. know, take, do you take the risk? Is it worth taking the risk? Maybe you know, maybe you have to, because if you run low on food, you will definitely lose a cub as well. So maybe it is worth risking, um, you know, a fight or an encounter to find more food. Yeah, but uh, right. yeah, it's a really difficult choice to make. And I think that's exactly um, like these, these these game design uh, things that that influence like how you experience the game that's exactly what what, what makes the point of, of your message in the game how hard it will be um, mm -hmm. for for these animals to survive um, if you keep like polluting everything and uh, like hunting them to the last mm -hmm. yeah and also um, something that I found you know on the underlying um, you know, suggestion that not only the animal kingdom will suffer, but also the humans themselves, us, we will suffer. Like, 
this guy that had to steal mm -hmm. medicine from the other uh, from the fisherman like you know obviously I've got I've got better things to do than hunt baby foxes and trade them for medicine. I don't want to do that, <laughs> right? But you know, but if you're if you see no other way, then there you are. Terrible, yeah, terrible situation. This is something we want to to uh, talk about in the game. Uh, what the consequences of all of this will be in human society, not only in animals. Yeah. We are not talking only about extinction of species, but also about um how how it will affect us directly mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's a very special game what can yeah. you say it's uh it's it's also, what i also like is uh, that it's like if you see screenshots or something you you think hey it's like a side scrolling game mm -hmm. and now but it's more like a, a open world or at least a sandbox kind of thing uh we go around and it's also um that the food is not like at fixed positions like if i replay a day or a night, <laughs> I should say, mm -hmm. then I, I find uh, different animals at different positions. And so every playthrough is a bit different. So um, exactly. yeah. yes, enemies are in different positions. Food sources are in different positions. Um, you can get to know uh, an area. Uh, you will every day still have to explore it a bit. So you know if this uh, specific thing, thing you are looking for has respawn is there or maybe it's it's even not there anymore because the river got polluted and you cannot mm -hmm. fish anymore so there are different things affecting the environment um and so we have this uh randomness element which is super nice yeah I mean, one of the things that we also wanted to like express is how the world changes I and mean, in the end as you, as you show with the tower like for example you will wake up one day thinking that you're gonna like go hunt something and you find like the whole tower collapsed and there's humans there scavenging so you never know what's going to happen the next day, yeah. which is like basically the point of survival is like living the day and trying to survive. Adapting, day. basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have different tools. You have to use them wisely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, um, there is food somewhere and you can use the, the sensing of the, of the fox itself to track this food. But maybe there are some dangers in, in your way. So you have to, to be very smart and use a bit of strategy to, to avoid them. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it's, it's quite uh, immersive. Like, uh, it is immersive. you're really then the fox. Like, what I like is you have the story of the missing cup, but I think that's not like that's not the only story or only thing that happens. And as you experience all this through the eyes of the fox, all that happens around you is a bit mysterious. Like, if yeah. if you, you were a human, you would exactly know why this tower collapsed or what happened there, and and and, and but now you only see glimpses of what the humans do. That's very interesting for me. Uh, yeah, the model fox will not understand many things. Like, uh, I mean, we as players, as spectators of this adventure, we can understand what's happening in the background. For her, is just trying to survive. She's only focusing on uh, feeding her calves. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, by using environmental storytelling, we can tell a lot of things to the player, even if the mother fox is not noticing. Uh, and, the, and, and we use the, this uh, narrative where she has to find the missing cap uh, to lead the mother fox to different places. And what I've also found interesting is like, we used now this, this scent to find food and the story um, points. Um, but um but some players might just use this uh, food scent to to find a linear path even through like a randomly generated uh, night they might just go there but no uh, i think that's not the intended plan for the game to be played in the future so uh, i think this mechanic uh, is not the final version of that mechanic yet so I think we got a small oh, <laughs> camera I think issue again. You got stuck. Hopefully you'll be back again. There no, we go. No, you're there back. we go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> just, you, a, just a small hiccup. Nothing did you serious. hear me? Uh, yeah. So I want to ask you about, about like what will change and what will improve on the food scent mechanic uh, in the future. Oh, so like basically the, the whole concept of the, the scent mechanic is that it tracks uh, living prey as uh, like as the mother fox, um, you will 
like you have the ability to track like for example uh smelling animals or like uh something that was moved on the ground and stuff like that and um obviously that it, at the start that's leading you to like very obvious sources of food um but like as the world progresses and uh it gets more dangerous uh you you will learn not to always trust your instincts like um maybe the, the the path uh like the sensing path leads you through like some dangerous places that you don't want to go so you have to make decisions and yeah as i said not, not only like uh trust your instincts but also learn to explore the map on your own yeah i thought also the um like uh, there was other food that i didn't trace with that so it's it's a good idea to to search for um on your own, explore on your own, and not just follow the path. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very immersive game, very emotional as well, as we've seen. Um, what can I say? Uh, try it out for yourselves. Like we were not that shocked get, uh, because oh, of we course, have of now course. because <laughs> we have played that demo a and lot now, of times. And now, of course, the first we time we spoiled it for everyone who watched. Yeah. But the demo is still worth playing for sure. Yeah, especially because um, it's it will be different for you. Not, exactly. Not the ending, but <laughs> exactly it'll be different. <laughs> but your for encounters everybody. in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and uh, yeah, and so will the final game, obviously, just on a grander scale. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Check it out. It's available to play right now. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's all we have time for today. We'll yeah. see you again uh, tomorrow. Um, if you want to know more about Endling, uh, you can still visit our Discord. Yes. Uh, we'll can, be there and answering questions. You can talk to all, all of us and all of the developers yeah. from all of the games. Uh, if you've got any questions, join the Discord. Uh, yeah, there's this FAQs, there's friendly people helping you uh, answer yeah, questions. Yeah. Even if you just, even if you get stuck in the demo and you don't know what to do, you can you can find someone to help you. Yep. Um, yeah, and uh, with that, I think it's time to call it a night. It's getting late. Yeah, it's definitely getting late. <laughs> it's getting late. It's and getting, we will be streaming tomorrow also. We will be streaming tomorrow. There will be more Endling tomorrow as yeah. well. And um, yeah. Ending will be very interesting tomorrow because we will talk more about the development and also show some um, of videos of you working on, on certain mm -hmm. aspects of the game. I think that will be a lot of fun to see yeah. how, we, how you got to uh, make this experience, yeah. uh, this game, for sure. reality. Uh, yeah, that will be very, very looking forward to that. Awesome. So thank you guys for your time. Uh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.
Good morning and welcome to our first stream of the Indie Arena Gamescom mix-up that will happen completely digitally this time. So you will see a lot of us streaming today and tomorrow. So welcome. Today we will have an exclusive look at El Ijo, a Wild West tale. Um, joining us today will be our developers, which we will introduce well, pretty much, I would say, right now. right now. So let's switch over to our Discord. One moment. Hello, guys. Can Hello. you hear us? I'm from Berlin. Ah, okay. So it is working. You should see those lovely people from Berlin. Yeah, so. Introduce yourselves, maybe. Let's start. Let's start simple. Ladies first. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Hey, come on. Um, so, uh, good morning. Um, uh, uh, first of all, uh, before introducing, we say thank you for Handy Game or two Handy Games to do this with us. And also, no thank problem. you very much for the collaboration. Uh, it has been a wild ride. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's all coming together and we're really happy. Um, yeah, my name is Maria Grau-Stenzel. I'm part of the Honey team. I'm uh, dealing with the team. I'm the creative producer and we, yeah, uh, yeah, now you go ahead. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was a good start so yeah. far. Hello, yeah, uh, I'm Stefan. I'm the lead programmer on the game. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. I, I deal with all the technical questions, issues, ideas, and all the uh, creative input into a computer. So, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Definitely. Good morning, also from my side. I'm Yanis. I'm, uh, I started Honey Studios together with Fede a few years ago. And um, I work also, obviously, on a leap of being like the technical producer, like the connection between. Stefan and the team and the technical side of stuff. Nice. So we got that ahead, but you know what we forgot? We forgot to introduce ourselves. To introduce <laughs> ourselves. So quick answer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jan. This is Felix. And yeah, we are the hosts, obviously, for this stream. Yep. Cool. Off to a great start. Nice. Okay, so Honig Studios. You're located in Berlin. How big is the studio in total? How many guys are you over there? We are uh, 12 people, all uh, on the LIFO uh, the last three, four years, I would say. Um, yeah, so we're all based here. Um, actually, one is in London. Ali is in London. One is oh. in London. The rest of us are all here um, uh, in Berlin. I didn't even know that. That's interesting insight. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> well, we could also learn something from yeah, this stream. Guess, it's yeah. okay. Cool. But uh, this is an exception. We have been all in different places within in Berlin, so it doesn't really matter if you're in London or if you're in Neukölln in Karlshorst. It, it doesn't well, matter. Well, the last oh. month, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, sure, speaking about the last months, um, you were also definitely impacted by that, I would say. So um, you guys are probably also working from home, most of them, or have been working from home. I mean, right now we are kind of sliding into a back to normal kind of approach. But um, I guess it was also difficult for you, right? Yes. Yeah, it, I think it was a new way of um, uh, dealing with each other, with the project, how to communicate it was a special new thing for, I don't know, it sounds really bad. We never communicate, but now we did. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a big thing to uh, talk to someone in person and explain the things then over the phone, over emails, and it sometimes can come through misunderstandings. And it is really good if you're there and you are talk in person, in flesh. Yes. And uh, I think that was the, or is the nicest thing now to come back to the office and see each other and uh, yeah, working together again. Yes, 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 definitely. This is also something that we can uh, definitely agree on. Yeah. I mean, um, of course, we also um, needed, had to, you know, restructure everything pretty quickly, but um, in the end, I must say, it's it's easier to just stand together behind one screen and talk about stuff than, you know, everyone is sitting on their screen and you're doing some screen sharing or whatever. Hey, and we have some 
fans from uh, Brazil. No, speak English. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, That's John Mello. There will be some videos and pictures of, of Honig's development process of the game soon, so... Oh, you know what? We could also, since we were talking about the team, we can... So these are the 12 people you talked about, probably in your, in your um, studio in Berlin, I guess? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much the same background that we see uh, right now, so we uh, definitely can say where it's located. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so a question that comes to mind for me is, are you actually using, it looks like a chalkboard there, are you using it for like game development, like discussing design ideas and approaches? Totally. Uh, we had the idea that at the end of a process or a workshop it will look beautiful with wonderful concept art and art and we take pictures, but at the end of the day it always looks ugly uh, and <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, this is actually yeah, uh, discussing uh, different stuff, but no one can understand it about us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the quick, no, it's it's quick scratches. It's, like it's an entire wall, and we have another wall as well. So it is really good to quickly come together and maybe have a little drawing, and you would say, "Hey, this was the idea, the setup, yeah. and so forth." It's also something that's good to come back to from from the home office time, right? So you can just gather yeah. some people and stand to the wall, draw some things, explore, explore some ideas. It's actually a pretty fun concept, I think. It's pretty good to get that out there real quick, have it, have it sketched, and then That's put it into the game. The thing is... so funny is yep. we have all kids, uh, for most of us, uh, quite a few have kids, and then they come and use the chalk and then start <laughs> drawing within it, and then it was like, oh, what a marvelous idea! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Nice, okay, so before we head over too much into deep development and production, maybe let's talk about the game. I think that would also be a great idea. So, what exactly is El Hijo? What is the story about the game? Okay, El Hijo <laughs> is a non-violent <laughs> non stealth game. Um, it is set in the Wild West and it deals about a little boy called El Hijo that was left behind in a monastery by his mother after um, their farm got burned down by really evil bandits. They had another choice but leave him there to protect him. But as you can imagine, uh, a little boy of six, uh, that is six years old, he has no, uh, he doesn't want to stay in a, in a monastery and be ed educated. He wants to leave, he wants to get out and he wants to get back to his mother. And Elijo is um, 30 levels of gameplay. You have the first 10 levels within the monastery, then afterwards he goes through the desert because he wants to go back to his mother, and then you have another 10 levels within the villain town. Yeah. I've seen the background, the background with some, some Im images from in-game already. Mm -hmm. You just could see him sneaking through a kitchen and through a big uh, labyrinth, pretty much, where he has to find his way through, solving a few puzzles, so looking pretty good this far, I think. Yeah, um, I mean, besides puzzles, there's also um, a lot of other features, I, I would suppose, uh, for Elicio. I mean, you know, talking about this, I wouldn't know the game, but of course I know the game, so, but, you know, it's just... So what other features are there besides puzzling and stealth gameplay? What is really nice, we are trying to um, make a lot of connection between uh, like the story between the gameplay and the artwork and it is like a coming of age story um, that Elijo develops. So it mm -hmm. develops the game, it develops the music, everything is connected and um, thought of that you as a player want to evolve as well as this little boy at the beginning, you're more timid, you're hiding more than later on, you start to throw things, you find your slingshot and you find different toys that you can use to manipulate your opponents and sneak through the different levels. I think this is also important that you said manipulate the opponents because um, as mentioned earlier, it's a non-violent stealth game, so the emphasis is really on to, you know, get through all the levels without, you know, killing basically everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, was that something that was in your mind like from the get-go, that they were like, okay, no, we want to do a non-violent game, 
screw all the killing and shooting and whatever there is already in the games or is this something that evolved? It, no, it was not. It was a clear thing that was straight from the beginning. And I think that's also one of the parts why we said it's a little boy because, um, I mean, yeah, imagine you're in a usual stealth game, you are um, a secret agent or you have some uh, <laughs> yes. shoot people and you um, have a knife and you um, kill people. And we have like more this innocent character that is moving around through an environment that is really hostile. And that's um, what the idea was, that the Rico needs to come out, uh, develop and find ways to sneak through through the environment. I think, Yanis, you watched originally the, the movie from Jodorowsky. That's Topo. why it's called El Hijo, because the movie of Jodorowsky is called El Topo. Uh -huh. um, and El Topo starts with the father bringing his son into a monastery and saying, you're now a grown man, goodbye. And the whole movie is about the father. Um, mm. so the idea was, okay, let's tell the story of the boy. Ah, uh, okay. That's also cool. Didn't yeah. know that. It's great. And, and I think the, the movie itself is quite violent. It's extra it's, violent. It's really, it's really violent. <laughs> Buckets of blood. So, <laughs> so for us, it was to try to, uh, yeah, no, we don't want this. We want to focus on the stale thing sneaking around and um, yeah and I think it, it came out very well. Yeah. It's also throughout the games I think uh, you start in the monastery with the monks and later on you also get weapons and I still like the approach that you don't default to to violence or at some point you just get violent as well because for mm -hmm. me at least in every stealth game at some point I'm like why don't you just shoot <laughs> this guy to get past <laughs> and here you don't have the opportunity so you really have to think about how can I get around these guys without actually harming anybody? Like, where do I need to send them to? Or how do I need to influence them or manipulate them to get past? Which is a very nice concept, I have to say. Lovely. So now, when we were talking about the monastery and you know how this game got together, I think this is also maybe a good point to talk about like the development. Because we mentioned, um, but did we mention, I mean, yeah, that it was uh, starting uh, as a kid's game. So you started with supplements. Is this correct? Those are like yeah. Duplo Lego type uh, bricks, basically, yeah. where you would made your very first I concepts with. <laughs> Highly elaborated, like the images behind. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, we need to uh, we think two things as well. Uh, it, we have a character that is a kid, but the game is um, not for small children. Eh? This mm -hmm. is something that always put together, and this is not true. Like the um, fact it is nonviolent, but you need a certain um, maturance or a certain mindset to, in, in order to be able to solve the, game, the, the puzzles. So I'm thinking it's, um, yeah, it's a bit, um, yeah, it's not for small children, uh, the, the game. And now that we show Duplo, yeah, this is us. <laughs> well. <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to um, get our mind around um, the actual gameplay. Like this was the first time we actually met in order to try to find out how could the puzzle work. This was before we actually wrote the first um, um, application to the Median board. We were, Alijo was funded by, by the Median board. And we had to give them an idea of what the gameplay is. And that's why we came together and we sat down and we, we, yeah, we played with Duplo. <laughs> <laughs> and from that, it also grew a bit more serious from the Duplo because here I can see that you, you know, gave the bricks, the real life bricks, uh, some, you know, virtual value, basically. They said, okay, this little triangle thingy here will be um, Elijo with one unity meter in um, distance. What does that actually mean, like one unity meter? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's say, I'm so, so, so many years now into this, it's pretty hard to explain this easy question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you have a 3D world. In this 3D world, you have also some kind of measurement and 
in the real world we're using meters. So in Unity we have also in this 3D world meters. So we're using these meters to estimate the, the distances and yeah. I think for <laughs> us it's really important to um, that we know with this or like what you see here seems really simple, but Eliho is a certain height. Then the objects need to be a certain height so that you can hide behind. The monks yes. are a certain height that they mm -hmm. can see you from certain positions or not. The line of sight that the monk is having to see needs to be blocked out by certain objects. So you are constantly, this seems really simple, but for us, um, Eliho in the production chain, 20 centimeters. Like it's not a big, he was like a meter, <laughs> but then it was but then the act we had to adjust everything by like a little bit was in, insane. Eh? Like it, it was really something really important. That's why eh? That's we right. put, it, yeah. put it in there. And yeah, yeah no, we had the, the size of the monastery, the doors, the monk, uh, the monks wouldn't be able to go through anymore because they could change in size. The monks had to change in size and it was just, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> Especially the proportion was an interesting thing um, when we started with where can you crouch, where are you visible, what are completely blocking, also visually from the camera perspective. So you see mm -hmm. these isometric view that we have. What is the height that also the player from the isometric view estimates as it's high enough to, to cover? Um, and this was, yeah, especially these, these, these scales that you see, oh, the monks are much bigger than Eliho in the world. In this scale and the other NPCs too was oh. pretty pretty interesting to figure out, especially physically. Yeah. I think the other thing that you would never think is something uh, think 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 is um, <laughs> something uh, um, weird is shadow. Shadow is not equal shadow, and I think we can tell stories about how dark a shadow can be that you can see, how dark that you will be seen, and shadow <laughs> inside. Yeah, we we only have an hour, but otherwise, we... <laughs> <laughs> it's also something we can we can see later on and maybe pick up because we're gonna play a little bit later, mm -hmm. and then it's also something we can like show show the the viewers in in the game then where the difficulty lies that you're just talking about because um, for us it's it's easy to see what what you're talking about, but if you haven't seen the game before, um, yeah. it's not that easy to grasp this concept. I think so. Pick up later. What was in the game? Then we can just come back to this, this whole height and say sizing. Yeah, I think that's a very be interesting topic. Yeah, definitely. So we also have some different concept art. Um, tell us about this little scene here. Is this one of the earlier concepts about like one of the bandit camps? I, I would suppose. Yeah, ex exactly. Um, do you want to? Uh, yeah, yeah um, the, our process was basically. Um, the level designers together with the artists were sitting for every level and were sketching it uh, on, on paper, like just the architecture, so that it works in terms of gameplay, of course, and it also works in terms of visual. And once this architecture was done, then the artist one um, was doing not the whole level because some levels are very vast, some are small, they're in confined mm -hmm. spaces, very fast. So this one is, is a big level actually, but he was creating snapshots of some of the moods, of the moments of that level to give the mood. Which and would uh, look like something like this. Correct? Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's um, basically the level. So yeah, this is actually from drawing to from the first layer was a sketch he did with with the level designers and then he started drawing on top of that basically yeah, so what, yeah. what, what we can see here is actually um, a few levels right so it's just a the whole <laughs> context of a of a set of a few levels where you play exactly. each segment after each other so you will make your way through the cathedral or the, the church the monastery to the garden and then from there try to escape further into the vastness and the wilderness, like you said, further down. All the levels are, um, we have actually a very vast map of all the levels starting from 
your room where you start level one going down the monastery so all of them are actually connected and then the desert and, and so on i think it's one of the last images that we will see it is it, it this was our guidance from the beginning pretty much mm -hmm. that the, we the map, yeah. the map that we wanted to make a, a connection yeah? that it's not that you are there and suddenly you are there it sh should make okay. sense that he's the making map. this i don't know where I'm i sure have the map then I mean, we have something for the view cones, we have the mine cone. Yeah, this was also interesting technically. Eh? How much can they actually see the monks and how much do they roll? <laughs> yeah, that's something. Yeah, you can switch back to the field of yes. view. Yeah. This. It's probably, I imagine, like for now, it's, they have this, this classic side radius that they, that they see. Did you ever think about having them like reach around them like how much thought went into where can they reach you if you said about the sizing and for example do they notice if you're pressed against the wall next to them for example because that's also something that you probably have to think about because if i sneak past them on the other side of wall maybe they can't see me but they can they could like they would maybe notice so is that something that went much thought into that how you want to approach that um let, let's say um uh, we started first to make it pretty realistic, so each noise and each scatter and everything was pretty uh, harsh on the player to, 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 to be uh, that he's judged on. Um, and then we started to simplify it and using this, the basic rules. So saying, okay, we have the vision cone, it's pretty easy to, for the player to understand. So this area is a thing where the NPCs get attention and um, chasing him. And then he has a near body radius, we call it. Um, this is basically the area that you definitely get catched. So if you're too near an NPC, you definitely get caught on the puzzles. Mm -hmm. And then there's also sound, right? So monks do notice if you sprint past them, if you move objects near to them. So that's also yeah. something to keep in mind during the puzzles, because you can not just move objects out of the way in front of them, they will, or behind them, they will notice. They will hear that you're there and try to catch you. Yeah, and Elijo, when he runs or walks fast, he makes noise. Mm -hmm. So you also need to be really careful how you plan if you run through the level. Yeah. Cool. I mean, should we maybe fire up the game now? I mean, we could. We can still talk about the game while we're playing the game, right? No, <laughs> this is out of the question. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> play. I need, to, I need to concentrate, but you guys can. Definitely. Let's okay, then uh, let me this scene over here. Yes, well, I said everything. Else. And you can set it up. Oh, now you wow. can just minimize that. <laughs> this is the scene we just saw drawn that you know, like for us, it was really important, as Yannis was saying, to have this close connection between the artist and the gameplay because it's, it's really. Sometimes the functionality or the gameplay works, but it looks shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why um, it was really difficult to... One second, fun. Maria, because now there's game sound over your lovely voice. We have to maybe toggle oh, it into game record. Okay, then head over. Um, can you switch down the music maybe a little bit? <laughs> From this process? Yeah, I think this is okay. Right. Okay, now let's go to the game. Um, Maria, Janis, and Stefan, you're still with us, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, 
Oh, maybe one second. Maybe we uh, we also start. Um, yeah, we switch back. Sorry. <laughs> um, That's the first screen share. <laughs> screen share. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Now we are back, so you should hear some lovely music in the background right now and we will have a look at the game now. So, um, first things first, what you're going to see here is still very, very and highly work in progress. So you will see bugs, this is, you know, this is gonna happen. You will also see maybe graphics or animations that are not final yet. Um, so just a quick heads up, nevertheless, um, we are very happy that we can show you, well, the recent build and yeah, we will start pretty simple um, with level 1 actually, although yep. there is a level 0, we will skip that and use level 1, right? Yes, I would say so. Level 0 is like a little prologue and something, but something you can explore yourselves then it's out. Exactly. Do you want to watch the intro? We could watch the intro. Yeah, let's watch the intro, come on. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful cutscene. Also cut something that we didn't talk about yet, it's the 2D drawn cutscenes, which are pretty beautiful, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, very well drawn. They tell the story in a very emotional way. They do. You know, we, we are really, really happy. This was a collaboration between um, Juan and Jade and they and Yaro, and they did a really beautiful job with the animation and it really sets the mood right. It was also quite hard to, to tell the story without using any uh, dialogue. dialogue. Dialogue and voice, yeah. It's definitely an interesting thing that, you, that we are not having any uh, uh, dialogue in the game, but communicating everything of visuals and animations um, to make it accessible for everyone so that we don't have a barrier of uh, speech. We have text and localization for sure, but also for many languages. What, how many languages we have? Fifteen? A lot. Uh, young. <laughs> we have a lot. Uh, I think it's right. We have a lot yeah. of localization. We're getting it uh, available, but yeah, it was, was, was also interesting to see, uh, to get everything uh, without using uh, hardly voiceovers and stuff like that. Yeah, for us it was really important, the visual aspect, and it's a visual storytelling. And of course, quite often um, people say, but how can you make sure that everyone knows what is going on? And um, yes, it, it is possible. I think you don't need to get everything. Maybe if you play it a second time, you will find smaller details or different things like <laughs> in any game. You go and explore and you find out. and. I think the key element that the boy wants to get out, he wants to find his mother, is really um, the, the basic thing you need to know and everything else is building up, making it more rich for you, it makes it more beautiful the more you um, stay in the level and explore. Yeah, yeah that's true and that's, that's really good that it's so accessible so we, yeah, we don't have to do a lot of translations and on, on the other hand we basically are doing that but for a lot of languages then, so we can make this game accessible to pretty much everyone, this is great. Now, let's talk about light and shadow. This is because I think this is something that we can show now pretty well. <laughs> yep. So you can see, the, 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 the just to show you what we see here is um, the, the view cones that we talked about, the vision radius, and here you can see very well um, how you should use the shadows to hide from the monks. Yeah, initially the idea was to have um, dark shadows everywhere that you can hide in, but then we, uh, we are in the desert, you can <laughs> have shadows are that dark outside, and we tried it, huh? we had it um, set up, oh, let's see how dark can we do the shadow outside, but to have a dark shadow like this is, was impossible, and that's why we then said, okay, when you're outside, it's rather more where you hide, but 
um, but about shadows. So it it had to change. Yeah. Due so, to so basically, two different rules yeah. inside of rooms or in the darkness when you're at night, for example, um, you can hide in the shadows. Um, and if you're outside, you're using um, obstacles to crouch uh, and to hide inside. So the two different tactics, basically. And they are mixing up in later levels. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much a difference uh, to make it possible to uh, have a stealth level in light areas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, next time, no desert for stealth. <laughs> 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 Although we do have desert levels, right? But there's also they are done pretty nicely with a with a twist. So yep. will we reach them? Uh, not today, I think. No, we will mainly sneak through the monastery that we um, discussed, like that you could see mm -hmm. pretty much in the in if you can see the uh, graphic concept that we saw with the um, labyrinth in front. Ah, and okay. The, the, That's where yeah. we're starting at the moment. The time lapse. Yeah, and we're okay. making our way down from the top of the monastery where his little room. Down towards the garden and labyrinth area, and then we would go outside. What are the, the blue things? What are they doing? These are checkpoints at the moment. Like this is a checkpoint, for example, where if I get caught, um, is where I would start over again. Ah, okay. And now I need to run because I need to make it down here. Been practicing or dealing yeah. with the game really? a little bit. <laughs> I've played this enough to know <laughs> if I can make something or not. If I can make the the time. One other interesting bit uh, with the bird view is uh, that you can also get hints of objects that you can interact with. So yes. you see hide, hiding spots, crouch spots, and so on. Yeah. For example, here you can see on the on the top screen you can see another checkpoint and left to it or right in front of me, pretty much. There is the curtain, which is um, mm -hmm. has this little blue V on top of it. This indicates hiding spots or interaction spots where you can move objects or something like that, or crouch oh. to or hide. And it's, there's the vast majority of stuff you can do on these, on these sites. And That's coming back, the bird view, what Stefan was mentioned, is um, like a little companion that um, Eliho was given by his mother in the level zero that we didn't play, and he <laughs> is. A help him to find his way around as Stefan was describing with um, hideouts and enemies and so forth. Yep. Something that just that can sh the player can just, if he doesn't know what to do, you can use the bird view to get an overview of the whole level. Because as you said, later on they get pretty huge. So mm -hmm. it's um, you can get on a, on a high point and kind of use the bird view to find your way around, find checkpoints that are also a little bit of a guidance where you should head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. always, if there's so a checkpoint, it's definitely helpful. Really good I would to get suppose, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this also helps to find children throughout your duration that you can talk with and inspire them to kind of follow what you do mm. and try to escape from the monastery, the monks. For example, yeah, this is our. Second storyline in in the game. It is um, not the main key one, the one to find the mother. But Eliho evolves to a little hero of the ch children that are being used for work in in um, our game, and um, yeah, and he's inspiring them, as Felix was saying, to uh, hey, get out! Don't accept what you are supposed to do. Uh, be your own boss and. Um, <laughs> I could have made it. <laughs> Damn it. It's okay. Don't risk anything uh -oh. and blame yourself. Uh, blame yourself? Make a fool out of yourself. Yeah. That's the right thing. And we have a first question out of chat. Hi, when can we see the demo? Unfortunately, we do not have a demo for El Ijo. I'm sorry. Um, we will see whether there might still come a demo or anything, but uh, for now, uh, we don't have any. Um, nevertheless, what you can still do is head over to Steam and wishlist the game. So you get the news of the game up front and the, at the very first. But yeah, at, yeah, and be, be the very first to get it, sorry. <laughs> also, while we're at it, you can ask questions in chat anytime. Now, while we're playing, the devs can answer your questions. They will also be in Discord later, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, to answer your questions. So if anything comes up, if you want to know anything, just hop over to Discord. Maybe you can, do we have the link here? Yes, we do have the link. 
ask the devs, ask while we're here streaming if you have any questions, anything you want to know, anything, any insights you want to know, just fire away and we will be happily answering just them. To here in level three, what you just saw was that you are now able to throw like this, you were not. So it's one of the next steps in Nelijo's um, development that at the beginning he was more sneaking and hiding inside. And now he is starting to throw. So he's actually yeah, getting more like, uh, um, yeah, he is trying out more, you know, like that you can now divert the attention of the different NPCs to uh, the, the monks, the enemies that um, yeah, you can lead them somehow, that you can pass to them. Yeah, right. use different tools yeah. to make your way through it. Manipulate, as we said before, the environment to, to find the best path to get past all of them. Indeed. Yeah, maybe we can, can have a small uh, moment in the aiming. So sure. if you're starting the aiming, that we can explain a bit the visual. Um, so you see these blue big radius, this is the impact radius of the stone. So we have different um, materials like stone, wood or whatever, sand for example. Uh, and this has different noise that it creates. So later levels, for example, sand is really taking the noise. So it's really small radius, pretty hard to distract people far away. But for example, in the first levels, the stone, you, you, it's, it's much easier to distract people. Um, the red circle around the... We'll come back to it. I just want to show yeah. how distracting works. <laughs> oh. Not even close. There you go. There's your red circle again. So, yeah, the, the red circles basically are the um, area where if you intersect with the noise, um, that they will hear you. Yeah. And, you can and see also when you're to them in this red circle you also get caught yep you can like see yeah. you can see um, if once you you the radius intersect the noise radius and the fundament they're gonna start blinking so you will have a clear indication of that the monk is gonna hear what you're doing at the moment hmm. right maria sorry you want to say something no, no i just wanted to talk a bit more about the kids that you can collect them like in every, um, starting from level two, there are some kits that you can find. And this will also unlock um, artwork in the gallery that you, um, that you yeah, can have a look at if you like. It's like a little treat for the players that are going and exploring the levels. It's not a need for the story. It's not a need to complete the game, but it um, will enrich your, your gameplay because also if you collect all the kids, you will get something different at the end, at the very end of the game. And it's like trying to, yeah, go I, and explore. I have also some, something about mm -hmm. that. Um, the interesting thing is if you're freeing these kids uh, through the whole story, you're also getting small stories. So for example, this one here where, where uh, she puts potatoes in the sack and gets uh, <laughs> Uh, a bit, let's say, uh, informed by Lijo to do not the thing that she needs to do, so be more free willing, be more a kid, be more <laughs> against against the, 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 the things that the she authority, she yeah, mix some stones in there. Um, yeah, so so it's it's pretty nice to, if you like. Uh, to watch these detailed stories uh, and also find these kids later, like Maria said, um, and play with them again. Hmm. It also is, uh, isn't easy to get all the kids in like one playthrough, right? So especially in the later levels, um, you need to, uh, to basically know your way around the game already. So especially if you're maybe then playing for a second time, um, that might be a goal for you to achieve, to get all the kids and inspire them. Yeah, there's quite some detours you gotta take to, to free some of them, but pretty much Elijo's mission kind of like, he wants to escape, but he also wants to help others hmm. to do the same. So there's a few detours you need to take to free all of them, but it's pretty much worth it because you get stuff. We don't call end. it detour, uh, we call it that <laughs> you Because detour, come on, I took it Ex to Exploration. <laughs> More exploration. <laughs> Yeah, there's different paths to pretty much most of the levels that you can take. <laughs> like, there's no 
We need to go that way. Oh. Oh. Okay, what are we going for now? Felix, what's happening? Are you getting too confident? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I just want to take two different routes then. I'm sure you can play it already with your eyes closed. Huh? <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> oh no. Ah. ah. Yeah, that's what that was what you talked about. I made a little too too much noise while running past that guy. And he noticed. <laughs> And it was pretty close that he almost caught me. <laughs> I saw it, yes. This is a light, nice little detail with the chili, putting chili into the soup to make it too Extra hot. hot. Yep. <laughs> a, few, a few quite fun stories right in there, I think. Little little interchanges between Elijo and the kids. There's a few fun things in there. So Elijo is also a little rascal, kind of. Yes. <laughs> It's not only escaping, it's making their life harder. Ooh, we made it. And I also like it how like all the different gameplay elements get introduced level by level. So we know, so you were casually just hiding in the vase before. Now you can push some boxes and all the different elements are coming together level by level. So I, it's, uh, it's really good. I think there's a question. There is a question. Will there be an episode where you need to move through the shadows of moving people, not just through the shadows of standing objects? We, yeah, we have the bisons. Y yes, yeah. spoiler alert. So, yeah, not, not necessarily people. <laughs> people might be the wrong way. All good, all good. Yeah, not necessarily okay. people that you might be trailing or hide behind their shadows, but uh, there are a lot of different elements in the game besides like static shadows coming or getting created by the sun. So yeah, definitely, the, and the, but the bison is uh, definitely one of that. We will not see that, but we saw, if I'm not mistaken, Maria, we saw the bison at Gamescom. Um, in sure. the, yeah. Last yeah. year, right? I think I think I played through that level with you together, sitting on the couch in a live stream. <laughs> no, we were talking about it because it's um, like somehow related to I don't know. For me, it's like U Ulysses, you know, the mm -hmm. guy that is in the, in the cave with the um, cyclops um, that he blinds, yeah, and then he's checking the tops of the sheep when Ulysses tries to get out of the cave, and yeah. so the idea was that um, Elijo is hiding inside the bison or behind it so you can actually below uh, below the bison you hang underneath the bison and the bison will take you from eight yeah put, put the hideout in technical fields <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was pretty nice to to make but yeah this is helpful for every viewer that is like to see that uh, i would say watch the video from the games from last year huh mm -hmm. Well, I uh, think we will also maybe show the the new bison maybe maybe later that year definitely. Yeah. Hopefully. So there will be a lot more Elysio coming up, guys. So don't worry. <laughs> we will keep you covered. This part I struggle with always. There's there's still a part in the game that you struggle with. Yes. Oh, mm. I think I'm disappointed. Yes. How so many hours? <laughs> Three hundred. Seems about right. Oh, I made it. Oh. Good one. Nice. <laughs> smooth. Uh, that's <laughs> very smooth. Cool. I, I lost track. Like, In which level are we now? Um, this should be. Six, seven, six. The library. Yeah, the library. Oh, six. six. One of the uh, most interesting concepts uh, that were made, and. It's, it's really interesting how all the ways that you can go through this level are ending up. So it's, there's not only one way to, to, to solve this level, there's uh, multiple ways. Yeah, to go through. there's a lot of freedom to it, right? So you can kind of choose your path and yeah, make your life easy or maybe take a harder route. But in any case, um, you can find your own ways through the game. Yeah, this level especially is like, there's a lot of ways through this level. Any any speedrun strats already that you guys worked out? 
So the path perfect path. path. <laughs> I mean, I could try to take the perfect path through this level, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then don't. <laughs> not, the, not the fastest thing to speak on, I think. Um, especially for level six, it's pretty interesting. We, we thought about uh, a few achievements for the game, and mm -hmm. um, we, we, we thought about the puzzles and how how it could be interesting to add an, another challenge for players uh, with these achievements to play the game. So watch out for that. It's pretty pretty interesting. Um, let's say yeah, challenges to to play the game to achieve um, the achievements. What would be one? <laughs> uh, what would be one uh, achievement? Maybe you you can spoil that. We allowed. For example, can we spoil? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> For example, don't use stones in a specific level. Oh, okay. No, that's yeah, definitely okay. challenging then, because the, the stones are your main way of, you know, trying to um, distract the monks, right? Yeah. Or, or shoot out all lights or oh, something in one yeah. level. Lights, you know, it's oh, that was a can, you, can you go back, maybe? Yes. Oh, it looks so great. Just. Sometimes we just have to stand there and enjoy the scenery. I mean, it's so, it's so cool having this little... <sighs> What's the How would you call model? The solar oh, the, yeah, diorama solar system. thingy? Solar system. solar system going around. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah, it's good. Cool. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's basically the, the fun fact is that the, all the rotations are based on the real thing. So it's, it's definitely fast and up, but the, the relation between the planet and the movement is on the... On the ah, the okay, so the real thing, basically. <laughs> but, but if we were to use real time, it would be so boring, but... <laughs> but this was a detail, that we put it in, that, that we all at, at the same, on the right uh, oh. location. Right, mm -hmm. and then the game is full of all those little details. details. Yeah. Um, I, played a, I played a lot and I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <We need. laughs> always more stuff for you to discover. Oh, oh. Next one. No, but I think that is one of the things that keeps us still going. You know, like uh, if you work with something like this for four years, it's like uh, sometimes you think, oh, this is you had enough. Huh? But here is so much variety, so much uh, love as well put in that. Hey, the music. Um, the character is reflected in the music, you hear the monks, you can see now, this was Stefan was saying, it is so much uh, like little detail in it that you, even now, we are still like full of passion uh, with it, mm -hmm. and, like we have fun doing it and we feel sometimes sorry for Felix, but uh, <laughs> hey, love you! Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, well, you, you, you got you got to showcase the chase somehow, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would still be able to make it. Yeah, if there was a, a little bit a, a bigger shadow in front of the base where they lost sight of me, I might have made it. But uh, not this uh, time. Can you see me back here? No, thank God. Oh ho ho! Yay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but uh, don't feel sorry for Felix, though. It's no. his job. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it's fun. He can handle it. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have left? Like 10 minutes? Yeah, around 10 minutes. Any, any more questions? For so devs? far, there's, there's not a lot of uh, questions coming in, so I would say we can just uh, use it to uh, play. A little bit more. It's all good. Oh, that's ah. a shadow. Don't worry. Don't worry about me with the balls. Ah, and there is now the. Oh yeah, the huge organ. And ah, the window. I like the yes, window. with the colored glass. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. No. W w we can definitely see that um, there's a lot of um, artistic um, effort going into it. 
Yeah. But basically, this was one of the most complex ones to make because uh, you have this huge organ um, where the, the, the NPC is playing at the bottom, so it's now quite loud up there. And while you go down, um, the music changes and the perception of the player changes um, with the music. Mm -hmm. And there are NPCs that... We could, we could showcase that even. We could just have to tune up the volume a little bit, Felix. Yeah, but I need to... I can't do it from there. Ah, okay. I need to fix the game. Then we don't do it. Maybe that's the environmental thing is also, I think, better, better experience when you're in the game as, as well. Mm -hmm. It's because there are some NPCs that have notes above their head and they cannot hear. So this is also a part of the gameplay where <laughs> they want to make the, the piano at the bottom, the organ at the bottom. So you can't distract him or any other who are whistling maybe. Um, uh, you can't distract them by noise. So if you throw stones at them, they will not be distracted. Hmm. Yep, we need a different solution <laughs> for those guys. They will be show you. This guy is not gonna. He doesn't care. He's playing the organ. He's going ahead in his element. He he is in his element, definitely. But okay. there will be different tools. This is also an interesting bit that while you're evolving as a. Uh, in the story, as a as a Lico and also as a player itself, uh, with all the abilities, uh, you're getting new ways to distract or manipulate the people um, to solve the puzzles. So this is a pretty, pretty interesting. For example, for these uh, monks that cannot hear you, for example, uh, or other NPCs with different abilities. I think it will become clear in the next level once you get out and you see the next toy you get. Oh, and yeah. This toy ah, yeah. You will be able to then distract the people that can't hear. So everyone, they are whistling, they are not paying attention. Eh? You're singing, you're not hearing. And how do you distract them? And then with the next toy, you will see how you do that. Will we make it? Yes. Okay. Of course, Felix is on fire. Maximum yeah. focus now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe a question in between. What was the hardest? What was the hardest thing to develop in the game? What was the biggest, the biggest difficulty you had? I, I think it is uh, diff different for everyone working on the on the project. <laughs> like, for for me, it was um, quite difficult to um, find compromises, you know, between the as I said the artist, the game player, and the story, but mm -hmm. also from the individual. Like uh, imagine you your artist brings the most beautiful artwork or the most greatest music. And then you say, oh, this is fantastic, but it doesn't fit the game. <laughs> you know, that is, that is really difficult. Eh? It's really something you need to communicate a lot. And with this communication, it's really difficult um, or it's really important in our team to be flexible, to listen, because then we say, OK, why is this puzzle so fantastic, but it's looking not nice, you know, then we mm -hmm. need to discuss it. And this is really how we work, we work that we talk about the stuff and say, no, this is not good. This doesn't help us. It helps us to say it is not good because of this. And mm -hmm. then the people can fix it, you know, and it's their creative freedom to how they fix it is they are the experts. We can point out or I can point out, or Yanis points out, this is not good here. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. And then the people will go back, the artists, musicians, everything to yeah, get the best result. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a uh, that's the thing, right? So especially the creative people, they they are so in the element. They're putting so much effort and so much detail into everything. But um, sometimes you can't just use it. I mean, we also um, have that all the time, right? When you're like developing a new model and it has, uh, I don't know, hundred thousand vertices, and you're like, yeah, performance, <laughs> uh, please. And uh, then the artist has to, to rework the stuff, or you have a lot of effects going on because you're, I don't know, you... Uh, oh no, Felix! Exited the wrong way. <laughs> well, 
so close. Go through the maze again. Yep. Um, yeah, so you start the game, you're putting a lot of effort into effects, uh, particle effects or whatever, and at the end, when everything is coming to together, you realize, oh, wait, this, this is too much. We have particle effects everywhere. It's, everything is blinking. We, we cannot use that. So that's definitely a good point that you made. So finding a compromise in there between artistic detail or like whole passion and like real stuff that you can make. So that it that still runs well or um, doesn't cause any other issues. But also the level of quality, you know, like if a model is not looking good or a leaf or you don't know how many times it was redone. <laughs> it was, I think level one more than 50 times, you know, it was just not good enough, not good, not mm. being, we're not happy with it. And, and this is what we are really grateful then here that Honig allows us to have this freedom eh, to say, okay, we go back. And we, I think we had different um, tools we used to build the levels. I think we had up to level 15, everything built. But then we said, oh, we are not getting, getting any further with these tools we've got. But there's a new tool that just came out. With this one, we can look into cracks in the floor. We can look into different things. And it's not killing the performance. It's actually working better. <laughs> and then they said, let's start all over again. You know, mm. and that was really... That's, we that's the thing, yeah. Development Short, evolves. All right. End, I think also, it's I, will, I wanted to make it to the guy on the right to showcase the how you can um, manipulate guys you can't hear with a toy. Basically. Ah, and yeah. while we're at it, where we, because we're talking about art, did you actually experiment with different art styles? Like, as kind of a last question, or is it did you straight away knew you wanted to go with this art style for Elijo? And no, we knew straight away it's actually one of the first things we did uh, was story and art. Um, uh, and then, I mean, apart from the Duplo, of course, actually, that was the first thing we did. Um, but yeah, art was one of the very first things we did um, to just have, I mean, most of us are very visual thinkers so it uh, really helps to to know where where this is going um so yeah art didn't actually change okay um, i think the the, the step had a lot of challenges and that was a great thing for a programmer like uh, for me when working with people it's important to be flexible you know like not to okay this is one structure and this is how we stick um, Stefan did uh, amazing things to say, okay, um, this is how the gameplay is evolving, this is how we work, let's see how we can make this happen. Eh? And this is like something that is really important for us to see what works best for the project and not then saying, sorry, but this is not happening, no, it doesn't work like this. We say, if it's possible, we make it happen, you know, and that's really uh, um, something that is uh, um, fantastic, I think, from the from the entire team that everyone is open to discuss and to and mm -hmm. to the And there's also one thing that I want to mention about difficulties in production. Um, from the technical side, it's definitely performance and shaders on the different platforms. So figuring <laughs> out which platform uh, has which variables, how do they interpret that and stuff like that. We, we have the, the luxury that we have a multi-platform engine, but there's mm -hmm. still adjustments that we have to do uh, specific to um, make it run as smooth and as nice as possible. Yeah, no, definitely. This is also one of the challenges. And in the background, uh, Felix and I were just quitting the game and switching up to you. Well, guys, again. Yeah, we could see how the toy soldier works. If you can direct them into a certain certain path because they want to investigate what is what's running around in front of them and that's one way to manipulate for example the guys who can't hear yeah. anything just something i wanted to show the use of a different toy and mm. things definitely all right guys we made it that's like one hour that flew just like past us thank you for being there with us it was great talking to you and having in-depth insights about the development of El Ijo. 
a Wild West tale. Um, so yeah, guys, for all the others that are still watching, you can wishlist this game right now on Steam. And you can also head over to the Indie Arena booth online and walk over through our booths and check out all the other different games that we still have in store for you. Up, up next, we will have Townsman VR. So yeah, stay tuned and um, have fun with the rest of the Steam. Uh, rest of the Steam, rest of the stream. Yeah, one uh, letter makes a big difference. So thanks again, Janis, Stefan and Maria. So yeah, you guys will now be available in Discord and um, if there are any other questions that you have um, for the developers, head over to Discord and just, you know, shoot out your question. That's basically it. Now I will switch over here and yeah, I will say goodbye. Anything else to add? Thank you for watching. It was fun. It was also also learn stuff, so. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Hello and welcome back to our Indie Arena booth online Gamescom mix up stream. How you want to call it depends on you. Yes, um, if you haven't seen this stream before, my name is Jan and I'm now joined by Philip, who is Hello. the game designer for Townsman VR. And today we will have a simple let's play session with the most recent build of Townsman VR. So heads up first, this is still highly work in progress. So you will definitely see bugs. You will definitely see stuff that is not final yet. So please keep that in mind. Other than that, I would say enjoy. Have a look at the, at the new stuff that we did for all of you guys. And yeah, we will have a simple rundown, a simple introduction starting with level one, explaining you the basic controls of the games and then just going ahead, playing through some levels here and there. And yeah. As said, there is also, um, since we're using a debug development build, this is like live from development for, for you guys. There are functions and options in this build that you guys will probably never see, or hopefully you should never see. Um, so we will use some stuff that is, you know, a bit out of the ordinary. So don't be surprised if you see that. But yes, I would say, let's jump into the game, Philip. Yeah, let's go. Maybe <laughs> um. gear up first. <laughs> Let's see. Take off my glasses. Well, it works with, but it's uh, for me it's more comfortable without. So, uh, controllers. Taking the controllers. <laughs> so you can do this in a like in a full setup for VR, uh, but it's also you can do even more possible to just be pants. yeah. One hand sitting in a chair or back standing back around. around. All right, so we are in game now. We uh, skip the main menu part and are in the very first level. That is the open ocean. Um, just like one quick technical question. Should we have sound already or have you disabled the voices? Um, there should be sound, I guess. One hand okay. forward and the other ah, one back and right. around. Okay. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> this is the tutorial, so he's currently explaining, or I'm currently explaining because that's still my voice <laughs> for like uh, development. Um, I have uh, spoken all the dialogues so we can see that, but that will be of course replaced with professional voice recording soon. So the basic controls here, and the other yeah, one that's already the second part. <laughs> 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 um, he wants uh, to show me how to rotate. I can show that first. Let's okay. look around. <laughs> Follow me. So weird hearing you double. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will deactivate that soon <laughs> because it can be a bit uh, strange when we are talking about the game and he's also talking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basic movement is I grab somewhere like here and then I pull myself towards Follow that me. point. Yeah, I'm ah, following. There you are. <laughs> There's not much to see here, it seems. Yes. This giant wave could not be caused by a storm. 
Yeah, yeah. Follow very me. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following you. Like I can really crawl. This way you hit us at a bad time. We were just about to get back. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool about the controls, right? So a lot of thought was put into the controls. Um, for us, it was very important to not have like the classic teleportation movement that you see in a lot of um, VR games. We wanted to have something that is more natural. And with this with this crawling mechanic that you're really pulling yourself inside of the game, it, it feels very natural and it kind of tricks your brain to... Um, yeah, that, that this is all natural movement, so we don't, don't have any um, motion sickness with that. With that, and um, and yeah, Philip in, in game Philip is also talking over me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Can't it's control it. <laughs> so yeah, Philip, maybe tell us a little bit about the story because we are now here on the open ocean fishing um, for some logs, as it seems. Yeah, yeah. So our ship was destroyed. Uh, by giant wave, so uh, <laughs> has been some kind of earthquake or maybe some godlike. <laughs> no, um, yeah. So we have to repair the ship, and we are on like a secret mission to get back now to the king and report what we found. But yeah, that on our way back, we got stopped <laughs> here. By but I can, storm. yeah, I can pick up these resources and give it to the people, so they can now repair it. You take it. <laughs> Not sure. Do I need another one? I don't think so. No. Could we just uh, Great. maybe quickly? Fixed, but there's still no quickly? Uh, maybe tap out. One thing we can do. Yep. Yes. Um, one second. As as we'll switch first. Okay. Fixing some technical stuff because I think we just have to retap the game so it's also working for. Um, Philip then again a little bit better. So yeah, mm -hmm. live development. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then I will head back to the game. So yeah, maybe you can uh, really disable the voices. I think they are a bit, um, it's okay. a bit confusing. So we're going to options, sound options, and yeah, put down the voices. I keep the subtitles. So yeah. So let, let's because there's no wind. Like, like let's push, push the ship on. Oh, maybe not with people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you could also do that by, by blowing into the sail, but we have deactivated that from now, uh, for now, here, this event, uh, because I'm always already talking all the time, so I would have voice commands accidentally fire all the time. Exactly. So you really have voice recognition in the game. You can you can blow a sail. You can blow a windmill. And you can talk to your people, but um, as said, we disabled that right now because, you know, let's playing and talking with townies at the same time is a bit difficult. Okay, now. Yeah, now we are uh, yeah, <laughs> really out of luck. <laughs> uh, with all this fog going on, we just crashed into the first island. But that's great because now we can build a town on this first island, because I think we didn't mention what the game is about, actually. <laughs> it's not a, like about moving around, it's about building a medieval town. Exactly. So Build up strategy meets god game. This is basically what Townsman is about. And he's now telling you... Um, how to scale. <laughs> how to scale. Yeah, because like if I'm really big, I can, like with two grabs of my hand, I can go over the island. And if I'm really small, I can check everything in detail. Like this little mushroom, for example. Yay. So cute. <laughs> can crawl on this destroyed tower here. Or you what can scale yourself to the size of a, um, yeah, a, a giant god and have like gigantic paws, which you can then also grab and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> throw around your townie. So yeah, in Townsman VR, basically everything is pretty much interactive. We really put a big emphasis on it. So like this seagull, for example, bye bye, <laughs> yeet. <laughs> <laughs> you can interact with pretty much everything. You can push around your townies. You can grab your dog on the hand. Careful there. Or the cat, kitty cat. Oh, she's even purring. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
And yeah, that's uh, very, very important for us that we have a lot of interactive elements in this game. Now, Philip, what do we have to do on this island? Yeah, so um, currently he's explaining where you are to me. So I can, some of these objects have info boxes that I can look at. In this case, uh, here there's meat in this resource stock and there is uh, different kinds of wood here, like already boards here, and we have some stones. And we can use those resources to build our first buildings. So yeah, also telling us to open the main menu here. Uh, I think not that interesting right now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and the other thing we currently can access is uh, this overview, where we see also which resources we currently have in all our resource stocks combined. And here we see the, our population, the jobs that our people currently have. So we only have two builders. But that's exactly what we want. We want to build uh, our first house, our first residence for our people so they can live somewhere. So I open the build menu and here I have different categories. They are currently locked in the tutorial. But yeah, I can go here and pick the residence. I can just grab it out of the menu and place it on the ground. So like here it's like it's blocked, but I can really freely place it if those are away, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Go away, dog. Go away, dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we will now start constructing the building. Yeah, because this is also another cool thing. I think I trapped this guy and that's why he's oh. not working. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, much better. <laughs> yeah. So no. your workers will take the resources that you harvest or select and build everything on their own. So you can just sit back and relax and watch your town grow and evolve. But you can also, you know, um, yeah, interfere there and also put the resources to the construction sites by yourself. You can help. And you can even yeah, take okay. the people <laughs> with the resources to the construction site. This is also something that works. And yeah, if you're wondering, ah, okay, so now we build the first residence and we will have more townies coming out of that. So more workers for our mm -hmm. first settlement. Oh yeah, and what we can also do is now, um, because we have only these builders, uh, we want more resources. So we um, try to get some wood. And that's easy. I just drag someone next to a tree and it becomes a woodcutter. <laughs> It takes a while, like, I have to... Oh! <laughs> I got hit by the falling tree. Wow, <laughs> that, that guy was not cut out to be a woodcutter, as it seems. So, yeah, maybe you want to be something else? No. Okay. Um, but we also see, like, he dropped the resource here. And that's not good. So, uh, we need to store that somewhere. And to store resources, usually we have buildings. And this case the woodcutter's cabin is also where the wood is stored so we just place the first building here and as I know this building also needs wood I can just take this resource we just found and put it in. Oh and we have, uh, do you remember this guy working on Townsman VR called Ivan? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so he's back in the chat, hi Ivan! Hi Shout Ivan! Out. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, they all do that by themselves here. Um, I don't need to help, I can help to speed things up, but it's not really required. Like I have to work together with my small townies. They are like doing the small work, like cu cutting down trees and uh, building buildings, but I can have uh, help in some small ways or even like give the big orders what to do, like build something here. And it's important where I build that. Now I, I decided to uh, build this building close to the trees, so it's easier for them to work. But as that's also the storage, uh, I could also place it more like in the center of the island, like where he's right now. So mm -hmm. it's easier for the workers to get the resources and do something with it. So yeah, or something in between. But yeah, now. 
these old buildings can also be repaired. So there's an, a broken bridge here on this island already. And now people are going there and repair it. We can start up our very first little settlement. It's so cool to just oh. hang around there. And the seagull, what is the seagull doing? I think it's just trying to land somewhere. Okay, but this is, this is not, not uh, the seagull is not just decoration. Because those <laughs> little birdies over here, um, later, if you're going for some, <laughs> for some food resources, they will steal that. They will steal your fish, they will steal your meat if they want to, and just fly away with it. So you kind of have to make sure to, to shoot them away. And yes, so this was also important for us that we do not just implement things that are interactive, but also serve a purpose. Um, of course, not everything serves a purpose. Sometimes uh, it's just for fun, like putting your cat and dog on a rock. So why not? I mean, freedom there. So. This is also a oh, it's a bit angry. I think. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. You can come back. So ah, yeah, okay. The bridge has been repaired, and now we have access to this quarry over here. So now we can get more stones for even more buildings. So get the stone mason, and this time I could place it right in front, but I think I will need more stones for other buildings. So maybe I'll put it maybe closer here to the middle. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what exactly do we need here? Oh, okay, just three pieces of wood. So I can now speed it up. Go here. There's enough wood now already. I can just There's take so it from wood. the storage, put it in here. And one more. And I think, Very yeah, quickly. you're already mm -hmm. carrying something, so I put you there too. And now I've increased I sped up that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more threes. Yeah. And yeah, the, as we mentioned before, we disabled um, the voiceovers right now because the voiceover, or, uh, blah, the voiceovers are just placeholders right now. We are actually right now in, um, yeah, in preparation for professional voice recordings. So um, although we all love Philip's lovely voice, um, <laughs> It is a bit confusing because you would hear us double, so this is why we disabled it. But that character that you see flying around there is basically, first he's explaining you how the basic game is working and later on he gives you quests, he gives you missions and we have a lot more of these characters in the game that will also interact with each other, that have dialogue going on. So it is not just a sandbox experience, we have a fully fledged campaign behind, this, um, behind the game right now and I think what an over over twelve levels right now. Is this yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, twelve to fourteen maybe even. Oh, even fourteen. <laughs> okay, so uh, if, yeah. if you count something like the introduction that we had in the beginning, yeah. if that you count that as a separate level. Sure, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and the so. thing is, this island right here and the other island that we will show um, is still okay. pretty small, <laughs> so you don't have a lot of space to build stuff. But this will also change. There are a lot of different islands and they all vary in size. So don't worry, there's plenty of space for you to build your dream town and, you know, get things going and get things started. Yeah. So here he tries to tell me all the time that I should build uh, a saw. And a saw is an add-on for an existing building like this woodcutter. I can also have these uh, different build options here. Oh, waited too long. <laughs> I can also destroy buildings just by dropping the hammer, <laughs> but, I, but I need this uh, building. So <laughs> instead I will go to the build options and here we have this wood saw that will turn our uh, locks uh, into boards. So I just put it somewhere here or maybe even also a bit closer to the center. So do we still have someone here? Yeah, huh? you can help work here. <laughs> Sure, if this is this still needed? One I wood. think we only need one wood in this. No, it's uh, two. And you can imagine oh. that having a build up strategy game in VR is a challenge on its own, but doing a UI for a build up strategy game in VR is even more difficult. So 
The thing is, in VR, you want to be immersed. You want to, you know, just explore and have a feeling for the world. So this is why we chose this type of UI. Be very lighthearted and not so much in your face. So we try to convey <coughs> um, as much information that you guys need. <coughs> Sorry. Um, to really keep track of your channel. So how many workers do you have? How much food resources and all of that. But uh, on the other hand, we also didn't want um, Tons VR to be a game that is like a fully fledged simulation type of game where you can micromanage um, every little aspect. I mean, technically you <laughs> can micromanage you, you pretty can. much, but I think that's a, a different um, interpretation of micromanaging. <laughs> what I think uh, maybe you were getting at is also like we have the UI there to show you all the information, but you can also see it directly in VR. Like I see how many stones I have in my storage right here. I can also look at the info UI, so, so that's like double the information. Um, if I'm further away, I maybe I don't see how many stones there are, so it's mm -hmm. easier to use the UI, but it's completely possible to do most things without any UI because that um, is much more immersive in the game. Oh, the bird is coming back. in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hit someone with the seagull? Maybe if I try several times. Oh, oh no, that was so close. Was very close. No. Oh, oh, the poor woodcutter. No, oh, oh. I think. <laughs> oh, where's it gone? I think you broke it. Yeah, maybe I killed it somehow. <laughs> maybe it's underwater. Well, the underwater effect won't work here. Um, exactly. It's, it's <laughs> It was There's the seagull underwater. Just seagull. put it underwater. <laughs> oh, hit so yeah. hard that it went right through the island. Exactly. So as we mentioned earlier, <coughs> this is still very work in progress. So we can do a lot of this stuff already and uh, really still break the game. So, but in the end, it is a sandbox type of game. So, you know, we can try to polish and. Uh, refine everything as good as possible, but we cannot really control what you players out there will do. So you can do pretty crazy things in the game and we are really eager to see what uh, people will come up with and what they will doing and uh, all the different screenshots. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, and now he's uh, telling me that I don't uh, I just create the construction site here, but I don't have anyone to really work on that. So I have to change the job of someone so you now you're a worker again and that's also like uh, very easy to do that you could also have a UI menu for okay assign a job to there or there but just dragging someone onto uh, a workplace uh, makes that so much easier indeed it does maybe I also should have a bit more workers so maybe I should build another um, residence so. there's talking more playing huh yeah yeah I'm just listening what you have to say, it's so interesting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I try my very best, so if it's interesting for oh. you, then hopefully so it's interesting I for you. I think I have too many choice. woodcutters right now, because I like I manually assigned someone to a tree in the beginning, then I finished this building that turned the builder automatically into a woodcutter, and then I built this building that's also shared by the same job, so uh, woodcutters can do more than just cutting down trees, they can also like saw the logs into boards. And uh, they do that automatically. But now we have too many woodcutters and not enough trees and space. <laughs> so maybe you build that. <laughs> so you can switch jobs um, completely dynamic. So you can yeah, could also switch up everyone. Look here, everything. now I have two builders and two woodcutters and no stone mason. I think I can get rid of one woodcutter more to get more stones. Mm -hmm. So let's see. <laughs> you are, oh, <laughs> without any work. Hi, Nasreen. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, so this is a new woodcutter, uh, stonecutter again. Ah, so your current objective is to... Uh, to build this building here, the Hunter's Lodge. Ah, so right. But you I can hunt the game on the, um, on the island, right? So yes. Like yeah. deers <laughs> running around and all of this. Deer and rabbits. I'm not sure if the rabbits on this island, but I see like three deer. <laughs> and yeah, I could also like turn someone into a hunter right away. Like, hey, you're a hunter now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay yeah. then. That, uh, was, that was pretty quick. 
So it's not very very cool to to do that. Hey, they are okay. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't want to. No. No, no. He says no. But just just killing animals without doing anything with it uh, is not not great. So um, now we have a hunter and we have a storage, so we can have that here. And of course, we need also to cook our meat. So let's build a tavern. Let's see, maybe Oof. some space here. Ah, that's a big building. That's a big building. Oh, I could put it here, I guess. Hmm. Like some space. Let's see. <laughs> maybe I have to destroy something. You could make oh, that. there was uh, something here. Yeah, Give that's good. Ah, okay. So the island is getting crowded already, I think. Yeah, Settled I think it should be possible complete. to build here. Maybe there's something in the way, something invisible that we have to fix. Or I was just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, we're uh, or, uh, still fine-tuning these. So if we find a playtesting, oh, they maybe that is not plain enough, um, then mm -hmm. we can still uh, yeah, change it, terraform it a bit. Exactly. So, again, as mentioned before, not final, work in progress. So, thank you for your understanding there. Oh, my start resources um, are getting <laughs> a bit dried yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. I only have <laughs> one box left. With, I think there's wood in there and we have enough wood, so maybe that will not go away so soon. So, let's see. We have two hunters and maybe that's too much. Yeah. Another builder. And I can help with resources so to speed up things up a bit do it oh i think i brought enough so <laughs> he noticed too and and stopped doing that oh man you interrupted his workflow his yeah, day yeah. is ruined <laughs> i think i want to show a bit more uh, different stuff so i think speeding it up a bit is, is nice okay yeah. now we have uh, the first uh, cook and yeah she will take the meat here from the hunter storage and bring it to the <laughs> to the tavern. And, and she's even uh, pushing away yeah, the, hunter. the hunter. We have food, water, and resources. For the near future, our town can survive. But we have to get off this island eventually. Maybe we can get help if we repair this old lighthouse. Hey, maybe we should have gone with you instead <laughs> of hiring voice actors. Fun fact, <laughs> I also did some voice, uh, I wouldn't call it acting, but uh, we did some voices for the early access version. That yeah. is on Steam already, so you can check that out if you want to. Also, you can head over to Steam right now and you can wishlist the game. Look at that bird. That, oh, he's oh, already oh. circling. He's circling. He wants the to storage. get the meat. Let's see if he if he manages. Oh, he grabbed one. Bad bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, what you can see here will come as an update to the early access version um, for the full release. So, this will be. Um, uh, when we finished it, if we polished everything, we fixed exactly. all the bugs, we recorded all the voices, then we will have a full release of the game and that will be, of course, an update for the early access version. The access version is much smaller, it only has one island, but you can also already see all these um, mechanics in action. Um, exactly. Yeah, but here you can right see, uh, see right now <laughs> that there's much more to the game. We are pretty much done with the with the first island, right? Um, yeah, let's see. I think we should repair the lighthouse to see um, okay. if it attracts a ship. And All then right. maybe we can jump to another island um, or just play the next one. Let's see. Okay. So, how much resources do we, do we need for the lighthouse? Okay, it's one more stone and only two, two logs. That but we don't have easy. stones anymore. So, <laughs> I can see that right now. So, maybe... I, I think we have enough wood. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Get us some stones. At least they don't steal stones. <laughs> Bye, birdie. So... 
Yeah, and the great thing also, like uh, with the early access version, like we already got a lot of feedback um, that we put in the game. And exactly, yeah. Yeah. And the game changed much like the plans we had for the game. We also got uh, funding from FFF Bayern. Mm -hmm. So we now have built a much bigger game than we initially um, planned. And also, um, currently we're playing on the HTC Vive, but of course the game will be available for all the other headsets like the Oculus Rift, for example. So yeah. don't worry, we try to support as many headsets, headsets as possible. The Oculus headsets are currently all in use by the programmers, so I couldn't get one. <laughs> yep, and also the testing, sorry. <laughs> and the bird again wants to steal my meat. Go, Go away. No, 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 seagull. Oh. Go away. <laughs> So I think it's almost finished, right? Let's see. Oh, and we also see the progress there. Oh, yep. nice! We did it. And there's fire in there too. There's fire. Can you climb it? <laughs> can cl This ladder is not high enough let's, to climb let's it. Let's go f for some Assassin's Creed here. <laughs> dim, 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 dim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we are in the tower. So where's our hay sack or <laughs> whatever you want to call it? Uh, there's nothing here. <laughs> But I think there might be a ship on oh, the horizon. Oh, we can see it yeah, on the horizon. There's a ship coming. I will take a, a bit. So let's see what else can we... Can I still... Yeah, I can. You can the well. There's the well. Yeah. Oh, there's <laughs> so, even the bucket in there. Wow. Yeah, no, he and was much easier. He just again. took it away from me. But oh. it's fine. I he, don't he, need he water. Was, he was waiting for that. He yeah. was like, I'm so thirsty. And, and also, like, yeah, they are thirsty, they are hungry, so if I want to have a bigger population, I need to get more food. So, in the beginning I had, like, these boxes with some food left over, but if, if I wouldn't have them, they would be uh, already very hungry uh, <laughs> at the point where I built the tavern. But now I have a tavern, so, so it should be fine. Uh, there's already some grilled meat in there. Because if your townies are, uh, if, if they are hungry, they will not work. I will complain a lot and yes. like eventually they will get unconscious <laughs> from <laughs> being hungry or uh, even die. But like it, it takes a while. We have time to react. It's not that instant. So, oh, oh the, the ship, ship is, is coming. There. Ship might be still pretty loud or or did you disable that sound? Oh no, it's a... It's ah, fine. who's this guy? Hey. The merchant sitting on this ship. Hello. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. We were invading his private space there a little bit, but um, I think that's all right. Yeah, but I think we don't have a harbor here for normal uh, merchant ships to arrive to just do trading. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, here the, the lighthouse attracted someone. So, oh, <laughs> he's now landing. <laughs> and I think um, we can maybe still trade with him. Ah. Ahoy, I am Answick. Do you need anything? I am Sir Clunkalot. Now it's getting really weird if you are speaking <laughs> both. <laughs> Maybe I should activate my two voices again. <laughs> Maybe I, I play Sir Clunkalot. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Well, but you can, you can um, they are now talking about uh, the story a little bit, so maybe you can sum it up a little bit what's happening in the dialogue between those two characters there. Yeah, so there's like uh, a bit of trouble in the kingdom. Um, the king's brother, um, I think he wants the power, so uh, he, he's gone missing and we were to find out where he went and we did in the beginning. So now we have to bring that message back to the king and yeah, <laughs> this guy can us, uh, uh, take us on the way there, uh, but he wants something in return. So yeah, in this case I think he needs the one thing we have enough. Yeah, it's wood. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be easy. So now, now this trading was initiated automatically, but later you will, if a merchant ship arrives, you will be able to, um, like with a build menu, you can go through different options you want to trade and then drag them not somewhere on, on the ground here, but drag them on the ship and then there will be this, this pallet that tells you, hey, you, need, uh, you have to put wood here. And boards, then, yeah. 
and this, yeah, these boards, and then you get something in return. In this case, we don't get something uh, in return that's resources, but it's just like you can travel with them. So now they are already starting to bring the boards there, and to speed it up, I can help. The two boards on the pile. And this is, this is uh, as you mentioned before, it's, it's really cool that, uh, that resources are not an, an, an abstract thing in the game. Yeah. They are like physical objects. The resources are just there. You can interact with them, you can throw them around, you can uh, even get rid of them by just throwing something into the water. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can no, just... finally I hit someone, I found that. <laughs> Getting better. <laughs> it, it never gets old. I just love the ragdoll effects. Sure, it's goofy sometimes, and sure, it, it might do weird things here and there, but it's just so much fun. So, I the think it's is four, four I'm missing. Let's see if the UI works for that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't update right now, well, but it will work. Well, Michael, you know <laughs> what you work on. <laughs> if you're watching. I hope you don't, or you do. Depends. <laughs> He's not watching because he's fixing exactly that bug. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, do we actually have enough wood? <laughs> well, we you have? very uh, confidently. No, that's one missing. <laughs> that we have enough wood, and you okay, were starting okay. to throw around resources. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's worth finishing one level incomplete because it's almost finished. Yeah. Okay. Hey. hey, we did it. Okay, everyone on board. So I can still, if I want, I can speed the level for Guardians of I can't go to the next island now right away, but I, I'm still able to just continue playing here. Yes, yes with, if you want to. With orb, I can just uh, like touch it and it will open up here again. Yeah. Maybe let's uh, quickly switch over to the other view and then um, yeah, you can probably restart the game. So it seems a bit... Yeah, we also have like an extra camera active. Ah, so the performance okay. is half the performance we should have. It's, it's moved out a bit. So if I have rotating, uh, rotate my head a bit, Mm -hmm. uh, it smooths out that movement um, for the viewers. Because the funny thing is that um, in VR, all these small movements mm -hmm. make sure you don't get motion sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for people watching, making all my small movements will yeah. could make them even motion sick from watching. Um, exactly. This is why so we have a smooth camera in there. But I think we probably just, just have to restart the game real quick. Maybe that, that works. Yeah, maybe. Oh, or try. Yeah. yeah. I'll I try it. Go, go ahead. It's, uh, it's all good. So, life is life, guys. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I'm still impressed that we're even able to, you know, have live VR broadcasting. You cannot imagine how, how difficult it is to, to set everything up and get the sound right and the camera and, of course, the game running. And uh, as Philip mentioned, we also have to do some tricks because, um, yeah, when you are in VR, um, it's all smooth, it's all nice, but um, what you see on the screen might be um, too, too granular, too fine. So if you watch it uh, in a normal way um, or without a smooth camera or a spectator camera, that was the thing yeah. you said, like the spectator camera on. Uh, oh. So uh, maybe I just jump into some action. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. Do we want to do Prison Island? Yeah, let's, um, I, I'll go there first and then you can. Okay, is it, is it, uh, is it working now for you? Is it, is it better or basically the same? Uh, I think it's the same. I think maybe it's some other stuff running <laughs> on this PC. Okay, I mean, yeah. we can... But uh, this island works fine, so... Yeah, yeah, well, wait, wait, wait. Just wait. I mean, we can use the time to quickly oh, yeah. see whether we can fix that for you. Um, I think it's fine. Just... Are you sure? Yep. Okay, then let's head over to the game. So now this is a completely different island. Um, it's also a small island in this case because that is like the combat introduction or like attacking. So in this case, I, I have to save 
<laughs> the guy that was our tutorial guide. In the so beginning. Sir Clunkalot got captured. Yeah. And this is a fortress where he's held captive. And, and it is a gigantic fortress as well. And there are a lot of cool. lot of people here guarding it. And I only have a small troop. So I could just like pick them up from, from down here and, and, and throw them into the castle. Um, <laughs> I think they would be overwhelmed, so I have to be a bit more yeah, strategic <laughs> about it. So maybe take them on in, in smaller uh, groups. Like I said, I could have this one. It's a, uh, it's a crossbowman. Uh, so it is not only a build-up strategy game meets God game, but it's also a real-time strategy game, somewhat. Kind of. Because <laughs> you can use this little rally flag over there, yeah, and the people are following it. Yeah, I already watched it. Uh, but if I now put it here, they will, everyone who's assigned to the flag will go there. So we will have our s first small fight here. Okay, that's that's good. Crossbow man in the back. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think front. they shot our own man in the back. <laughs> like at least this one. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, we don't have any friendly fire. Okay. Oh no. Maybe not. This guy's in the front. I can still micromanage them a bit. No. Oh. Oh. You lost one. Oh. Oh, I lost oh it's so close. A lot of them already. No. Oof. Okay. Mm. Let's see, uh, I think we, we can do better, but it should still work. Let's see, there's only one guy down there, here. Let's attack this one. <laughs> A bit of starting <laughs> help. Because <laughs> normally you can't, you can't directly interact with the... With the no, answer. like, that would be too easy if you're just, hey! Into the water. <laughs> exactly. No, I don't have any power over them. So for balancing reasons, uh, we changed that. Although it might uh, seem fun at first that you would just be able to throw around oh. your enemies, you know. Um, the sharpshooter here. <laughs> <laughs> Took out one. Ooh, we now oh, have we, a catapult. We have the access to the catapult that was here. I'm not sure where you are going. Please stay here. Don't go fighting on your own. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, there's, we can try that catapult out with this tower here. See? I see exactly where it's supposed to shoot. And I think I have some ammunition like these stones. I can use them on the catapult. Yes. Oh, the stone that I dropped on the guy before. Let's use and that the too. funny thing is, you can use pretty much any resource as ammunition for uh, the catapult. But I'm not sure if I have any other resource here. Uh, what's down there? Is this a wolf? There's a Wolves on this island, yeah. Ooh. They're guarding <laughs> some... I don't think I can hit these stones. No. Or they are, you know... No. <laughs> they're just, those are just the remains of the fallen soldiers that have been fallen prey to the wolves. But you could fight them if you wanted to, right? Yeah, I can fight them. Oh. Maybe they will come to fight me. I hope not. <laughs> Let's right see. Now Let's destroy this tower. Yes. Hey, and this is Ellie, right? One of our other characters that will be introduced a little bit later in the game. Yeah. I think we have about we have six characters total, like in this this big size characters that are mm -hmm. can talk to me. And there are some resources that I can still use for the catapult. Let's see if I can. Oh, sorry. Good. That was my shoulder. <laughs> All good. I can see you. So <laughs> sorry. Let's see if I can hit this. Oh no. I, ah. I saw it the moment I <laughs> put it down. Let's, let's try another one. Get more logs. Uh oh. That should be. It. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> okay, you're already, it's already dead. So the, the catapult is quite powerful. And I have also have to be sure I don't accidentally hit my own people. So that's why yes, I'm so trying now to. Yeah, you have friendly <laughs> fire for the catapult, but there's no friendly fire for your archers, for example. So. If your troops on the front lines get some arrows uh, in their backs, that's no problem. But a catapult hitting you into the face, that's a different story. Oh, I think I have to make oh, sure the catapult is safe. Because they will destroy the catapult, right? Yeah, yeah. I think and there's also a ship coming. So much happening on this island. Yeah, because we destroyed that tower, now reinforcements arrive for us. Yay, go, Yay. go Team Blue! <laughs> 
So yeah, and they fought off that one guy. So Oh, okay. I think it also comes with some stones here. So I have more ammunition. Oh ho. Let's destroy the tower for good. So we are safe on this side. But there's also an archer standing above. Ooh. Ah! No, that's the brother of the king, Edgar. Oh, Edgar. And he is yeah, not amused that we destroy <laughs> his property. <laughs> yeah, but I also don't want them to destroy my property. Oh. Can I? Oh, something happened. Didn't work. <laughs> don't try to cheat yourself out of combat. Okay, now we have these new people. I think I will also just assign them to the rally flag here. Then you can move the whole army, right? Yeah, now we have, we have a pretty big army. So, there are some people left <laughs> on top there. It's <laughs> here. Fight here. Oh, it's a crow. <laughs> and yeah, um, Edgar destroyed the bridge here, so we can't pass it, but... There's still me here, so I can <laughs> can help with that. I have to do something about my formation. I always put yes. <laughs> the arches in the front. <laughs> Should studio. take more care of that before putting really flex oh, on there's there. There's like there's also different uh, melee type of units. So we have a, a bigger knight in there. <clears throat> yeah, maybe can I have a look? Yeah, this one is is heavily armored, so I think we will, he will survive. survive a lot so we more. have. Uh, crossbowmen, some uh, melee characters, and also a big. Yeah, let's see what they have here. Some normal swordsmen here. Uh, oh, they also have a knight. Mm -hmm. So mm, I think I'm still a bit outnumbered. So I <laughs> think it will. Oh, I forgot someone. Oh, no. I had, no. And you also forgot to, to bring your catapult. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's that's right. Oh, I still have a stone have here. A quick drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> All good. <clears throat> Just have to oil my voice a little bit. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Let's try to destroy someone with the catapult here before we <laughs> send them over. And by send them over, you mean just... Uh, <laughs> Toss them, them over. <laughs> okay. Ah, I think I hit him, but I didn't kill him. Oh, hmm. but you, you aggroed the other guy. Yeah, let's see. Maybe so you can... We lure him over there and then... Oh, yeah, that's perfect, so mean. perfect, that's perfect. That's so mean. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Would we um, normally repair the bridge at this island as a mission, or no, is it really expensive? No, because that's, for the that's only like a. Um, that's a level where you don't have a, a town. I think it's okay. the only one, only level where you don't have a town, okay. um, except the very first one we saw in the beginning. So it is really expected oh. from us to. Um, mm get our troops over there. Yes. Okay. It's also, they tell you to do that. <laughs> okay, good. So nothing, ah, nothing uh, shady going on with that. Okay, let us go. Okay. Uh -huh. and <laughs> Another one. Oh, this is, uh, this is so dirty. So dirty. Yeah, yeah the dirty tactics. <laughs> because I think I lost a bit too many people <laughs> oh, okay. fighting before, so I'm not sure if I can, can still do it. But I can al always like save and load or restart it. Um, oh. Let's see. oh, we have even more stones there. I think because I destroyed the tower. Ah. Goodbye. Oh. oh no, it missed! You have to be in the center of this. I think now it should work. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was a direct hit. Direct hit. So let's do. Let's at least destroy this one tower. And then, then I'll send over my troops. Over? Okay. Whatever you say, Sun Tzu. <laughs> ah, goodbye. Okay, I also destroyed the <laughs> gate oh, the right away. Okay. So that's good. Perfect. So now we have let, let, let's try our luck. So maybe <laughs> if I put my relief like here, <laughs> they will try, but they, <laughs> I think they will go down to a wolf. So that's not so a good idea. I have to be fast too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Go there. Oh. And they're already fighting, so... 
Well, not the best tactics I'm doing right now. Well, you you're shifting between like very bad <laughs> tactics and like really dirty tactics. So yeah, <laughs> maybe something in between here and there would be. Oh, but it's happening. Okay, then I think. Down. No, Ooh. it's not down. Is it not? They're still oh. dueling here. Big knights. Oh. Oh, no, no, my no, knight no. died. Oh no, and the archers too. Oh god. I only have one left, and uh -oh. he's he's focusing this building. That's not a good idea. I have not told you to do that. No, I've lost him. <laughs> I think. I think he was dying <laughs> the moment I grabbed him. <laughs> and I think I might have lost the map. I could still try to to get my target here with a catapult, but I think it's it's time to move on and show another map. <laughs> All right, and also it's time to move on because we are running out of time a little bit. Oh, but we were not concerned. I mean, we were basically concerned the other way around, right? So that, uh, <laughs> but. All good. Okay. okay, then I will switch again over. And you can uh, jump into another map. Yeah. Do you want to um, try with restarting again or anything? or? No, no, let's just directly go to... <laughs> Shore Beagle Island. Okay. We won't play a, a lot on this island, but... Yeah. Okie dokie. So there's a lot more space to build on this island. Yeah, and now, um, yeah, we saved Sir Clunk a lot. Uh, we sure did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> the best, uh, yeah, <laughs> best uh, strategy and tactics there. So uh, all good there. So what's happening on this island? This island is more like a celebration. <laughs> ah. We saved him, and now um, we want to uh, have a great feast, and we want to. Uh, bake a cake, basically. Ooh. So there's, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's introduced in this level, but some of these trees here, uh, they have uh, beehives on them. Oh, so we can get some honey. We can get honey, and that's an one of the ingredients for the cake. And so where, where, where there's honey, there are also... No, not on this island. <laughs> bees. bees. Bees was the word I was looking for, not another word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. She's now collecting the honey. Without any protective gear. No. And as you see, we can't store the honey yet, so we need, I think, uh, another a extra building. Hunter. Yeah, yes. that's a honey hunter building. Let's put that here. How many different buildings do we have in the game? Oh, in I have not counted them. But I think we should have a, a better overview here. So we have a residence, the tavern. There's a harbor here um, and a church. church. The church is interesting because um, the church, ha church has like different options. Like you have a, a basic building, you can recruit recruit monks <laughs> <laughs> and nuns. Like, <laughs> like you can recruit uh, normal townies in these residences. And yeah, and they can do uh, stuff, different stuff. They can research, like can build an add-on for this church, a library. Um, where you can then research new buildings and upgrades for buildings because I think it's already possible here. I can upgrade this building here. Mm. Yeah. But okay. it requires a farm first, so... Maybe you so should. yeah, there's a little bit more to it. You have, yeah. We even have a harbor where you can then start yeah. trading, right, as we mentioned before. Yeah, you can go fishing here with the fisherman. The farm is one of the most important buildings, I think, in, in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to, to build one. Uh, I'm not sure if we have still the time. You have four minutes left. I will speed it up. <laughs> find, a, find a place to build a farm. Because it's like farms like are one of the most important buildings in, in a me medieval town. Um, like um, they, they, you have access to, to yeah, crop fields, wheat fields. And different animals, like you can have chickens, you have, can have uh, cows or sheep. And they are needed for all kinds of stuff. I think I can have another stone cutter here. Because currently everyone is a builder. I think we can change mm. that. Yep. Um, oh, they didn't build this one. Because I don't have any boards, so I need, <laughs> need the saw needs first. Needs to follow the production chains, yeah. yeah. So... Saw needs, I think, two stones and two pieces of wood. Uh huh. Yeah. 
and then I need a worker. What are they doing over? D ah, they're starting to build up the farm, right? Yeah, we started with the farm because yeah. we had didn't have the resources for the honey hunter. Yeah, and this is I would say that those are this island is like one of the mid-sized islands, right? I think we have uh, even bigger ones. Or we have a few that are even bigger, yeah. Yeah. Um, or there you have more space to build because there's still uh, a lot of different like yeah. slopes, or slopes anything, yeah. and and walls in between that like you can't put a really large building there. Mm -hmm. So the and places where you can have built big buildings, they are still limited here. Yeah. And this is also something that was <coughs> kind of difficult in the um, in the development course because. If you are in VR, if you are in the 3D game and you can look at everything from every, uh, a lot of different angles, you cannot just have a plane there where you can just build stuff. It just looks boring. That would fly if a typical top-down strategy game where you have, where you have a, um, a very you know, um, limited view. I mean, sure, you also have some mountains in there, but most of the stuff where you can build, is, it's just plain. And yeah, this was a, a bit difficult for us because we wanted to come up with interesting geometry of the islands, uh, but on the same time we needed to, you know, have some space to build on. So we needed to to compromise um, somewhere there to have like great geometry but still some space um, to build on. This is <coughs> why we tried to, you know, go with this archipelago type of approach where we have like different areas where you can build, but there are slopes in between. It's also easier to get lost in VR. So yes. <laughs> If it is like a plane reaching the horizon, you would get lost pretty easily. And now we have really like landmarks here, like this bridge here, uh, this big rock here, and the, you don't get lost on these islands. And You're even the clouds to guide you. We didn't even oh. talk about the clouds. Yeah, ah. I can grab these clouds <laughs> and oh, combine so them. Good. Hey, oh, the big cloud. Oh, what's happening here? Ooh, we have a little swamp of. Oh, that eagle was grabbing the a eagle. Rabbit. Caught a rabbit. <laughs> well, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we also have a little bit of flora and fauna going on. Um, mm. And so now Philip is, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. Clouds, lightning, lightning strikes. Uh, what, are you what are you gonna do with this? And that lightning you can even use against enemies, correct? Yes. So I didn't check. I think there were no clouds on Prison Island. <laughs> I think it would make the map way too easy. Yes. So, okay, now we have this. Oh, a lot of honey, but they didn't bring the honey back to the storage. Uh, we, have to, uh. we have to be careful so it's not getting despawned, right? Because this is also something that, that we did for balancing reason, reasons. If you do not have a storage for your resources and they are lying around. What happened to this one? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> oh, poor guy. Uh, oh, I think oh, he's, he's super hungry or super thirsty, so I forgot to uh, build a well. <laughs> okay, he's getting now food from, from Oof, okay. here, so. Oh no, he's feeling a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, this is also that something that we did, so we wanted to, to display the state of the townies, like not with crazy UI again and showing hunger or whatever, but we tried to convey that message um, with animations. So can we start to limp around, they will fall down unconscious. So you really notice it when your townies are hungry or thirsty. So let's check what else is needed for this building. Oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's three boards. And I think we yeah. have... The oh. thing is, we are kind of... Uh, out of time. Out yeah. of time. There, but yeah, but then I think tomorrow <laughs> we have another stream. Yes. And I will show all the animals. Yes. I promise. Yes. So let me switch up cast of you again yeah that was uh, a very deep insight into townsman vr a build-up strategy game meets god game type of game including some strategic combat or not so strategic combat depending, <laughs> depending uh, on who's, who's playing <laughs> what you are doing we will do the same stream tomorrow again with Townsman VR and I think then we will also show a little bit more from the farm and the more advanced uh, buildings. You, you for totally forget time when playing in VR. Yeah. Like I was thinking I have now played like 15 minutes or so yeah, so now and I was, an hour I was, is gone I don't know I what, was, what happened. I was glued to <laughs> what you were doing so I was also like yeah I try to keep time as good as possible but on the other hand, yeah, it's just so interesting to see. What yeah, we played do. the first island uh, completely, and I mm -hmm. think it's about 50 minutes to half an hour. Yeah. Um, 
but the later islands you can you can spend hours on them yes, like two three definitely. hours easily yep so we have also a lot of playtime going into this game so yeah to ramp it up a little bit quickly thank you for watching guys so far we will be up next um, will be let me have a look airhead we will have i think the technical making of for airhead joining you then will be <coughs> constantine and reinhardt the producer for the game so thank you again for watching and tuning in to townsman vr if you want to try it out yourself you can do that already with um, a little twist in there we have the game on steam so you can go over there and wishlist it you can also buy it and play it but this early access version that we have live is just a very little slice of the game it shows you the basic mechanics of the game and the interactions um, the assets are a bit different of what they are right now yeah we, we basically rebuilt all the assets here everything exactly. you see here um, was built from scratch uh, all like the townies are new all the animals yep. are new all of that I think stuff only thing